Καλημέρα σας. Θα μιλήσω ελληνικά, μια και στον πρώτο χρόνο έχουμε την ε, αυτόματη διερμηνία για τους φίλους Γερμανούς. Είμαι η Άντα Καραγιάννη και είμαι υπεύθυνη της διοργάνωσης όχι μόνο αυτή, αλλά και των προηγούμενων FAV Workshop, τα οποία είχαμε τη χαρά να έχουμε σε άλλα μέρη της Ελλάδας, στη Ρόδο, στην Κώ, στην Κρήτη, στην Αθήνα, πολλαπλά. Κύριε Γενική Γραμματέα του ΕΟΤ, μας θυμάται με την παρουσία σας. Σε λίγα λεπτά θα είναι εδώ η κυρία Αντιπεριφερειάρχη τη Μητροπολική Ανώταση Θεσσαλονίκη, κυρία Πατουλίδου, κυρία Αντιδήμαρχη του Τουρισμού, κυρία Καραγιάννη και Πολιτισμού. Σα ευχαριστούμε για την πολύ ζεστή φιλοξενία των πρώτων ημερών, η οποία έδωσε το στίγμα τη Θεσσαλονίκη. Κύριε Πρόεδρε τη Πανελλήνη Ομοσπονδία Ξενοδόχων, ε, ψυχή στην διοργάνωση, αφανή ήρωα. Κύριε Ασλάνη που είσαστε πρόεδρος του Convention Bureau Θεσσαλονίκης, αλλά και ε, μας φιλοξενείτε απλόχερα εδώ, σε αυτό το χώρο και στη διαμονή μας. Αγαπητοί φίλοι τουριστικοί πράκτορες, tour operators, Aegean, που δίνει στο παρόν πάντοτε, Klaus, Rabea και Schenke από το FAUV, μας τιμάτε με την παρουσία σας, τη διάθεση και την αποφασιστικότητα να επισκεφτείτε τον τόπο μας, να εργαστούμε από κοινού στους στόχους, αυτή τη ενέργειας marketing που οδηγεί στην επανεκκίνηση του τουρισμού το 2021 και κατά συνέπεια σε πωλήσει. Ίσως επειδή έχουμε και μια απόσταση να μπορώ να βγάλω για λίγο τη μάσκα. Είμαστε εδώ γιατί η αγορά μας έδωσε ένα μήνυμα. Ζητάει προορισμούς στην, κατά... στην περίσταση, στην κατάσταση αυτή της πανδημίας, την οποία διανύουμε και η επιθυμία για ταξίδια φαίνεται να είναι υψηλή. Το πλαίσιο όμως έχει αλλάξει ανεπιστρεπτή. Ειδικά στι νέε αντρεπτικέ συνθήκε του COVID, η επανεκκίνηση χαρακτηρίζεται από τόλμη, αποφασιστικότητα, ευελιξία, επαγγελματισμό, ειδικέ γνώσει, όπω φαίνεται, και υψηλό επίπεδο υπηρεσιών που το ζούμε τόσο για τι ξενοδοχειακέ μονάδε όσο για του προορισμού. Η Ελλάδα, είπε ο Κλάου, είναι ένα φωτεινό προορισμό από κάθε άποψη. Στη συνέντευξη τύπου μα το ανέφερε και νομίζω το πήραμε όλοι, το εισπράξαμε όλοι. Οι προορισμοί Θεσσαλονίκη και Χαλκιδική με αποφασιστικότητα ανταποκρίνονται. Και έτσι το FOV ανοίγει ένα γόνιμο διάλογο για να τι γνωρίσουν από κοντά. Η τόσο η συντακτική ομάδα, όσο και οι tour operators, είναι κοντά μα το FTI, το Attica Horizon, αλλά θα έχουμε και άλλου διαδικτυακά που θα επικοινωνήσουν μαζί μα. Οι travel agents που είναι εδώ πέρα και που με ενθουσιασμό ακολούθησαν τι δύο προηγούμενε ημέρε στι θαυμάσιε πολιτιστικέ διαδρομέ οι οποίε οργανώθηκαν. Μόνο τρία με τέσσερα workshops παραγματοποιούν διατησίω από ανταγωνίστριε χώρε και η Ελλάδα διεκδικεί ένα σε διαφορετικέ περιοχέ, οι οποίε αναδεικνύουν τα ανταγωνιστικά τη πλεονεκτήματα. Οπ, sorry. Η σημερινή διοργάνωση μα δίνει την ευκαιρία να εργαστούμε όλοι εμεί εδώ για την επόμενη μέρα. Με την καθοδήγηση του Κλάου Χίλντεμπραντ, του αρχισυντάκτη του FOV, που διαθέτει τεράστια εμπειρία, γνώση και καλή διάθεση στο θέμα αυτό. Διοργανωτέ είναι το FOV, ο Δήμο Θεσσαλονίκη, ο Οργανισμό Τουρισμού Θεσσαλονίκη, ο Οργανισμό Τουρισμού Χαλκιδική. Είναι κοντά μα από την πρώτη στιγμή, εργάζονται ακατάπαυστα, δεν υπάρχουν Σαββατοκύριακα, δεν υπάρχουν νυχτερινέ ώρε, είναι πάντα κοντά μα. Του ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Το Ξενοδοχειακό Επιμελητήριο τη Ελλάδα που στηρίζει πάντοτε, αλλά πολύ σημαντική σε κάθε διοργάνωση, μα σε κάθε διοργάνωση η παρουσία. Είναι απίστευτη και η στήριξη οικονομική και όχι μόνο του ΕΟΤ, ο οποίο μα τιμά με την παρουσία του σήμερα με του αξιωματούχου που έχουμε κοντά μα, με τον Γενικό Γραμματέα και είναι ασημένιο χορηγό τη εκδήλωση. Είναι, είναι πάρα πολύ ζεστό γιατί έχει αναπτυχθεί μια φιλία, αυτή η στήριξη έχει γίνει μια φιλία και μια κοινή, ένα κοινό έργο για ένα κοινό σκοπό. Το Υπουργείο Τουρισμού θέτει υπό την ηγίδα του την εκδήλωση. Και έχουμε χρυσού χορηγού που πρέπει να του αναφέρουμε γιατί νιώθουμε πάρα πολύ μεγάλη ευγνωμοσύνη και χαρά που είμαστε κοντά του: το Grand Hotel Palace, το English Palace, την Aegean στη μεταφορά όπω πάντα. Στηρίζουν το Θεσσαλονίκη Convention Bureau δίπλα μα σε όλα, σε ό,τι χρειαστήκαμε. Ο Σύνδεσμο Διπλωματούχων Ξεναγών με εξαιρετική έργαση, εξαιρετικό έργο. Ε, ήδη έχουν περάσει πάρα πολλά πράγματα. Έχουν γνωρίσει τη Θεσσαλονίκη μέσα σε δύο μέρε και θα συνεχίσουν σε επόμενε δύο να γνωρίσουν τη Χαλκιδική στην ομάδα μα. Και η Ένωση Ξενοδόχων Θεσσαλονίκη, βεβαίω. Τη μεταφορά ανέλαβαν τα πρακτορία Φίλο Travel και Dolphins. Του ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Και χορηγοί είναι το Μακεδονία Πελά, το The Met Hotels, το Άκραθο, το Άνθεμου, 
το Κασάνδρα Παλάς, η Vox, που μας διευκόλυνε πάρα πολύ με τα ηχητικά της, με τα, με τα ε, ε, Easy Speakers, και η Σόνας, η οποία έχει αναλάβει όλη τη μετατροπή, την ξαφνική ad hoc μετατροπή του συνεδρίου σε υβριδικό, ε, μέσα σε ελάχιστο χρόνο, με άρτια οργάνωση και με στήριξη σε 24 ώρη βάση. Και το πλεζίρ. Αυτά από μένα. Νομίζω σας, σας είπα λίγο τους στόχους και πού θα εργαστούμε. Και θα ήθελα να δώσω το λόγο στον Κλάους Χιλντεμπραντ και μετά σε όλους τους υπόλοιπους ομιλητές για να αρχίσει ο διάλογος ανάμεσα στα μέρη. Σας ευχαριστώ πολύ. easy with a translator, with a headset, with a mask. <laughs> so, uh, try it again. So, Kalimera. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning and welcome here to our FEW workshop here in Thessaloniki. It's the ninth workshop FEW is doing here in Greece, always together with the GNTO. We have also the General Secretary, Mr. Fagakis, with us. He will present in a few minutes. And we have done very, very um, uh, many successful events. We have been to Athens, we have been to Crete, we have been to Rhodes, we have been to Kos. We discovered nearly most of the attractive and most of the uh, most visited uh, destination for German visitors. But we have never been here. We have never been to Thessaloniki, to Halkidigiki. So for us, uh, it's very interesting to discover a new part of Greece with our workshop. I know some of you know the region already a little bit. You sell it because it's a famous region. But uh, I think now this year everything is different everything is different as we know it everything is different as we had it at uh, former FEW workshops you see how we are sitting here wearing a mask um, everybody knows how the business was the, the next the last month um, so very difficult times but i appreciate very much that we can do this event and i think this event from all the FVW workshops we have done so far here in Greece will be the most important because Greece is open for tourism. Greece is a country in Germany, you know, as a travel agent, as a tour operator. The range of products you can sell is very limited at the moment. We have a travel warning for Spain, unfortunately, um, for most part of Croatia. Uh, we have quarantine ne necessaries for other destinations like Turkey. Other destinations like Tunisia, Egypt are closed. Long haul travel, Thailand, USA, all these destinations, Caribbean are still closed. So the range of destinations, people can go on holiday and you can sell is very limited. That's why Greece is at the moment a little bit the shining star, despite all the problems you are facing. Of course, all the problems the hoteliers and all the suppliers from Greece are facing. But it's, I think it's a very important signal that we show now. We are here, we are going here. And uh, some of the travel agents told me, I wanted to come here because, um, of course, pe uh, people in Germany, um, they are a little bit confused, or all these, these mess. And if I don't go on holiday, I can convince my, uh, my customers. If I, if I have been here and can tell people how it is and how things are working, and we have seen this, Two wonderful days here in Thessaloniki with the wonderful sightseeing, with the wonderful evenings here. I would like to especially thank here Mrs. Karagiani Padalidou from uh, Thessaloniki. Um, wonderful evenings yesterday at the fish restaurant, the first uh, uh, meeting we had the first evening at the Allego. So we, we showed, we demonstrated, even though in these times you can have fun, you can people can meet, people can exchange. It's all things a little bit different. The groups are smaller and things are a little bit different and no shiitake <laughs> at the moment, but uh, we will have it again, hopefully. And, um, but uh, we saw the, the food as good as ever. The, the hospitality is, some said, the hospitality is even greater than ever. The Greek hospitality is well known as famous, but uh, at the moment you feel uh, somebody said, you feel that all people in the tourism industry, also from Greece, they wanted to work again, they wanted to have guests again, they wanted to get uh, into the business again. So we have a lot to discuss here today. 
very special is also we have only allowed 50 people here in the room that are the rules and of course we follow the rules um, but as we have big interests in Germany for example we had around 100 applications here for the 25 uh, places we had from uh, the travel agents we have also big interest from hoteliers from all over Greece and our partner the uh, hotel Hellenic Hotel Federation here Georgios is here with us uh, he was also a guest on the FVW Congress um, so uh, there's a big interest so they can follow this event we have a camera we have a live stream this live stream is on fvw.de. This is our big, the, by far leading website for the travel industry in Germany. And on fvw.com, which is our international website in English. So we have also a lot of visitors uh, in Germany and in Greece as well. And I would like to also welcome all these uh, people from the tourism industry who are following us here via their monitors. I would like to thank all the sponsors, all the people and all the institutions and uh, companies who made it possible that we can do this very important event. You see them here all on this wall. I would like to thank, of course, the GNTO, which has been our partner for all our workshops. I'd like to thank here the Hellenic Chamber of Hotels, the municipality, the region, the Heike Digiki Tourism Organization. And, of course, I'd like to thank the hotels, uh, Janis, uh, um, Great job you're doing here, great hospitality, wonderful conference facilities. Uh, thank you very much for this. We will see also later here on the podium. Also the Eagle Palace. I have never been there, but we will discover the hotel. And I would like to thank Aegean. Uh, Aegean is our, for many years our official carrier for the workshop. Mr. Roland Yagi is here. He will present then soon uh, our colleagues from Frankfurt, Dirk and Detlef. And, um, uh, they, they told me, as in Greece, uh, we, we saw the ancient uh, um, th th things here. In Greece, people think in a longer terms. So Aegean will be the sponsor for the, at least the next thousand years, we heard. So I would like to thank all the others who are supporting us here. I would like also to thank here Stefanos from his technical team. Thank you very much, Stephanie. You were a great help for us. And thank you for organizing all this. So let's start. Um, you are, uh, if you have questions here, the FEW workshop is always a format where you can ask questions. The aim of this workshop is bringing people together, bringing the Greek uh, and the German uh, tourism professionals together, exchanging their views, and of course, developing new opportunities and looking forward, because we all here in the room and all uh, in Germany and Greece, we need more business, we need more tourism, and this workshop should set the aside for the next weeks and also for the next years. And, uh, Christmas is coming soon, and in this time, people in, in Germany usually think about the holidays for the next years, and um, so it's, it's also now the time to make plans for the next year, which hopefully, and it could only be better than this year. So, let's start. If you have questions, please raise them. My colleague Zönke is there. Uh, you have a, we have a microphone here. For the German guests, if you want to express your um, question in uh, German, no problem, we can translate it. Um, we have also questions uh, we'll have from our viewers, from our from audience, uh, and Zönke will bring in this question in the discussion. So, to have an open discussion in order to develop things further. So, that's enough for the moment from me. I would like to start here with the GNTO, with the, the Greek National Tourist Board. Um, Mr. Fragakis, he's from Crete, from Kania, and I just told him we had also a wonderful workshop two years ago in Crete. We have, last year we have been to Athens, but last uh, and two years ago we were to Crete. Uh, he's uh, the General Secretary of the GNTO, and, but before he enters the stage, we will have a short movie showing us a little bit a glimpse of Greece. And then I would like to, uh, to ask Mr. Fagakis to do his presentation. Afterwards, we will have a little bit Q&A. Thank you. What would you do first in a land blessed with crystal clear waters, where life blooms and smiles go as far as the eye can see? That's all you need to think about. Because behind your every ideal experience, there's a complete protocol for your safety in action. Destination Greece, health first.
This is Greece. Beautiful and safe. Good morning to all. I would like to welcome you to my country, to Greece, and also welcome you to our beautiful city, our beautiful Thessaloniki, which I love so much, even though I am from Crete, as Klaus told before. Allow me to continue in my language. Time is in domos. Canis de berimene, kiris ke kiri, otan protoskeftikame na gini to fetino sinedrio to FAOV edo stin Elada, pen apo octo peripumines, ti tha sinevene sti sinehia. Kanena de berimene, afto to pio zume, afto to pio zisame, tus proegumenus eximines. Ke sinadiomaste, tora, meta apo dio anaboles. Εδώ στη Θεσσαλονίκη, σε μια συγκυρία πάρα πολύ περίεργη, θα έλεγα, σε μια συγκυρία χρονική, η οποία μα βρίσκει στην αρχή του τέλου, θα έλεγα, μια τουριστική σεζόν, μια καλοκαιρινή τουριστική σεζόν, η οποία ήταν πολύ πολύ διαφορετική από αυτό το οποίο γνωρίζαμε μέχρι σήμερα. Αν κάτι μα διδάσκει όμω αυτή η εξάμηνη περιπέτεια του COVID είναι ότι οι άνθρωποι ήμασταν και παραμένουμε απόλυτα προσαρμοστικοί στις προκλήσεις. Προσαρμοζόμαστε στις δυσκολίες, αλλάζουμε και προσπαθούμε να επιβιώσουμε και να κάνουμε το καλύτερο δυνατόν σε πάρα, πάρα πολύ δύσκολες συνθήκες. Αυτό ακριβώς, το στοίχημα της προσαρμογής, είναι και το μεγάλο στοίχημα του παγκόσμιου τουρισμού φέτος, αλλά και του ελληνικού τουρισμού ειδικότερα. Ποιο πίστευε, αλήθεια, ότι θα μέναμε εδώ στην Ελλάδα τουλάχιστον. Τρει μήνε σε κατοίκον καραντίνα. Ποιο πίστευε ότι στην καλοκαιρινή Ελλάδα του 2020 θα είμαστε στα σπίτια μα 12 η ώρα τη νύχτα. Ποιο πίστευε ότι θα αποφεύγαμε να αγκαλιάσουμε του γονεί μα, του παππούδε μα, τι γιαγιάδε μα. Κανεί. Παρ' όλα αυτά, αυτό το τεστ τη προσαρμογή το περνάμε ακόμα και τώρα ω ελληνικό τουρισμό και πιστεύω ότι σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό το περνάμε με επιτυχία. Προφανώς αφήνει πίσω του πληγές. Προφανώς αφήνει πίσω του πάρα πολλά προβλήματα. Προφανώς η προσαρμογή αυτή δεν θα είναι ανέμακτη όσον αφορά τουλάχιστον την οικονομική αιμορραγία. Όμως θα μου επιτρέψετε πολύ σύντομα να αναφερθώ σε τρία μεγάλα και πολύ σημαντικά κέρδη του ελληνικού τουρισμού το 2020, τα οποία θα αποτελέσουν, αν θέλετε, και μία παραγαταθήκη για την επόμενη σεζόν, για την οποία όλοι ενδιαφερόμαστε για το 2021. Η πρώτη σημαντική παραγαταθήκη για το 2021, που κερδίσαμε το 2020, είναι πάρα πολύ απλή. Ότι ο ελληνικός τουρισμός άνοιξε. Αρχές Μαΐου, κανείς δεν περίμενε ότι ο ελληνικός τουρισμός θα άνοιγε τον Ιούλιο. Ήταν πολύ δυσίωνα τα μηνύματα, παρόλα αυτά, από 25 Μαΐου μέχρι 1η Ιουλίου υλοποιήσαμε ένα πολύ πολύ δύσκολο και πολύ περίπλοκο σχέδιο, έναν οδικό χάρτη, όπως το λέω εγώ, επανέναρξης του ελληνικού τουρισμού. Ένα χάρτη ο οποίος όταν ξεκίνησε να υλοποιείται, προφανώς είχε τις αδυναμίες του, προφανώς δεν έγιναν όλα απόλυτα σωστά, έγιναν και λάθη, τα οποία στη συνέχεια τα περισσότερα από αυτά διορθώθηκαν. Ένα πολύ δύσκολο εγχείρημα, αλλά αποδείχθηκε ότι τελικά δεν ήταν ακατόρθωτο. Έτσι, 1η Ιουλίου, ουσιαστικά ο ελληνικό τουρισμό άνοιξε προ τον έξω κόσμο. Ένα δεύτερο, το οποίο κερδίσαμε, κυρίε και κύριοι, και είναι εξαιρετικά σημαντικό, είναι ότι κερδίσαμε σε επαγγελματισμό και αξιοπιστία. Τι σημαίνει αυτό, Πάντα ο ελληνικό τουρισμό είχε πολύ υψηλό επαγγελματισμό. Διαχρονικά. Αυτό όμω το οποίο άλλαξε φέτο είναι ότι ο ελληνικός τουρισμός έδειξε ότι μπορεί να προσαρμοστεί ακόμα και σε πολύ, πολύ δύσκολες συνθήκες του COVID. Σε μια καινούρια πραγματικότητα, εντελώς σουρεαλιστική ορισμένες φορές, ε, αλλά μπόρεσε και κατάφερε και προσαρμόστηκε σε αυτήν. Αυτό δεν έγινε επειδή έκανε μόνο η κυβέρνηση καλά τη δουλειά της. Έγινε κατά κύριο λόγο, διότι έκαναν καλά τη δουλειά τους οι επαγγελματίε του τουρισμού. Οι εργαζόμενοι του τουρισμού, οι επιχειρηματίε, οι φορεί του τουρισμού. Και θα μου επιτρέψετε να πω ότι η συνεργασία μα με του φορεί του τουρισμού 
ήταν ένα πολύ μεγάλο μάθημα θετικό για τη χώρα αυτή την περίοδο. Και έχουμε εδώ έναν εκπρόσωπο ε, των φορέων του, του τουρισμού, τον Γρηγόρη Τοντάσιο, τον πρόεδρο τη Πανελλήνια Ομοσπονδία Ξενοδόχων, ο οποίο πραγματικά σε αυτή τη διάρκεια τη κρίση επέδειξε εξαιρετικό επαγγελματισμό και με τι προτάσει και τι παρατηρήσει και του ίδιου και τη Ομοσπονδία καταφέραμε να βελτιώσουμε πάρα πολύ και τα υγειονομικά πρωτόκολλα αλλά και πολλέ άλλε δράσει τι οποίε κάναμε για να του κρατήσουμε όλου ασφαλεί. Γρηγόρη, σε ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ και το λέω και δημόσια και στο έχω πει και κατηδίαν. Ε, πρέπει να σα πω ότι. Διαψεύσαμε ακόμα και κασάνδρες εντό τη χώρα το προηγούμενο δίμηνο. Δεν μ' αρέσει που το λέω, αλλά υπήρχαν αρκετοί οι οποίοι έλεγαν ότι δεν θα ανοίξει ο ελληνικό τουρισμό όπω πρέπει, θα ξανακλείσει, δεν θα υπάρξει ασφάλεια, θα υπάρξει πρόβλημα στι ροέ των επισκεπτών κτλ. Λοιπόν, δεν υπήρξε τίποτα από όλα αυτά. Λειτουργήσε καλά το σύστημα. Προφανώ σα είπα και πριν ότι ενδεχομένω να υπήρχαν κάποιε αδυναμίε, αλλά το σύστημα λειτουργήσε καλά. Χαρακτηριστικό παράδειγμα είναι ότι 450.000 δειγματοληπτικά τεστ, επαναλαμβάνω το νούμερο, 450.000 δειγματοληπτικά τεστ έγιναν από 1η Ιουλίου μέχρι 25 Αυγούστου σε εισερχόμενους επισκέπτες μας από το εξωτερικό. Ένα πολύ μεγάλο νούμερο, το οποίο μάλιστα κατέδειξε και κάτι άλλο και θέλω να το πω, να μου επιτρέψετε, ότι προφανώς για την λίγο μεγαλύτερη αύξηση των κρουσμάτων που παρατηρείται τις τελευταίες μέρες, δεν ευθύνεται ο τουρισμός. Σε καμία περίπτωση, διότι το 0,2% μόνο των δειγμάτων τα οποία ελήφθησαν στις πύλες εισόδου ήταν θετικό στον κορονοϊό. Ένα τρίτο στοίχημα εξίσου σημαντικό το οποίο κερδίσαμε τη φετινή χρονιά είναι ότι καταφέραμε να κινήσουμε τη μηχανή της ελληνικής τουριστικής βιομηχανίας. Μια μηχανή που φάνταζε τον Απρίλιο, τον Μάρτιο ή ακόμα και τον Μάιο ότι είχε σκουριάσει απόλυτα και θα μπορούσε να λειτουργήσει. Ήταν πολύ μεγάλη προσπάθεια η οποία έγινε και από την κυβέρνηση και από τους φορείς και από τις επιχειρηματίες και από τις επιχειρήσεις. Και προφανώς η σεζόν δεν ήταν καλή. Το περιμέναμε άλλωστε, δεν είχαν πολύ μεγάλες προσδοκίες από αυτή τη σεζόν. Όμως το πολύ μεγάλο κέρδος είναι ότι η μηχανή κινήθηκε. Και πρέπει να σας πω ότι είτε 4, είτε 5 δις, είτε 3 δις μαζέψει η ελληνική οικονομία από τον τουρισμό, δεν θα μπορούσαμε, δεν θα είχαμε το δικαίωμα να τα στερήσουμε από την ελληνική οικονομία και από τις τοπικές κοινωνίες. Επίσης, το γεγονός ότι κινήθηκε ο τουρισμός, και ξέρω πολύ καλά γιατί και εγώ προέρχομαι από τουριστική περιοχή και ασχολούμουν και εγώ επαγγελματικά με τον τουρισμό, είναι πόσο ψυχολογικό βάρος θα ήταν για κάποιες τοπικές κοινωνίες που επί δεκαετίες ασχολούνται με τον τουρισμό, να μην άνοιγε καθόλου ο ελληνικός τουρισμός, να μην άνοιγαν επιχειρήσεις έστω για ένα μήνα. Όσο και να σας φαίνεται οξύμερο, αυτό βοήθησε πολύ, σε πολύ σημαντικό βαθμό ψυχολογικά ε, τους, τους Έλληνες που ασχολούνται επαγγελματικά ε, με τον τουρισμό. Η Ελλάδα συνολικά, κυρίες και κύριοι, όμως, κέρδισε ένα ευρύτερο στοίχημα από τη δυσκολία την οποία αντιμετώπισε φέτος όσον αφορά τον τουρισμό. Κέρδισε, αν θέλετε, μια, ένα στοίχημα της εθνικής υπερηφάνειας και μιας νέας συλλογικότητα που το είχαμε πάρα, πάρα πολύ ανάγκη στη χώρα μας, ειδικά μετά από μια δεκαετία οικονομικής κρίσης. Το είχε ανάγκη η κοινωνία, το είχε ανάγκη ο κόσμο και από εκεί που ήμασταν σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό το μαύρο πρόβατο τη Ευρώπη, γίναμε μέσα σε έξι μήνε το παράδειγμα προ μίμηση όχι μόνο στην Ευρώπη, αλλά και σε ολόκληρο τον κόσμο. Και αυτό από μόνο του αποτελεί ένα πάρα πολύ σημαντικό κέρδο και παρακαταθήκη προφανώ για τα επόμενα χρόνια. Ίσως ξέρετε, δεν έχουμε συνειδητοποιήσει ακόμα ω κοινωνία τι έχουμε καταφέρει φέτο. Τώρα στεκόμαστε όλοι και εμεί φυσικά και οι επαγγελματίε του κλάδου ακόμη περισσότερο, στη ζημιά η οποία έχει γίνει, η οποία όντω είναι μεγάλη. Αναφέρεται πολύ συχνά ε, στα μέσα ενημέρωση. Θα κάνουμε αποτίμηση το Νοέμβριο, τότε θα κάνουμε συνολικό ταμείο, το οποίο προφανώ θα είναι ζημιογόνο, αυτό το γνωρίζουμε, αλλά δεν έχουμε καταλάβει ακόμα τι έχουμε καταφέρει. Στεκόμαστε σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό ω κυβέρνηση. Ο ίδιο ο Πρωθυπουργό πριν από λίγε μέρε εδώ από τη Θεσσαλονίκη ανακοίνωσε μια δεύτερη δέσμη μέτρων ενίσχυσης όλων των επιχειρήσεων, προφανώς και των εργαζόμενων και του τουρισμού και της ελληνικής οικονομίας, όπως και να έχει η δική μας, αν θέλετε, στόχευση, η δική μας ευθύνη όσων κατέχουμε θέσεις στον ελληνικό τουρισμό, θέσεις ευθύνης, είναι να έχουμε το βλέμμα μας στραμμένο στους 700.000 εργαζόμενους και παραπάνω ενδεχομένως στον τομέα του τουρισμού, 
οι οποίοι περνούν και θα περάσουν δύσκολα το επόμενο διάστημα. Εξού και τα πολύ σημαντικά μέτρα στήριξη τα οποία ανακοίνωσε ο Πρωθυπουργό. Θυμίζω ότι ο ελληνικό τουρισμό είναι ένα κλάδο ο οποίο φέρνει στη χώρα, παράγει για τη χώρα μα το 25% του ακαθάριστου εγχώριου προϊόντος. Σχεδόν το 1 τέταρτο του εισοδήματος της χώρας. Όπως και να έχει, εμείς έχουμε το βλέμμα στραμμένο στην επόμενη μέρα. Από τη μέρα που ξεκινήσαμε να ανοίγουμε τον τουρισμό, γνωρίζαμε ότι το στοίχημα θα κερδιθεί σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό, κυρίως για την επόμενη μέρα. Όχι μόνο για το 2021, κυρίες και κύριοι, αλλά για τα επόμενα χρόνια, για το 2022, για το 2023, για το 2024. Έχουμε μάθει από τα λάθη μας, έχουμε φτιάξει έναν οδικό χάρτη για το πώς θα κινούμαστε τα επόμενα χρόνια και αυτό θα συνεχίσουμε να κάνουμε χωρίς προκαταλήψεις, όπου κάνουμε λάθη να τα διορθώνουμε, άλλωστε δεν υπάρχει μάνιο αντιμετώπισης αυτής της κρίσης. Είναι κάτι το οποίο το δημιουργήσαμε από το μηδέν και το εφαρμόσαμε χωρίς προηγούμενη εμπειρία. Η προκλήση για τον τουρισμό μας, για τον παγκόσμιο τουρισμό, αλλά ειδικά για τον ελληνικό τουρισμό, το 2021, είναι προφανές ότι είναι πολύ μεγάλες. Θα έλεγα ότι υπάρχει μια βασική ομοιότητα για το 2021 σε σχέση με το 2020, αλλά και μια βασική διαφοροποίηση μεταξύ των δύο ετών. Η ομοιότητα είναι ότι το 2021 θα είναι εξίσου αβέβαιο με το 2020. Και αυτό γιατί αυτή τη στιγμή δεν γνωρίζουμε πάρα πολλούς παράγοντες της επόμενης χρονιάς πώς θα διαμορφωθούν. Δεν γνωρίζουμε πώς θα κινηθούν οι αεροπορικές εταιρείε, δεν γνωρίζουμε πώς θα κινηθούν οι tour operators, δεν γνωρίζουμε πώς θα κινηθούν οι ίδιοι οι ταξιδιώτες. Δεν ξέρουμε πώς θα αλλάξει και πότε θα αλλάξει η ψυχολογία των Ευρωπαίων πολιτών, ακόμα κι αν έχουμε εμβόλιο το επόμενο διάστημα, το Νοέμβριο, το Δεκέμβριο ή τον Ιανουάριο. Κανείς δεν το γνωρίζει με σιγουριά. Η διαφορά μας όμως, και αυτό είναι πολύ σημαντικό και σε αυτό επενδύουμε κυρίες και κύριοι και θέλω να δώσω ένα μήνυμα και στη γερμανική αγορά γι' αυτό, είναι ότι πλέον ξέρουμε τι πρέπει να κάνουμε ως χώρα. Έχουμε εφαρμόσει υγειονομικά πρωτόκολλα, έχουμε μάθει πώς να κρατάμε τους επισκέπτες μας και τους πολίτες μας προφανώς ασφαλείς και κατά συνέπεια ξέρουμε ποιος είναι ο δρόμος που πρέπει να ακολουθήσουμε. Κάθε μέρα αυτό κάνουμε στην κυβέρνηση. Προσπαθούμε ο τουρισμός όσο κρατήσει ακόμα η σεζόν να είναι ασφαλής για όλους. Ξέρουμε πώς θα το κάνουμε, όπως το κάναμε για τους πολίτες μας από τον Μάρτιο μέχρι τον Μάιο, όπως το κάναμε για τους επισκέπτες μας από τον Μάιο μέχρι όσο πάει η σεζόν, έτσι θα το κάνουμε και το 2021. Έτσι θα το κάνουμε και το 2022, αν χρειαστεί που το απέφχουμε φυσικά. Ένα άλλο στοιχείο το οποίο έχουμε μπροστά μας και πρέπει να το συνεκτιμήσουμε, κυρίε και κύριοι, είναι ότι είναι προφανές ότι ο τρόπος με τον οποίο θα ταξιδεύει ο κόσμος θα αλλάξει. Αυτό το οποίο δεν γνωρίζουμε όμως είναι το πώς θα αλλάξει. Είναι σίγουρο ότι θα αλλάξουν οι συνήθειες των ταξιδίων, θα αλλάξουν οι προορισμοί σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό των ταξιδίων και σε αυτό, αν θέλετε, η Ελλάδα έχει ένα σημαντικό συγκριτικό πλεονέκτημα και στην γερμανική αγορά, η οποία μας ενδιαφέρει πάρα πολύ, διότι είναι η ασφαλέστερη χώρα το 2020, στην οποία μπορούσε κάποιος Γερμανός να κάνει διακοπές. Νομίζω αυτό μπορείτε να το πιστοποιήσετε όλοι. Δεν συμφωνώ με ορισμένες πρώιμες εκτιμήσεις, επίσης, ότι δίθεν το μοντέλο του μαζικού τουρισμού βαίνει προς το τέλος του. Θεωρώ ότι αυτά είναι πολύ προώρα συμπεράσματα. Δεν θα συμφωνήσω με αυτή τη λογική, ούτε ότι μόνο πρέπει να επενδύουμε στον λεγόμενο ποιοτικό τουρισμό. Θα επενδύσουμε και εκεί, επενδύουμε ήδη, με πάρα πολλούς τρόπους, αλλά αυτό το οποίο χρειαζόμαστε σίγουρα το 2021, σε ευρωπαϊκό επίπεδο, δεν θα τολμήσω να πω σε παγκόσμιο επίπεδο, είναι ένα πολύ καλύτερο συντονισμό, κυρίε και κύριοι. Αυτό το οποίο ζήσαμε φέτο το καλοκαίρι, όπου έκλειναν χώρε, άνοιγαν χώρε, έμπαιναν περιορισμοί ξαφνικά, δεν ξέραμε τι μα ξημέρωνε, που λέμε και εδώ ε, στην Ελλάδα, με το πώ εφαρμόζονταν μέτρα σε άλλε χώρε, αυτό πρέπει το 2021 με κάποιο τρόπο να ρυθμιστεί. Δεν θα πω θα σταματήσει, γιατί σέβομαι τη βούληση κάθε κράτου να προστατέψει ε, του πολίτε του. Αλλά αυτό όμω πρέπει με κάποιο τρόπο να ρυθμιστεί. Πρέπει η Ευρώπη να αναλάβει μια μεγαλύτερη πρωτοβουλία, μια πιο ισχυρή πρωτοβουλία, έτσι ώστε όλε οι χώρε μέλη να έχουν καλύτερο συντονισμό, προκειμένου να γνωρίζουμε τι θα γίνει την επόμενη μέρα. 
Το έχουμε ζήσει σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό στη χώρα μα. Έχουν ζημιωθεί πολίτε οι οποίοι έχουν κλείσει διακοπέ, όχι μόνο στην Ελλάδα αλλά και σε άλλε χώρε από τι ξαφνικέ αποφάσει. Αυτό είναι κάτι το οποίο πρέπει να το ρυθμίσουμε οπωσδήποτε το 2001. Και εκεί φυσικά είναι μια συζήτηση η οποία αφορά και άλλα επίπεδα, επίπεδα Ευρωπαίων ηγετών και Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση συνολικά. Ο Ελληνικό Οργανισμό Τουρισμού τον άφησα προ το τέλο. Έχουμε μάθει στο Ελληνικό Οργανισμό του Ρυσμού, ξέρετε, να λειτουργούμε πια υπό καθεστώς κρίσης. Είμαι ένα χρόνο στο, στην ηγεσία του οργανισμού. Τους 6,5 μήνες, τους 7 μήνες, αν βάλω κύριε Τάσιο και την Ντόμας Κουκ, ε, αντιμετωπίζουμε κρίσεις. Έχουμε γίνει πια ε, πεζοναύτες του τουρισμού, έτσι λέμε, ε, μεταξύ μας. Ποια είναι τα σχέδιά μας. Θα στα πω πάρα πολύ σύντομα για να μην σας κουράσω. Καταρχήν, έχουμε αποφασίσει η Ελλάδα να βρίσκεται σε καμπάνια διαφημιστική όλο το χρόνο. Τελείωσε αυτό που ξέραμε στο παρελθόν, ότι βγαίναμε τρει μήνε από τον Μάρτιο μέχρι τον Ιούνιο και αυτό ήταν η καμπάνια η διαφημιστική τη χώρα. Από εδώ και πέρα θα είμαι σε καμπάνια συνέχεια. Προφανώ στι χώρε οι οποίε για μα είναι οι σημαντικέ αγορέ με νούμερο ένα τη Γερμανία. Καταρτίζουμε επίση ένα πρόγραμμα virtual πλέον παρουσιάσεων τη χώρα σε όλη την Ευρώπη. Οι εκθέσει οι παραδοσιακέ, όπω γνωρίζετε όλοι, μάλλον βαίνουν ίσω προ το τέλο του, τουλάχιστον για το 2021. Δεν, δεν βλέπω οι σημαντικέ εκθέσει τουλάχιστον το 2021 να γίνονται φέτο. Άρα, εμεί έχουμε ήδη καταρτήσει ένα σχέδιο πώ θα παρουσιάσουμε τη χώρα εκτό εκθέσεων ε, μέσω digital ε, τεχνολογία. Ακόμα και θεματικέ παρεμβάσει θα κάνουμε digital. Ακόμα και γαστρονομία θα κάνουμε digital, όσο και αν σα φαίνεται. Περίεργο. Θα παρουσιάσουμε σε λίγες μέρες ένα ειδικό πρόγραμμα για το θεματικό τουρισμό και τις digital παρουσιάσεις του. Και τέλος, πάρα πολύ σημαντικό, και μια που είμαι στη Θεσσαλονίκη θέλω να το πω, το είπε και ο κύριος Υπουργό, ο κύριος Θεοχάρης πριν από λίγες μέρες εδώ, ετοιμάζουμε ειδικέ καμπάνιες διαφημιστικές για περιοχές οι οποίες επλήγησαν περισσότερο από τον COVID. Χαλκιδική, παράδειγμα. Κλασικός, σημαντικός ελληνικός προορισμός. Κρήτη, πατρίδα μου. Επλήγει περισσότερο λόγω τη λήψη πρόσθετων μέτρων. Επλήγει. Υπήρχε πρόβλημα που υπήρχε, ενισχύθηκε από τα νέα μέτρα. Και επίση, κάτι το οποίο εγώ το έχω θέσει ω προτεραιότητα επίση το επόμενο διάστημα, είναι να ενισχύσουμε τι δύο μεγάλε πόλει τη Ελλάδα, Αθήνα και Θεσσαλονίκη, οι οποίε έχουν πληγεί σε πολύ πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό, πολύ περισσότερο από ό,τι αναμέναμε, από τι συνέπειε τη πανδημία. Και Χαίρομαι που είναι εδώ και η κυρία Πατουλίδου και η κυρία Καραγιάννη. Είναι από την τοπική αυτοδιοίκηση, έχουμε εξαιρετική συνεργασία, κάνουν πάρα, πάρα πολύ καλή δουλειά εδώ στη Θεσσαλονίκη και θα είμαστε προφανώς σε επικοινωνία όπως ήμασταν τόσο καιρό. Δεν το είπα στην αρχή, ότι είμαστε όλοι μια γροθιά, ξέχασα να πω, είπα τους επιχειρηματίες, είπα τους φορείς, δεν είπα την αυτοδιοίκηση, περιφέρειες και μεγάλους δήμους, που ήμασταν πάντα και παραμένουμε σε πολύ καλή συνεργασία και θα συνεχίσουμε και θα το ενισχύσουμε αυτό. Κλείνω. Δεν θα αναφερθώ στα διαρθρωτικά προβλήματα του ελληνικού τουρισμού. Τα γνωρίζουμε, είναι μια συζήτηση εσωτερική, ενδεχομένως να μην σας αφορά κιόλας. Ε, να μην σας ενδιαφέρει ως, ως αντικείμενο. Αν, αν έχουμε την ευκαιρία όμως να κάνουμε κάτι διαφορετικό στην Ελλάδα, από εδώ και πέρα, για το 2021, 2022, 2023, την επόμενη τριετία δηλαδή, είναι να επενδύσουμε σε αυτό που είπες πριν, ε, Κλάους, στην αυθεντικότητα της ελληνικής φιλοξενίας. Είναι κάτι το οποίο δεν το έχει καμία χώρα της Ευρώπης. Καμία. Το λέω με τα λόγου γνώσης. Όλη η Ελλάδα είναι μια απόλυτα φιλόξενη χώρα. Οι Έλληνες το έχουν στο αίμα τους να φιλοξενούν και να φροντίζουν τους επισκέπτες. Είναι κάτι το οποίο πρέπει να το δουλέψουμε ακόμη περισσότερο, να το κάνουμε με περισσότερο επαγγελματισμό, ξέρουμε πώς θα το κάνουμε και προφανώς πάντα με ασφάλεια. Και αυτό είναι κάτι το οποίο το έχουμε μάθει καλά το 2020. Μπορούμε να το εξελίξουμε και να το κάνουμε ακόμα καλύτερο το 2021. Μια ειδική αναφορά στους Γερμανούς, σε σας. Διαχρονικά, οι Γερμανοί προτιμούν την Ελλάδα για διακοπές. Από τα τέλη της δεκαετίας του 70, όταν ήμουν 8-9 ετών, θυμάμαι τους πρώτους Γερμανούς, οι οποίοι ερχόντουσαν στην Κρήτη. Πολλοί από αυτούς ερχόντουσαν επί 15 χρόνια συνέχεια. Και όχι μόνο στην Κρήτη, αλλά και αλλού. Είναι η πιο σημαντική μας Αγορά. 
όχι μόνο επειδή έρχεται πολλοί κόσμος από τη Γερμανία, δεν το βλέπουμε μόνο σε επίπεδο εσόδων, το βλέπουμε και σε επίπεδο σχέσεων, όπως είπες, κλάους που έχουν αναπτυχθεί πλέον μεταξύ μας και είναι πάρα πολύ ισχυρέ και φυσικά θα βελτιωθούν και θα ισχυροποιηθούν το επόμενο διάστημα. Εγώ θέλω σε αυτή τη δύσκολη συγκυρία που όλοι φοβόντουσαν να ταξιδέψουν, να ευχαριστήσω πάρα πολύ ε, και τους παράγοντες της γερμανικής αγοράς που συνέχισαν να στηρίζουν ε, την Ελλάδα και να δίνουν το κίνητρο να έρθει κάποιος εδώ και φυσικά τους απλούς γερμανούς πολίτες οι οποίοι επέλεξαν τελικά τη χώρα μας ε, για διακοπές. Και χαίρομαι πολύ γιατί έχω μιλήσει με κάποιους από αυτούς και μου έχουν πει ότι σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό αισθάνθηκαν πολύ πολύ μεγάλη ασφάλεια ε, στη χώρα μας και θα ερχόντουσαν ξανά μόνο και μόνο γι' αυτό το λόγο. Σε κάθε περίπτωση, οι προκλήσεις για όλους μας είναι μπροστά μας. Δεν θα είναι εύκολο το 2021. Δεν συμμερίζομαι την άποψη που λέει ότι ο τουρισμός ο ελληνικός ή ο παγκόσμιος τουρισμός θα ανακάμψει σε 5 ή σε 6 ή σε 7 χρόνια. Θεωρώ ότι είναι μια ακραία άποψη αυτή. Δεν θεωρώ όμως ταυτόχρονα ότι θα ανακάμψει αυτόματα ο τουρισμός το 2021 και θα φτάσει στα επίπεδα του 2019. Αυτό δεν θα γίνει. Γι' αυτό πρέπει να είμαστε προετοιμασμένοι γι' αυτό, να δουλέψουμε όσο καλύτερα γίνεται, να δουλέψουμε μαζί. Εμεί, όπω ξέρετε, είμαστε απόλυτα ανοιχτοί σε συνεργασίε και συνέργειε και με τη γερμανική αγορά. Η κυρία Στρούμπου ε, είναι η επικεφαλή μα. Ε, ελπίζω να για λίγο ακόμα καιρό, κυρία Στρούμπου, στο γραφείο μα, στο γραφείο ΤΕΟΤ στη Γερμανία, κάνει εξαιρετική δουλειά. Και γενικότερα το γραφείο μα στη Γερμανία θα ισχυροποιηθεί ακόμη περισσότερο. Άρα, σα καλώ να είμαστε κοντά, να συνεργαζόμαστε, διότι τα δύσκολα είναι ακόμα. Μπροστά μας. Σας ευχαριστώ πολύ για την προσοχή σας. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this impressive overview. Thank you very much for your support. Health first. For my personal views, and I like this very much more than America first. <laughs> but uh, um, you said, um, of course, the number of COVID cases are growing in every country, also in Germany. But in Greece, they are still well below uh, the critical uh, borders. Uh, and you said also that uh, the tourists uh, coming in from Germany, from other countries, are not responsible for this. There are only a few cases. But of course, there's always uncertainty from some travelers, especially elder tra people, said, ah, what will happen if I have been tested positive? What will happen to me? Do. Can you please a little bit explain? Because I know there, there are concepts how Greece deals with these cases. Well, as you know, Klaus, we have a protocol that you follow very well. You follow it from the tourism, you follow it from the workers στα ξενοδοχεία και προφανώς αυτό εποπτεύεται από τον ΕΟΔΗ, από τον Ελληνικό Οργανισμό Δημόσιας Υγείας, από την Γενική Γραμματεία Πολιτικής Προστασίας, το Υπουργείο πια, η εφαρμογή του. Υπάρχει πολύ συγκεκριμένη διαδικασία, η οποία προφανώς έχει ήδη εφαρμοστεί, χωρίς προβλήματα. Αν έχουν δημιουργηθεί κάποιες αστοχίες, το είπα και πριν, να διορθωθούν. Αλλά δεν υπάρχει λόγος να φοβάται κάποιο ότι θα έρθει στην Ελλάδα για διακοπές, ενδεχομένως και θα παραμείνει εδώ για κανένα χρόνο. Αυτό δεν γίνεται. Έχει μια διαδικασία συγκεκριμένη, έχει ορισμένε μέρε, οι οποίε περνάει από δύο τεστ συνεχόμενα, αν δεν κάνω λάθο. Έχει νομίζω και 7 μέρε, κύριε Τάσιο. 7 μέρε καραντίνα, και μετά νομίζω ότι μπορεί να επιστρέψει ε, στη χώρα του. Και φυσικά, ξέχασα να το πω, πολύ σημαντικό είναι τα ξενοδοχεία καραντίνα, όπου υπάρχουν σε όλε τι περιφερειακέ ενότητε, που ουσιαστικά ξεχωρίζουν, αν θέλετε, δεν είναι πολύ καλή έκφραση ξεχωρίζουν αυτούς οι οποίοι είναι θετικοί ή ύποπτοι για θετικό κρούσμα από τους υπόλοιπους πελάτες. Αλλά οι υπόλοιποι πελάτες παραμένουν ασφαλείς και αυτοί οι οποίοι ενδεχομένως υπάρχει υποψία για κρούσμα έχουν μια διαφορετική αντιμετώπιση. Αλλά κανείς, το λέω με τα λόγω γνώσης, δεν πρόκειται να μπλοκάρει στη χώρα και να μην επιστρέψει στη χώρα του πολύ σύντομα αν είναι θετικό στον κορονοϊό. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to pick. Um, you, you said also, of course, the big importance um, the tourism sector has for the Greek economy. Um, and you said the prime minister is uh, addressing new uh, measures from the state in order to support the employees, the, empl uh, the companies. Can you give us a little glimpse, a little mm -hmm. bit more color? What is planned? 
Το πρώτο και σημαντικότερο είναι η προστασία των εργαζόμενων. Γνωρίζουμε ότι το μεγαλύτερο ποσοστό των εργαζόμενων στον ελληνικό τουρισμό είναι εποχικά εργαζόμενοι. Δουλεύουν κάποιου μήνε, δηλαδή δεν δουλεύουν όλο τον χρόνο. Για αυτού ειδικά υπάρχει μια ειδική μέρημνα, την οποία ανακοίνωσε ο Πρωθυπουργό, όπου τα ένσημα τα οποία χρειάζονται προκειμένου να μπουν στο Ταμείο Ενεργεία και να παίρνουν το εμηνιαίο βοήθημα, κόπηκαν στο μισό. Από τα 100 ένσημα πήγαμε στα 50. Αυτό είναι μια πολύ σημαντική ε, αλλαγή για του εργαζόμενου, που τη ζητούσαν εργαζόμενοι και δικαίω συζητούσαν και ανταποκρίθηκε η κυβέρνηση και ο Πρωθυπουργό και αυτό ανακοινώθηκε. Απ' την άλλη πλευρά έχουμε πολύ σημαντικά μέτρα στήριξη των επιχειρήσεων, διότι αυτή η κυβέρνηση, ξέρετε, δεν έχει τη λογική, την επιδοματική λογική. Δεν έχει τη λογική ότι δίνω επιδόματα επαόριστων προκειμένου να στηρίξω του εργαζόμενου. Στηρίζω την επιχείρηση πρώτα για να μπορέσω να στηρίξω τον εργαζόμενο και να μην χάσω θέσει εργασία. Οι επιχειρήσει λοιπόν έχουν αρκετά κίνητρα, όπω για παράδειγμα ότι χρέη υπάρχουν προ το δημόσιο μετατίθενται για, το, για το, την άνοιξη του 2021, ε, υπάρχουν μειώσεις στις ασφαλιστικές φορές των εργαζόμενων, υπάρχουν μειώσεις ε, στη φορολογία και υπάρχουν και κίνητρα προκειμένου να επιδοτηθεί πλέον η εργασία και όχι η ανεργία. Αυτό θα δούμε και πώς θα λειτουργήσει. Ε, υπάρχουν επίσης, υπάρχει το πρόγραμμα συνεργασία, το οποίο αφορά τους εργαζόμενους επιχειρήσεις αυτές, το οποίο επεκτείνεται και βελτιώνεται. Ξεκίνησε με κάποια προβλήματα, είναι αλήθεια, αλλά στην πορεία βελτιώθηκε σε πολύ μεγάλο βαθμό. Και φυσικά η επιστρεπτέα προκαταβολή, όπως λέγεται, που είναι πολύ σημαντική για τη ρευστότητα των επιχειρήσεων, που και αυτή θα συνεχίσει και για το επόμενο διάστημα. Αυτό το οποίο θέλω να πω είναι ότι ξεκινήσαμε τα μέτρα ως κυβέρνηση τον, τον Μάρτιο, τέλος Μαρτίου. Έχουμε ανακοινώσει τρεις φορές προς τα μέτρα. Αν χρειαστεί, θα ανακοινώσουμε κι άλλα. Ε, όλα, όπως είπα πριν, έχουν να κάνουν με τη στήριξη του κλάδου και των επιχειρήσεων, αλλά και των εργαζόμενων. Θα έλεγα ότι είναι 50-50 ε, η, η φροντίδα της κυβέρνησης και για τις επιχειρήσεις και για τους εργαζόμενους. Αλλά αυτό, αν χρειαστεί, θα συνεχιστεί. Okay. Last question. You mentioned the German market, which is very important for Greece for many years, and, and this is, gives me the opportunity to welcome also Vicky Strumpu and Dr. Arete Prinou from the Frankfurt office. They joined us already yesterday evening in this wonderful fish restaurant. Welcome here also. Um, you said um, the German market is very important, and we see also from some other markets, UK, there are the first restrictions again, unfortunately, but Germany is still open. What are your plans for the German market for next year? Thanks. Πρώτα απ' όλα, θα θέλαμε πάρα πολύ να κάνουμε ένα. Δεν ξέρω αν θα το καταφέρουμε να το κάνουμε σε όλη τη χώρα. Να κάνουμε ένα virtual tour σε όλη τη χώρα, προκειμένου να δείξουμε ότι η Ελλάδα παραμένει ασφαλή προορισμό. Αυτό θέλουμε να το κάνουμε. Δεν ξέρω αν θα το καταφέρουμε, γιατί είναι πολύ μεγάλη, ε, πολύ μεγάλη δουλειά. Αλλά αυτό θα το προσπαθήσουμε, θα το βάλουμε ε, στο, στην οργάνωσή του το επόμενο διάστημα και θα θελήσουμε να το κάνουμε μέχρι το Μάρτιο-Απρίλιο. Επίση, αυτό το οποίο θέλουμε να κάνουμε και το κουβεντιάζαμε με την κυρία Στρούμπου, είναι εφόσον δεν γίνουν εκθέσεις στη Γερμανία, να βρούμε έναν πιο έξυπνο, πιο άμεσο, άλλο τρόπο, προκειμένου να προσεγγίσουμε ακόμη περισσότερο τη γερμανική αγορά. Και φυσικά, αυτό το οποίο δεν θα σταματήσουμε να κάνουμε, το είπα και πριν, είναι ένα ευρύ πρόγραμμα διαφήμισης και προβολής, ξεκινώντας από τις 15-20 Οκτωβρίου μέχρι τον Ιανουάριο και μετά ένα δεύτερο κύμα τον Ιανουάριο μέχρι τον Μάιο. Σε αυτό το επίπεδο, ξέρετε πολύ καλό ότι συνεργαζόμαστε με τα μέσα ενημέρωση. Τον, της, της Γερμανίας, προφανώς. Ε, επίσης, συνεργαζόμαστε σε επίπεδο συνδιαφήμισης με tour operators και αεροπορικές εταιρείες. Αυτό εννοούσα όταν αναφέρθηκα και πριν ότι θέλουμε να δούμε και πώς θα κινηθεί αυτή η αγορά των tour operators και των αεροπορικών εταιριών, γιατί γνωρίζετε όλοι τα προβλήματα ειδικά των αεροπορικών εταιριών. Εκεί θα περιμένουμε λίγο να δούμε πώς θα κινηθεί, αλλά θα ξεκινήσουμε συζητήσεις μέσω του γραφείου μας ε, στη Γερμανία και φυσικά ότι θεωρηθεί ότι είναι μια καλή ιδέα για την προβολή του ελληνικού τουρισμού στον ελληνικό οργανισμό τουρισμού, τη συζητάμε. Thank you very much. Ευχαριστώ Thank πολύ. You, Mr. Fagakis. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to welcome Mrs. Vula Patulidou. She's the president of the Thessaloniki Tourism Organization. We have seen something already these days. Uh, we had also the wonderful uh, um, tour to Virginia. But now we would like to hear a little bit the strategy. Thank you for coming.
Καλημέρα κυρίες και κύριοι. Χαίρομαι πάρα πολύ το ότι ακούστηκε για Θεσσαλονίκη, γιατί μπορεί να μην γνωρίζετε τι είναι η Θεσσαλονίκη, το ότι η Θεσσαλονίκη σαν η δεύτερη μεγαλύτερη πόλη της Ελλάδος θα μπει στον προγραμματισμό της επιπλέον ενίσχυσης της παρουσίας της, της διαφήμισης, γιατί πριν από κάποια χρόνια όταν θα σας πω μετά τι είχε γίνει, με ρώτησαν από πού είσαι και λέω Θεσσαλονίκη, μου λένε «Where is Θεσσαλονίκη» γνωρίζουμε το μύθο της Θεσσαλονίκης, γιατί δεν είναι τυχαία πόλη, δεν είναι τυχαία ονομασία. Είναι, η Θεσσαλονίκη είναι η Γοργόνα. Είναι η Γοργόνα η αδερφή του Μεγάλου Αλεξάνδρου. Ο μύθος λέει πως η Θεσσαλονίκη ήταν η αδερφή λοιπόν του Μεγάλου Αλεξάνδρου που μεταμορφώθηκε σε Γοργόνα, γιατί από λάθο η άγνοια ήπιε το αθάνατο νερό που ο αδερφός της, αυτός ο Μέγας Αλέξανδρος ο Τρανός, ο Μεγάλος, το αθάνατο νερό που με κόπους και κινδύνους είχε αποκτήσει για να εξασφαλίσει την αθανασία. Όταν λοιπόν κατάλαβε το σφάλμα της και φοβούμενη την οργή του αδερφού της, απαρηγόρητη παρακαλούσε τον Θεό να της επιτρέψει να μην δει ποτέ τον θάνατο του αδερφού της και έπεσε στο θερμαϊκό που βλέπετε. Όμως ο Θεός την αντάμυψε, την άφησε να ζει αλλά μισή γυναίκα, μισό ψάρι, δηλαδή γοργόνα. Από τότε, όσοι δεν ξέρουν τον μύθο που λέει και συνεχίζει να λέει ότι η γοργόνα ταξιδεύει στη θάλασσα, βρίσκει καράβια, τα σταματάει και ρωτάει, ζει ο Μέγας Αλέξανδρος. Εάν η απάντηση είναι ζει και βασιλεύει και τον κόσμο κυριεύει, σώζονται. Εάν όμως πούν μα πέθανε, τότε σηκώνονται κύματα ψηλά και το καράβι βυθίζεται. Από τότε, λοιπόν, γυρίζει τη θάλασσα και προσπαθεί να κάνει λίγο πιο γνωστή την πόλη μας. Οι μύθοι στην παράδοση ενός τόπου προφανώς δεν είναι τυχαίοι, συμβολίζουν κάτι. Ο μύθος της Γοργόνας συμβολίζει αυτό το νιάξιμο, το ονομάσαμε αλλιώ και φιλοξενία, αλλά αυτό το νιάξιμο που έχουμε και για τον τόπο μας, για τους ανθρώπους μας, αλλά και για τους ανθρώπους που μας επισκέπτονται. Η Θεσσαλονίκη είναι μια πόλη που αναγεννήθηκε πάρα πολλές φορές, από το μηδέν. Παλεύουμε να μετατρέψουμε όποια προβλήματα σε πλεονεκτήματα. Δεν το καταφέρνουμε βεβαίως πάντα, αλλά το παλεύουμε. Άλλωστε αυτό αποδεικνύει και το σημερινό αντάμωμά μας. Είναι μια πόλη που δεν σταμάτησε να υπάρχει εδώ και 2.300 χρόνια. Με τον διτό μου ρόλο της Αντιπεριφερειάρχης της Μητροπολιτικής Ενότητας Θεσσαλονίκης, της Προέδρου Οργανισμού Τουρισμού Θεσσαλονίκης και ως εδώ ήτανε που με ρώτησαν από πού προέρχομαι και ως η πρώτη Ελληνίδα Ολυμπιονίκης. Γκρεμίζω λοιπόν τα τείχη αυτής της πόλης και σας καλωσορίζω. Είστε στην πρωτεύουσα της Κεντρικής Μακεδονίας, την δεύτερη, όπως είπα, μεγαλύτερη πόλη της Ελλάδος, που όμως έχει, όπως και τα περισσότερα σημεία του τόπου μας, 300 μέρες λιακάδα και το πιο μαγευτικό ηλιοβασίλημα που έχετε δει στη ζωή σας, εάν δεν το έχετε δει μέχρι τώρα. Μέχρι και τον Φεβρουάριο το αεροδρόμιο Μακεδονία συνέδε τη Θεσσαλονίκη με περίπου 150 απευθείας προορισμού σε όλο τον κόσμο και είχε 27 πτήσεις καθημερινά από την Αθήνα. Βρίσκεται πάνω στην Εγνατία Οδό, στο μεγαλύτερο αυτοκινητόδρομο της Ελλάδος που αποτελεί τμήμα της Ευρωπαϊκής Οδού 90. Συνδέει η Δύση με Ανατολή από την Ιγουμένησα δίνοντας πρόσβαση στα νησιά του Ιωνίου και φτάνει μέχρι και την Κωνσταντινούπολη. Σημαντικό λιμάνι πάνω στον δυτικό δρόμο του μεταξιού και όχι μόνο σε αυτόν. Είστε η πρώτη πνοή συνεργατών από τη Γερμανία σε αυτό το κομβικό σημείο εδώ στη Θεσσαλονίκη που έχει πολλές ιστορίες να σας διηγηθεί. Είναι αυτό που γράφεται το Many Stories, One Heart. Πάρα πολλές ιστορίες φυλακισμένες μέσα σε μια καρδιά. Ιστορίες που θα σας διηγηθούν τα μνημεία μας που είναι διάσπαρτα στην πόλη. Από την προϊστορική εποχή, την ελληνιστική, τη ρωμαϊκή, τη βυζαντινή, την οθωμανική και την πρόσφατη ιστορία της. Πόσες πόλεις μπορούν να συγκεντρώσουν τόσες ιστορικές περιόδους στην τουριστική τους ατζέντα. Ένα συρταρωτό μυθιστόρημα είναι ο τόπος μας. Δικαίως περηφανευόμαστε για τα μνημεία μας, 15 εκ των οποίων βρίσκονται στον κατάλογο της παγκόσμιας κληρονομιάς της UNESCO. Ιδανικός προορισμός για City Break από οποιαδήποτε άλλη πόλη της Ελλάδος, από οποιαδήποτε εποχή του χρόνου και μπορείτε. Μπορεί να σας προσφέρει κάθε μορφή τουρισμού που υπάρχει, κλασικού ή εναλλακτικού, 365 μέρες τον χρόνο. Ως πολιεθνική πόλη, επί αιώνες, πρωτεύουσα των προσφύγων. Από όλε τις περιοχές του ελληνισμού, κεντρικό λιμάνι της Μεσογείου, δέχτηκε και αφομοίωσε ποικίλε γεύσεις και συνθέσεις στη μαχηρική και τη ζάχαροπλαστική από Ευρώπη και Ανατολή. 
τα παραδοσιακά φαγητά της Θεσσαλονίκης είναι, και ίσως να τα γευτήκατε λίγο χθε, λίγο όμως, είναι συγκερασμός γεύσεων και αισθήσεων τοπικών μακεδονικών φαγητών και ευρωπαϊκής μαγειρικής με την ανατολίτικη κουζίνα και τις προσφυγικές διαιτητικές συνθήκες, συνήθειες. Αυτό μας βάζει αυτομάτως στην καρδιά κάθε επισκέπτη. Γνωρίζουμε όλοι ότι ο έρωτας, λένε, στα περισσότερα νομιζοκράτη και παγκοσμίω περνάει από το στομάχι, αλλά μην ξεχνάμε ότι και πολύ σοφά θα κάνουμε και την καμπάνια, μπορεί τη γεύση να μην την νιώσει στη γλώσσα σου, τη μυρωδιά επίσης μπορεί να μην την νιώσει, αλλά μπορεί να ανοίξει αυτή την περιέργεια να έρθει να γευτείς, γιατί γνωρίζουμε πάρα πολύ καλά και νομίζω το ξέρετε κι εσείς, ορμόμενοι και εγώ καθώς έχω μεγαλώσει ένα πολύ μεγάλο χρονικό διάστημα στη Γερμανία, κάποιες γεύσεις που αυτές οι γεύσεις όμως γεννούν μνήμες. Η πόλη μας αλλάζει την αμφίεσή τη με ταχύτητα ταχυδοτηρουργού. Οι κοντινοί προορισμοί, τόσο διαφορετικοί και τόσο πλούσιοι σε προτάσεις για έναν τουρίστα, μπορούν να σε κάνουν να πιστέψεις πως ως διαμαγείας μεταφέρθηκε σε έναν τελείως διαφορετικό κόσμο, σε ένα άλλο σύμπαν. Σε λιγότερο από μία ώρα μπορεί να βρεθεί στον Όλυμπο, στη Βεργίνα, στο Αρχαίο Δίον, το Μουσείο των Εγών, την πατρίδα του Αριστοτέλη, το Άγιο Όρος, την Αμφίπολη. Οι κοντινέ παραλίε βραβευμένε με γαλάζια σημαία τη Περαία, τη Αγία Τριάδα, τα ιαματικά λουτρά του Λαγκαδά, τα λαγκούν τη Επανομή και του Αγγελοχωρίου, το Εθνικό Πάρκο Δέλτα του Αξιού. Είναι τόποι που μπορεί ένα Γερμανό τουρίστα να εντυπωσιαστεί και με το περιβάλλον, αλλά και με την εγκύτητα στην πόλη. Τα εμπορικά κέντρα, η αγορά, το ιστορικό κέντρο τη πόλη δεν έχουν σε τίποτα να ζηλέψουν αυτά όλων των άλλων μεγάλων ευρωπαϊκών πόλεων. Και τα περισσότερα από αυτά τα καταστήματα μπορείτε με, μία, με έναν περίπατο να τα επισκεφτείτε με τα πόδια. Μεγάλο πλεονέκτημα και η ύπεθρο. Η ύπεθρο τη Θεσσαλονίκη γεννά πολλέ μορφέ τουρισμού. Ο αμπελουργικό χώρο ανθεί και μπορεί να αποτελέσει σημείο αναφορά για του συνόφιλου στο διαρκώ αναπτυσσόμενο διεθνή εινικό τουρισμό. Έχουμε εμβληματικέ εινικέ μονάδε διάσπαρτε σε όλο τον ομό τη Θεσσαλονίκη, αναγνωρισμένε διεθνώ. Η Θεσσαλονίκη παράγει πολιτισμό. Τα δεκάδε μουσεία, τα θέατρα, τα multiplex of art, το μέγαρο μουσική, φεστιβάλ, η μουσική κληρονομιά την κάνει να πρωτοπορεί στην πολιτισμική ζωή τη Ελλάδο. Ο αθλητικό τουρισμό κερδίζει έδαφο και ήδη κατέχει πρωτιέ τη παγκόσμια κατατάξη διοργανώσεων αθλητικών events όπω αυτό των μαραθωνίων. Ο Διεθνή Μαραθώνιο Δρόμο Μέγα Αλέξανδρο, που γίνεται, ευχόμαστε να γίνει και φέτο, αλλά. Γίνεται μέχρι και τώρα, τα τελευταία 15 χρόνια, κάθε Απρίλη και συνδέει τις δύο πρωτεύουσες της Μακεδονίας, την Αρχαία και την Καινούρια, την Πέλα με τη Θεσσαλονίκη, έχει παγκοσμίως καταταχθεί στην 8η θέση στον κόσμο. Η πόλη μας έχει μπει δυναμικά στον τομέα των μεγάλων διεθνών συνεδρίων και εκθέσεων και βρίσκεστε σε μία αίθουσα που έχει φιλοξενήσει πάρα πολλά συνέδρια και με πολύ μεγάλη χαρά μπορώ να πω ότι έχει και το όνομά μου. Έτσι, χωρίς, ε, συγχωρέστε με, αλλά έτσι έχει γίνει. Αυτή η αίθουσα είναι η αίθουσα που λέει Σπατουλίδου. Η στρατηγική λοιπόν θέση που έχουμε στην Ευρώπη, η ευκολία πρόσβασης στα μέσα μεταφοράς, οι υποδομές και οι υπηρεσίες που προσφέρουμε, μας έχουν μετατρέψει σε μια σημαντική δύναμη στον τομέα τουρισμού συνεδρίων. Διαθέτουμε αναλογικά τα περισσότερα πεντάστερα ξενοδοχεία στην Ελλάδα. Η στρατηγική θέση της πόλης στο θερμαϊκό κόλπο αναδεικνύει τη Θεσσαλονίκη ως ρυθμιστή των ιστορικών εξελίξεων από την ίδρυσή της έως και τα νεότερα χρόνια. Ξεχωριστή θέση κατέχουν αναμφίβολα τα μνημεία της παλαιοχριστιανικής, βυζαντινής και μεταβυζαντινής περίοδου. Ο θρησκευτικό τουρισμό είναι ένα πολύ ισχυρό πλεονέκτημα τη πόλη. Είναι η πόλη που ο Απόστολο Παύλο ερμηνεύει την Αγία Γραφή και στη Μονή Βλατάδων, σε ένα μέρο που, εάν προλάβετε να το επισκεφτείτε, θα δείτε μια πόλη τελείω διαφορετικά, η οποία λίγο πολύ, ή τουλάχιστον το μέρο που θα είστε εσεί, θα κουμπάτε στα σύννεφα, βρίσκεται το αγίασμα του Αποστόλου Παύλου. Σημείο που προσελκύει πλήθο κόσμου, πλήθο πιστών από όλο τον κόσμο. Η Θεσσαλονίκη είναι μία πόλη που δεν κοιμάται ποτέ. Ακόμη και αυτή την περίοδο που ισχύουν ειδικά περιοριστικά μέτρα, σας προτείνω να κάνετε μία βόλτα στην παραλία. Η Θεσσαλονίκη διαθέτει την μεγαλύτερη φοιτητική κοινότητα στα Βαλκάνια. Πάνω από 150.000 φοιτητές φιλοξενούνται στον τόπο μας. Και εξεγνωρίζετε πάρα πολύ καλά ότι όπου υπάρχουν νέοι, η ζωή κάνει θόρυβο. Αγαπάμε τη διασκέδαση, αγαπάμε τις παρέες, τα γέλια, τη μουσική και τη χαρά. Είμαστε μια πόλη που θα βρει τρόπο να διασκεδάσει ακόμα και όταν την βάλεις σε καλούπια. Αυτό μεταγγίζουμε στους επισκέπτες. Ή και αυτό. 
Ο Γερμανός επισκέπτης που θα μας τιμήσει με την παρουσία του θα διαπιστώσει πως η Θεσσαλονίκη είναι μια πόλη. Total tourism satisfaction. Ο δρόμος του κρασιού, ο δρόμος του καπνού, του μεταξιού, της διασκέδασης έχουν έναν προορισμό. Το να ανακαλύψουν όποιο έρθει στη Θεσσαλονίκη τον εαυτό του. Εντέκεν ζήσιχ ζέλπστ. Είναι Θεσσαλονίκη, μια πόλη που έχει αρχές και πρακτικές να εφαρμόζονται στο πλαίσιο του βιώσιμου και αηφόρου τουρισμού με βέλτιστη χρήση των περιβαλλοντικών πόρων της, με σεβασμό στην κοινωνική και πολιτισμική αυθεντικότητα των τοπικών μας κοινοτήτων. Και βεβαίως, δεν θα το ξεχάσουμε ποτέ, ούτω ή άλλως αναφερθήκαμε και πριν, Όλη αυτή τη χρονική διάρκεια μπορέσαμε να εξασφαλίσουμε και να ασφαλίσουμε το καλύτερο δυνατό για την υγεία όσων μας επισκέπτονται αλλά και των δικών μας πολιτών. Μετά από το ισχυρό αυτό παγκόσμιο σοκ και τα lockdown είμαστε η πόλη, ειλικρινά είμαστε η πόλη που ευελπιστούμε να ξεκλειδώσουμε το συνέστημα. Γιατί χωρίς συνέστημα η Θεσσαλονίκη δεν υπάρχει. Γιατί η Θεσσαλονίκη είναι οι άνθρωποι της. Σας ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ. I Thank hope you. that I can understand you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you very much. We have seen most of the things we have shown on this wonderful video. You we have visit. experienced already ourselves, but our aim and our class of the travel agents to, to be act as a multiplier. And what, in my opinion, is also a big uh, opportunity is to combine uh, Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki has very good um, flight connections to Germany, to many, many cities in Germany, to combine yes. the city with a, a, a holiday in, in, in this. Uh, ναι, νομίζω, νομίζω ότι ε, βεβαίω ε, εκείνο που δεν και το, το έχουμε συζητήσει και με τον ε, κύριο Τάσιο, θα μου πείτε όλοι αναφερόμεστε στον κύριο Τάσιο, γιατί είναι από τα, α, από τα μέλη που βοηθάνε τόσο πολύ στον τουρισμό, μια και η ειδικότητα είναι, πολύ, είναι εξαιρετική. Ε, Γνωρίζουμε ότι τουλάχιστον με την Γερμανία οι πτήσεις, η, η, η ένωση με, την, με πολλές γερμανικές πόλεις είναι άμεση, οπότε ειλικρινά εκείνο που περιμένουμε είναι αυτό να συνεχιστεί και σε αυτό θα επενδύσουμε περαιτέρω. Εκτός και αν θέλετε και κάτι παραπάνω. Η αλήθεια είναι ότι μέχρι τώρα φοβόμασταν πολύ τις μετακινήσεις. Ε, απλά ε, προσπαθούσαμε όσο το δυνατόν να περιορίσουμε αυτές τις δυνατότητες που μπορεί να ξέφευγαν και να δημιουργούσαν κάποια προβλήματα υγείας. Όμως, είμαστε σε συνεργασία και με το Δήμο και με τους υπόλοιπους Δήμους, γιατί αυτά που σας έδειξα δεν είναι μόνο ο τόπος μας, αλλά είναι 14 Δήμοι σε όλο τον νομό. Να δημιουργηθούν πακέτα έτσι ώστε να μπορείς με καλύτερο τρόπο... Δεν ξέρω αν μπορεί, είναι, είναι σωστή η έκφραση να τα πουλήσει ε, σε, σε επισκέπτε, αλλά για να μπορέσει να ικανοποιήσει και ότι τι θέλει ο καθένα. Mm. Ε, είμαστε σε αυτή τη διαργασία και νομίζω ότι με τη συνεργασία όλων αυτό θα δημιουργηθεί με τον καλύτερο δυνατό τρόπο και χωρί να ε, μπορεί κανεί να φύγει από εδώ χωρί να είναι ευχαριστημένο. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Thank you very much, Ms. Παλίλου. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like, now like to switch to the view of the hoteliers. Gregorius Tassios is the president of the Halki Kidiki uh, Hotel Association, but he's also the president of the Hellenic Hotel um, Federation for the Federation for the whole country, for all the hoteliers. And of course, we heard from Mr. Fagakis how important the tourism sector is and how important the hotel sector is. Some of uh, you perhaps have seen him also at the FEW Congress, uh, which was also a virtual event, and uh, Gigoris was one of the panelists there also speaking about the prospects of Greece, and now we are happy to have them here as a supporter and to hear you. Welcome. Kalimera, Kalimera. Willkommen, Klaus. Thank you, sir. Willkommen, alle. Good morning. Vielen Dank, wo sind Sie hier in uh, unser schönes Land, Nordgriechenland, Griechenland, Thessaloniki, Halkidiki. Uh, ich hoffe, alles geht gut bis jetzt in diesen eineinhalb Tagen. Und ich hoffe, auch die nächsten Tage schon geht auch sehr gut. Uh, vielen Dank, uh, Herr Frankakis. Und auch vielen Dank für die griechische Tourismusorganisation. Herr Strumbu, Herr Prino, uh, Entschuldigung, Frau Strumbu, Frau Prino. Uh, und uh, vielen Dank auch Janis, Aslanis, Vula Patulidu und Maria Karajani. Und natürlich, Natürlich. Vielen Dank, Ada Karajani von Praxis, wo hilft und macht alles sehr schön organisiert in dieser Zeit. 
Äh, jetzt ich, äh, ich äh, präsentiere für euch die Halkidiki, weil ich bin Präsident auch dort. Leider Klaus, ich, bin, ich habe vier verschiedene oh. Präsidenten. Ja. Ich bin Präsident aus Halkidiki Gesellschaft, Hotel Association, Halkidiki Tourism Organisation, äh, Hotel Federation of Greece, of, aus Griechenland. Äh, und äh, auch vom Hellenic Chamber of Hotels. Ich bin Member of Board. So. Halkidiki is the third destination in Greece in terms of capacity, and it's a peninsula of uh, distinctive shape located in North Greece, part of Central Macedonia. It is south of the city of Thessaloniki and serves the same airport, Macedonia, Thessaloniki International Airport, which direct flight from 41 countries, included direct flights from 11 cities uh, in Germany, uh, from Dortmund, Hamburg, Stuttgart, uh, Düsseldorf, Bremen, uh, Nürnberg, uh, Berlin, Frankfurt, Köln, and Hanover. In terms of arrival, Germans are the first nationality in Halkiviki with 350,000 guests in 2019. While the, British, uh, while the British come second with 120,000. Halkidiki consists of the mainland and three smaller peninsulas, Cassandra, Sitonia, and Athos. The capital of Halkidiki is Poligeros, located in the center of, uh, in the center of, of Halkidiki. Halkidiki is very gifted to have four distinct seasons and experience 20, 50, 250 days of sunshine per year. The region has very warm and dry summers with minimal rainfall and 18 hours of sunshine per day. The autumns and springs are warm with an average account of rainfall. Average temperature is between 23 degrees and 34 degrees during summertime. Island hopping by car. The three peninsulas, which are shared like Poseidon's trident and sticks out into the Aegean Sea, make Halkidiki the perfect tour with the longest stretch of coastline, 550 kilometers, in mainland Greece. Its peninsula, cosmopolitan Cassandra, natural Sitonia, and spiritual and authentic Athos has its own, own special characteristics and offers a different experience, tourism to the max in the first escapes in nature in the second and the serenity in the third. Halkidiki is like three different islands in one destination. And as we always suggest to our guests, wherever they are staying, don't miss, sorry, <clears throat> don't miss the opportunity to start hopping to the other peninsulas and discover this multiplicated destination. It feels like island hopping with your car. 1,000 beaches, 550 kilometers of coastline ships, more than 1,000 beaches. Here, you may find popular beach bars, beach bars with music and water sport facilities, ideal for socializing of one hand and one another. You may discover the uh, secluded beaches and deserted coves, perfect for sailing out. There are solo beaches offering family, activities where children can play uh, safe, yet there are places with deep waters for scuba diving, and all of them through the blazed with emerald and uh, tur turquoise waters reflecting the deep green of the pina trees and reach the sea. Needless to say that the blue flags that Halkidiki is being awarded every year are rightly decided. Green is the new blue. And if you add some green to the palette, you have the perfect intoxicated combination of blue and green. Halkidiki is placed with last green forests that reach right down to the beach. Still, the region stands for much more than beaches. Halkidiki is also home to many earthly paradises for those who love mountains. Sorry. Oops. In the galaxy. Sorry. Okay. 
The region offers uh, an unlimited source of, the, uh, source, source of the water source, like uh, windsurfing, water sank, scuba diving, uh, snorkeling, canoe, kayak, etc. Of course, a boat cruise around Mount Athos, uh, we'll see that on Saturday, uh, uh, renting a boat and feasting uh, unpopulated islets like the Aporos of Rdrenia or sailing along the coastline and among the most popular activities. Uh, or, you, or you may try some refreshing experience like visits and tastings at uh, wineries or visiting agricultural farms where you can take cooking lessons or try some cultural activities in the various museums, folklore, historical, uh, nautical, etc., of the villages. Or just relaxing in our wellness centers. At the same, Halkidiki has developed a series of alternative tourism proposals for those who love outdoor activities. Paths for mountain uh, biking and hiking, walks around the peninsulas or woodland tracks along coastal roadways and off-road adventures to remote areas. Halkidiki Roads is an ongoing project and every year the organization adds more roads. So far we have implemented three roads in each of Peninsula, Mavrobara Lake, a four kilometer circular road, Porto Kufo, a four kilometer circular road, and the Aristoteles Walk and 14 kilometers non-circular road uh, that connects Ascent, Ascent Stagera with the park of Aristotel. Also, there is a network of walking roads in the third peninsula, Athos, which has already been implemented by the municipality. By uh, 2021, we will introduce another four roads. Gastronomy. But what a Greek destination will be without its gastronomy? Its gastronomy. From the east and the sea comes a bounty of wonderful ingredients that have shaped the region's culinary traditions of Mediterranean cuisine. Whether it is a cozy tavern or a gourmet restaurant, don't miss the opportunity to taste the fresh fish daily delivered from the local fisherman to your table. Locally produced meat, fruits and vegetables that are cultivated in a natural way and of course this is flavored by herbs. Uh, Gathered from the <coughs> surrounding hills, Halkidiki is proud to be part of the Greek breakfast and invitation for the Hellenic Chamber of Hotels, with, uh, which uh, <coughs> utilizes and connects the cultural gastronomic uh, wealth of the country with the Greek hotel business. Our guests have the chance to taste. Local products. Apart from being a popular tourist destination, Halkidiki has also an important agricultural production and food processing industry. Thanks to its uh, morph morphology, or three peninsulas, the long coastline and the impressive mountains of Holomontas and Athon Halkidiki is a fertile area that produces various agricultural products of excellent quality, such as olive, uh, table olives, honey, wines, and spirits, chipuro, fruits and vegetables, dairy products, fish, and meat, gyms, and uh, marmalades. So try the local products here, or take a part of Halkidiki with you and share in the friends. Local products. The region is famous for its table olives, which are recasting a product with a protected uh, designation, uh, designation of origin, PDO, and have an important position in the international market. More than 100,000 tons of table olives are being produced annually with makes Halkidiki, the largest producer in Greece. Also, Halkidiki is known for its extra virgin olive oil and especially the early harvest olive oil called Aguréleo that comes from the pressing of uh, unripe green olives. The olive tree is indigenous in Halkidiki and it has always been contributing on the local economy. At the same time, Halkidiki has a long traditional in winemaking. Removed wines were produced in ancient Halkidiki since the uh, 5th century uh, uh, by sale. Here you will find one of the oldest varieties in the world, Limnio, a red dry wine, which is mentioned by the philosopher Aristotle. 
One of the best experiences in Halkidiki is to walk through the endless wine yards and taste the finest wine selection in a winery. Sun, sea, flora is imprinted in the area's wine yards. The grapes savor the sunlight, the sea breeze, and the spirit of freedom. The wines, too, standing out for their unpretentious character. Many of our local wines are being awarded in international competitions worldwide. The art of hospitality. Halkiriki offers a great selection of hotels, villas, holidays, apartments, and studio ranging from luxury resorts to affordable apartment rentals and also beautiful camping sites ready to please even the most demanding visitor. Most of our accommodation facilities are family run and that gives you the opportunity to experience the authentic Greek hospitality. A world of events. So Halkidiki today has around 500, uh, sorry, uh, I say so how many beds is for the, uh, the accommodation. Halkidiki today has around 500 hotels, our similar Establishments, uh, sorry, establishments with a capacity 100,000 beds, 2,500 holidays apartments, and 38 campsites with capacity of 10,000 places. Most of the hotels are seasonal operating for end of April until October, while about 20 hotels remain open during winter, 12 months, located in the mountainous Halkidiki. There's a world of events. There's always summertime outdoor celebration happening in Halkidiki, from parties and music festivals to sports events and religious and cultural celebrations like Olive and Sardine Festival, the Mushroom Feast, the Musel Feast, and the Cherry Fair, as well as the so-called Panigiria, uh, which are the celebration of local saints, usually accommodated by music, traditional dances, local food, and wine. Together with your children, you can get into the spirit of local culture by attending one of the local villages first organized in the uh, surrounding areas. Halkidiki also hosts international gourmet festivals with world uh, acclaimed chefs holding a Michelin star. Mount Athos. But before you leave, you have to do some important sizing. A unique part of Halkidiki is Mount Athos home to an Orthodox community or monasteries, the 1,000-year-old monastic state of the Holy Mountain is a unique place in the world dedicated to prayer and worship. This is the largest and most important monastic state in the Orthodox East, also named the Garden of the Virgin Mary. According to the traditional women, are not allowed it inside Mount Athos, however, they have the chance to admire the amazing architecture of the monasteries and the wide beauty of this place by taking a boat cruise around it. Thousands of people come from around the world every year to admire this amazing place. Follow different paths. Don't forget to get off the beaten path and discover the traditional villages in Halkidiki. Some of the must-see traditional villages included Parthenonas, Old Town of Nikiti, Athitos, and Arnea. Stone houses, complex stone solids, traditional Macedonian architecture, old churches, and folklore museums are just a few sites to mention. Their warm will talk you back to the village life as it is, has many years ago. Finally, I would like to show you some highlights to remember. One unique world heritage site, Mount Athos. 89 beaches awarded the blue flag, which makes Halkidiki the top destination in Greece in blue flags. 12 protected areas by Natural European Network as natural beauty and biodiversity areas. The most famous of all people in the world is Aristotle. And one more thing, remember that you are in the homeland of the great philosopher Aristotle, one of the most influential people in the world and the most famous person of all times, according to me. Halkidiki, in collaboration with his partners and stakeholders, is trying to be a sustainable, sustainable destination with respect to the environment that local communities and the history of the region. 
Inside your dreams for our website, visit halkidiki.gr. All in all, Halkidiki is a perfect combination of refining Mediterranean light, the unspoiled land, the lovely communities, and a glorious past to explore. Add the local gastronomy, add religious traditions, add hospitality of the people, add the wide range of accommodation options that varies between luxury resorts and traditional seafront apartments to beautiful camping sites. Add amazing outdoor activities, and there you are inside your dreams. It looks very exotic, I know. It will look even more when you are there. Vielen Dank. Herr Thank you, Sven. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gregoris. Thank you for all this wonderful presentation that really makes us looking forward to seeing all the things we have seen there. Klaus, entschuldige, aber die nächstes Mal muss wir machen eine Woche, Frau Nur für halt die Idee, was meinst du? And, and, and we will see if it's all stimmt, what's on the pictures. We, we, we will have a look with our own eyes if it's true what Gregoris shows on the, on the pictures, but I'm sure. Um, Besides your job at four associations, uh, you run a hotel also. Bin ich auch Hotelier, ja? Das Geld kommt zu mir von meinem Hotel. Ja. von der anderen Präsentation. So, how is the hotel business at Halkidiki at the moment? How many of the hotels are open? And how, how do you see the season so far, this very difficult season? Yeah. Uh, ich spreche in Deutsch, kein Problem. Zum Deutsch, Deutsch oder? Better English, better English. Better English, better. okay. Uh, so, uh, Halkiriki have 540 hotels, uh, starting uh, uh, first week of July in this season, in uh, season COVID-19, how do I, what I say. Uh, for this, uh, um, 540 hotels started to open 380 in this season, uh, uh, about uh, 35 to 40 percent throughout from July till now. The problem to us is uh, North Greece and Halkidiki, we have about uh, uh, 40 to 50 percent uh, from the accommodation come from the Balkanian market, mm -hmm. so come by car here, in North Greece and also in Halkidiki and Thessaloniki. That was for us uh, a big problem because uh, Serbia and uh, Skopje, not mm -hmm. North Macedonia, Skopje, okay? Mm -hmm. So that is Firum, okay, Firum, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, was closed the market. Yeah. Uh, open was only uh, Romania and uh, Bulgaria, mm. and only with uh, a negative test for yeah. 72 hours. Yeah. So the rest of the the rest of the nationality, German and England, the English market started 3 of August, only in some of uh, hotels of Tui Group, not of the rest of the destination. Uh, and the Germany started not so well for German, not so well from uh, uh, July, but August and September much better because we have many flights that we can say. Mm -hmm. uh, we close the season most of the hotel end of September mm -hmm. uh, for this season, and uh, 25 to 30 hotels uh, stay open till end of October. Mm -hmm. uh, was uh, is is one very difficult season not only for us also for all of Greece. Uh, minus 50 to 70 percent, we can say, for different destinations is a minus mm -hmm. uh, total, uh, is one season uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that we must thinking uh, will less this season, and we must thinking for 2021, mm -hmm. which is also season 2021. Mm -hmm. You know, we will die, we'd like forget mm -hmm. 2020, and we go 2021. Yeah. But it's yeah. a season of COVID, for sure, for them. Mm -hmm. You said at the FAW Congress that 
in Greece, as a total, only half of the hotels are open, half of the hotels are closed. Yes, about 10,000 hotels is uh, total in Chalkidiki. About, uh, sorry, in Greece, about uh, 5,500 hotels was mm -hmm. opened first uh, first week of July, mm -hmm. and now all of them is open. Is open, and uh, after from November, middle of November, we have only for the uh, not of the seasonal hotel, we have for the 12 months. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, most of the, of course, perhaps not everybody, not every hotel will survive this day, very difficult. Uh, situation but will most of the hotels uh, survive the situation how do you see the economic situation of your colleagues at the moment no. uh, in this season we have make a very good seminar mm -hmm. all of hoteliers the the, the big seminar is uh, the, the how we can uh, work all together that same is Mr. Fragakis and also Vula that is the first the second is the health first all of the protocols mm -hmm. for us is one a big experience for this summer Mm -hmm. And is uh, for us is the big gun I can say for next season, yeah. because the numbers and the statistic from uh, from the uh, from the uh, virus say that Greece is the first destination in the Mediterranean mm -hmm. for health and first for all of this protocol. Mm -hmm. Hotels work very well. You see also how is the Grand Hotel here, and thank you, Yanis, for the hospitality again. Yes. Again, Yanis, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, because it's hotelier. You know, mm -hmm. if you ha I have elections in October, that I say Yanis. <laughs> that, that, that is the problem. <laughs> uh, th that, that is true. Uh, Greek hoteliers work very well with uh, uh, a protocol, and uh, that's we say about 72, diff uh, 72 hotels, COVID hotels, what I say, for the mm -hmm. quarantine would like, yeah. in all of Greece, in all of the destinations, uh, have uh, about uh, uh, 500 people only. In these 72, uh, yeah. 72 yeah. hotels, COVID hotel, what yeah. I say for the current, it was only 500 people. And it was not only for the hotels, but also for Airbnb or for the apartments, yeah. for all of the things. That is it, not so many. It's, it's that not so many. necessarily but means that people are sick, they are, they, are, they are tested positive, but especially younger people, they don't show yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, symptoms. Yeah, that's true, that's true, yes. Yeah. So you managed this situation. Of course, Greece has had, since the deep financial crisis, had, has had some very good years, and also the numbers of tourists from Germany have risen all yeah. the years now. Greece is very popular. So does this help a little bit in these difficult times? Uh, sure, and uh, German market is the first market. In Greece, mm -hmm. about 3,500,000. Uh, people was the arrivals for 2019. Yeah. Uh, now we don't have all the numbers because uh, we have September and October also total. Uh, but for us is and stay mm -hmm. the first and important uh, uh, nationality uh, for our works. And I hope stay also for the next year. But we would like a little more your help. Of course, yes. A little more, yeah. yes. <laughs> Not only for destination, and a little more can come from uh, our promo. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. North Greece is other side of Greece, a good mm. side of Greece also, with a big international airport, mm. but we don't so many uh, Germany clients. Mm. Maybe we thinking, is a Gian here, and sorry what I say now for a Gian, for our partner, mm. maybe we thinking for our future, mm. also the, uh, the, the clients, the people from Germany, uh, to come by car. Yeah. We thinking about them, mm. it's only 12 to 16 hours from uh, Bayern, mm. for example. Yeah. Uh, only with one overnight, maybe to Serbia, you'll be in North Greece. And after with Autobahn, you'll be everywhere in Greece. Maybe we're thinking for the future. Mm. Okay, guys. Thank Christoph, you very much. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to exploring your region. Yeah, totally. Ich bleibe bei euch in the next zwei, drei Tage. Danke Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, the next speaker, uh, the German group has already met uh, at the first evening at the Allegro. It's Maria Karagiani. She's the deputy mayor of uh, culture and tourism for Thessaloniki. Maria, thank you for joining us again. Thank you for your warm welcome here in Thessaloniki. And we're looking forward to seeing you here. Geht der Livestream? Aber der Livestream läuft. Das ist gut. Das ist gut, das ist die Hauptsache. Wir brauchen ja nicht viele Fragen. Ja, super. Ui, ne? Alles ist der Lackerstand. Okay. I think I had a nice try. Please don't judge me harshly. Since that you have been here for two days at our beautiful city, I hope that you have already discovered the many different stories it has to tell you. 
I will try to make a quick overview because I would like to highlight the awesome reasons why Thessaloniki should be on your bucket list. Dot with historic sites, but still stylish modern, is a destination worth visiting. The New York Times named it one of the top destinations. Sprawling around the coastline of Thermaikos Gulf, Thessaloniki is full of landmarks. You know the Mediterranean climate, limited rainfalls throughout the years, plenty of sunshine and mild temperatures. Everything in the city is in walking distance and you can easily explore it by foot or bicycle. The city is very compact and the airport is only 14 kilometers away from the city center. A wide range of venues and congress centers to organize a conference or an event. They all offer latest technology and the most important dedicated personnel ready to run the extra, mi the extra mile <laughs> for the success of your event. TIF Hell Expo, the biggest congress and exhibition center in the southeastern Europe, unique location with great variety of venues. More than 50,000 beds everywhere in the city, ranking from five-star luxury and boutique hotels to modern hostels and budget hotels. Very vibrant city with more than 130,000 students and young and inspiring movement of professionals and young innovative minds. Plenty of events throughout the year. I should highlight the International Film Festival of Thessaloniki, which gathers year remarkable representatives of the seventh art. Thessaloniki is the city of festivals. The biggest one is Dimitria. It is re-established more than 50 years ago, and practi practically we are talking for two months of celebration with music and art performances. Buzzing with history from Romans, Ottomans, and Jews to modern Greeks, a unique mix of people resulting in a charming character which reflects in every aspect of the city. <laughs> the Saloniki cuisine is known for its quality and variety. Because of its paths, the city gastronomy boasts flavors from, Pon from Pondus, Asia Minor, and Constantinople, as well as Jewish and Ar Armenian flavors. And I have, of course, to mention the Thessaloniki Food Festival, this amazing event which attracts visitors from all around Europe. The nightlife of Thessaloniki is one of the city's strengths. Ladadica, the beautiful district, is an amazing place to scroll around and a drinking hotspot. The area named after the numerous olive oil shops that used to populate the area. It was the bazaar and the settled market of the city under Ottoman rule. Now it is full of charming tavernas, restaurants, bars, and clubs. Yesterday you were in <laughs> there. The surroundings of Thessaloniki could inspire even the most demanding visitor. As we have said before, proximity is indeed the key. While in Thessaloniki, you have the chance to visit amazing places and collect memorable experience. Vergina, the city of Alexander the Great, a famous burial site for the past Macedonian kings and birthplace of Alexander the Great. The Mount Olympus, 
the home of the Greek gods, according to mythology, is a unique place for alternative activities like trekking and hiking. From Thessaloniki's waterfront, you can admire the highest peak of Olympus Mountain. Thank you very much. Enjoy your stay. Thank you, Maria. We are enjoying already, and also the trip to Vergina was very impressive. Uh, I think nobody of the group has been there. Only one lady has been there, and we were deeply impressed, but also the nightlife we experienced yesterday. Just one quick question. Uh, of course, um, Thessaloniki is a city of leisure tourism, but it's also a city of business tourism, of uh, conferences, meeting, exposition. Now, at the moment, of course, leisure tourism, we see it's a little bit picking up, but big conferences, big exhibition doesn't take place. So how, what do you yes. expect for this sector, for Thessaloniki, for next year? I think for, uh, because of pandemia, uh, the 2021 will be a hard uh, uh, season for us. So we plan everything digital. Mm -hmm. Digital uh, promotion, uh, digital festivals mm -hmm. like Dimitria. We organize a platform uh, for Dimitria to show, uh, to reorganize the festival, and this uh, platform will be used from the municipality for all cultural events. Mm. So you also did it, but next year, uh, hopefully there will be also exhibitions or conferences, bigger style in, in Thessaloniki again. We have to, to seek, uh, we, have, we are worried about the pandemia. Yeah. So we have to see how, if the vaccine will, uh, if we have a vaccine or we have a medicine. Yeah. So uh, at the moment we organized small events like this one, 50 mm -hmm. people, because when we started talk about this on May, we hope that we have more than 100 people. Mm -hmm. So we have to limit it to, to, uh, to uh, 50, I think. 50, yeah. So we, we make small and secure plans. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Next time we're here, hopefully we have thousands of people here. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> thank you very much, Maria. Thank, thank you very you, much for hosting you. us thank here, Tetraniki. <laughs> All things digital, we do this conference, as I said, as a hybrid conference. And we have some speakers also joining us via a Zoom conference, as the number of people here in the room is limited, as we noticed. So our next speaker is coming from Germany. And hopefully the connection will run. Yes, I see it's running. Our next speaker is Philip Weiser. He's from Market Research Company. Trevotan, hello, Philip. Hello to Cologne. Mm, hello, how are you doing? We see you. Excellent. So I'm <laughs> A warm welcome from Thessaloniki. I feel the weather in Thessaloniki might be a little bit better than in Germany, <laughs> but <laughs> thank you for joining us. And I promise uh, Philip, who has joined also real conferences, uh, to spend him an Uzo next time when he comes here. But thank you, uh, Philip, for, for joining us. You will give us a little bit insight about the booking behavior and the booking trend and the interest of uh, people in Germany. Please go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, thank you for, for letting me be there, uh, at least as a big uh, giant floating head. So uh, I still uh, very fondly remember my first FOV workshop in Rodos, so I was very uh, sad not to be able to attend uh, this one, but uh, I'm pretty sure there will be others in the future and I will have another, another opportunity to do so, I'm hoping at least. So um, today I'd like to, uh, to talk uh, to you about um, travel trends that we're seeing. So first I have to share my screen, I think, that you can see something. Here we go. So you can uh, see my presentation now, correct? I think so, okay. All right, so um, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, why are we in a position to talk to you about uh, travel trends that we are seeing and uh, demand trends and um, um, trying to give you an idea of what is currently going on with the German tourist uh, uh, market as such. Um, that is because um, we are a company uh, that is working very close with uh, Amadeus, um, your leisure travel. Uh, you might also know them as Travel Tamant, uh, Germany, as they used to be called. Uh, they are a huge company. Um, um, in Germany, they have uh, Bistro Portal software, which some of you might be familiar with used by thousands of travel agents. They have uh, hundreds of uh, big tour operator websites. 
like uh, Tech24, Holiday Check, and so on that work with their technology, and uh, dozens and hundreds of, uh, of um, tour operators that um, feed their trips into their database. So a huge um, database of trips that used to give us around 80 mil 8 million uh, booking requests, data points every day, um, is a little less now, um, hopefully it's coming back soon. And we do basically market research and data analytics on that data. So we see, you know, what is uh, currently going on, what, are, what kind of trips are people looking for, what kind of hotels are they interested in, what kind of travel times are they, are they interested in, how does it change over days and weeks and, and years. So this is very interesting for our clients, which you can see here, which are used uh, most of the um, German tour operators and also some, uh, some hotel chains like uh, One and Only Hotels or Iberostar, Verano Hotels from Greece, who use our data to find out, you know, what is going on with the German tourists, are they, which kind of destinations are they interested in, uh, should we, you know, adjust our portfolio, should we offer different hotels, should we offer different more flights or less flights, and so on, and just to see you know, if they're meeting the demand of the of what people are currently looking for. So, um, what does this look like? How does this, um, yeah, um, look in the in the customer journey? So, the customer journey always starts with a usually with a search. You know, a vague search like holidays Greece, for example. That's unstructured. It's uh, very hard to compare. It's weeks or months in, in before they uh, do an actual booking, which happens at the very end of the customer journey. Well. It, the booking process at least, where they actually put their money down, they say, this is the hotel I want to go to, this is the flight I want to book. And then this customer is gone, you know, you don't have, uh, they only book one holiday, usually on some holiday or so. And we are sort of in a sweet spot with the booking requests uh, in the, over here, uh, where we have um, the, uh, it's a booking request is basically, if you're going to the market and you're walking up to the market, uh, the market and you're asking how much are the tomatoes, you know, so you're really interested in this, this specific tomato, you want to know the price, and that's what a booking request is. Uh, you enter all your data, you say how many people are going, where you want to go, how long you want to go, uh, and then you're checking the price, doing a booking maybe immediately afterwards, but you're very, very specific already, and it's easy data to compare, it's very clean data. And it's days or weeks before the actual booking happens. So you will still have some time to react to that demand that you're seeing from our data uh, before the actual booking happens and that customer is gone for the year. So how does this compare to how tour operators usually did their planning or did their market research? Well, they usually did a year on year comparison. So they say, okay, we are here now. This is the year last year. So we're guessing next year will probably be like the last year with some adjustments uh, because usually there is something happening in the market and this something happening in the market, uh, we keep adding this, this list, uh, more and more stuff to this list. It started with Brexit and Brexit. We have doing this, been doing this for five years now. And unfortunately there's still more stuff that we have to add on to this list. There have been terror attacks, there have been storms, volcanoes, bankruptcies, of course, Thomas Cook last year, Abilene some years ago, and now brand new on that list is pandemics. So um, that's uh, something that I never thought I had to add to that list, but here we are. So of course, this has huge impacts on you know, the travel demand, which I don't have to tell you, but in our data, you can see that, and it makes you know, basically the, the, the usual way of planning completely obsolete. So that's why we say, you know, focus on what is going on right now, look at what booking requests are currently happening, what people are actually interested in right now, and then you will see the future if you like. So let's give you an example of what this looked for a absolutely not normal year that we are currently in. So what we're seeing here is a, a blue line for the, booking, uh, the, for the booking requests as they happened this year from January until now. And you can see, you know, at the beginning, uh, week one, two, five, it was even above sometimes the, the, uh, the line that we see behind it, that's the, the 2019 figures. So it was even a better year in some cases, in some weeks. But then in March, the blue line just drops off into the, the abyss and just stays near zero for weeks and weeks and weeks. So, you know, uh, it slowly recovers towards the summer, but uh, it has been a horrible year. And this graph is just one other way of, of presenting how horrible the, the year is. Uh, and it has not just been a horrible year, it has already been a very volatile year. So um, I've picked this chart. This is the booking requests per day. Uh, 
for trips going to Mallorca. And we can see, you know, throughout the, the, the summer, there have been considerable number of requests. And then a travel warning was issued on uh, August 14th, I think. And you can see like flatlining, it just, you know, goes back down to zero afterwards. So, you know, huge demand before, very little demand afterwards. Um, this is the, another example from the other way around. This is the um, travel warning for Turkey that was lifted. So um, you can see a huge spike on the day that was lifted, but you don't really see a, a huge uh, uptake afterwards. So it hasn't really, you know, doubled or tripled the demand for Turkey afterwards, but it has been a huge spike uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So you see a lot of movement in the demand from week to week, from day to day uh, as we go along. And on a um, slightly smaller scale, I did that also for trips going to Lesbos, uh, where we had this, uh, this horrible fire in Moria. And you can see, you know, there's not really a lot of trips, a lot of trips before that, but otherwise, but afterwards you can see that uh, it's flatlining. So it's not really the, really the huge uh, events that have an impact, but also the very small ones. And if, I, if you allow me just one personal remark, um, you know, uh, we are all in the, in the strangers making them feel comfortable business. Um, I would prefer if we treated all strangers uh, humanely, not uh, and don't discern whether they arrive by plane or by boat. Um, please keep that in mind uh, when you see the news and when you think about contacting politicians, maybe uh, asking them how to treat people. That's what I'm going to say. Thank you. So um, going back to the numbers, this is um, the demand for trips to Greece. So again, 2020 compared to 2019. At the beginning, the same picture, the blue line just drops off into the, the nothing. But as you can see towards the right of the chart, it recovers and it re doesn't just recover a little bit. If you look at the very right, it has recovered quite considerably. So we are almost back to 2019 levels when it comes to demand for trips to Greece, which I think is a very, very uh, positive uh, thing to say. So uh, I didn't really expect that at all. You know, it's uh, with all that uh, what's been going on. I was very surprised to see this actually that we are now with the last week and the week before almost back to where we were uh, last year. So I'm hoping you'll see this also in the bookings and uh, um, time going forward that uh, uh, demand and uh, guests arriving will recover to um, yeah, basically pre-corona levels, if you like. All right, so um, my talk is called uh, Greece in comparison. So let me compare a little bit the um, the destinations because you see only Greece has been able to recover so immensely. So if you look at the, the left uh, pie chart, you can see the, the split by the top destinations and Greece is by far number one with down there in the in the table, it's 17, 000, 17 million booking requests in the last four weeks. If you look on the right, last year it was 20 million. So as I said, basically back to, to 2019 levels. But if you look at the other pie charts on the right, you can see how much more requests were made for the other destinations that aren't being made right now. So you can imagine that the, yeah, the, the impact that they feel by the you know, inc uh, enormous amount of, of uh, travelers not looking for trips into these destinations. Good for you, bad for them. All right, so um, how does uh, Chakitiki and Thessaloniki compare within Greece? So again, this is uh, looking at the last four weeks and this is the, the pie how it splits up uh, geographically. Please keep in mind that these are just package trips that we're looking at. So this is a lot of hotel only trips for people who might, you know, traveling inside the country. It's just people flying into, um, uh, yeah, in a package trip. So Crete, Crete uh, um, number one by far, Rodos, Coast, the top three, but then ranked five, at least it's uh, Kalkidiki, uh, Thessaloniki itself is, is way further down, probably because of a very small destination, but, you know, rank five for Kalkidiki, I think that's pretty good. Hadn't expected that. All right, so let's look a little more in detail in, into how the, um, the trip mix or the, the, the products that are requested um, change from destination to destination. So what I did here is always on the top, we have uh, Hakidiki, the, the mix, we have Crete. And then out here, I, I picked Antalya and Mallorca just to have some you know, other big destinations that are probably comparable to Crete to have an, uh, as a comparison. And um, we're looking at several dimensions here. Um, I'm starting with the travel party size. So who is basically looking for trips right now to Greece? Uh, in Greece, it's uh, mostly couples are going. You can see couples around 70%. 
Um, with Antalya and Mallorca, Mallorca, you have a more higher rank, a higher uh, percentage of, of families uh, that are going there. Um, so over here, we are looking at the duration of trips that are uh, currently being requested. And we can see that the, the, the shorter trip times are quite uh, or, yeah, uh, bigger than, than they were last year. So we have basically just you know the seven day trips and the shorter day trips uh, that are currently uh, being requested and hardly anything else. But and the mix is always the same for all four destinations. Then we're looking at hotel categories. So we are ranking the hotel by stars, what are um, requested. And this is the, the standard as it is inside the, the Amadeo data. So this is comparable between countries, even though it might vary inside of a country. So um, again, with Hakidi and Crete, it's almost the same mix. Uh, no surprises there. And then Antalya and Mallorca, we have a lot of more uh, five-star hotels in Antalya, um, uh, a lot more uh, four-star hotels also in, in Mallorca is there. All right, then just uh, going through a few more of those. Um, here we are looking at the differences in, in meal codes. Um, in Halkidiki, we all have almost have uh, exclusive, 50% uh, of trips are half board um, meal codes. Whereas in Crete, it's 50% uh, all inclusive, um, as it is also in Antalya. And Mallorca, again, is more comparable to Kalkidiki, with uh, half board being you know, a larger chunk of the, of, the, um, of the mix. Also, if you, I'm going to say, that, say this at the end, if you'd like to have this presentation, um, you can go to our website, register, and I'll, I'll send it to you so you can look at it in more detail if the, the, the writing is too small. So here we have the, the room types. So again, no, not really a huge um, differences here. It's double rooms, mostly family rooms. So no, no real uh, difference here. And then I'd like to look a little bit ahead because we probably all know that 2020 is, is done in, in the books and let's please forget about it soon and look forward uh, to what, uh, 2021. Do we already see people looking for trips leaving in 2021? So, um, this is what the current demand in the last four weeks look like. So it looks like um, outward, looking outward in the months ahead. So we can see that the, the bigger spikes are in the months of September and October, the huge spikes, in fact. So it's a really, really last minute uh, end of season run at the moment. Then of course there's the winter break and we see unfortunately very little demand uh, already um, for the next year. Also, if you com would compare this, um, this slide towards the Year before, um, it's uh, the 20, 2021 figures are quite below the year-to-year -year comparison, um, and not you know, so. The overall, it's very small, and compared to the year before, it's also very small. Let's look at two other destinations. Oh, sorry, and this is uh, Greece overall, by the way. So it's all destinations in Greece. Um, here are all destinations destinations in Spain, so including the the winter ones like the Canary Islands which still have a travel warning, if I uh, remember correctly. So we can see October, the most in-demand travel time, then some in winter and a little bit for the, the next summer already. Um, and lastly, uh, Turkey, uh, also a lot of uh, interest for this season. So we, this is something that we've seen all along um, quite throughout um, uh, the corona uh, pandemic that has just been moving towards short um, short term, uh, no, not short term, but uh, last minute bookings. You know, very few people dare to look out and, you know, rent ahead. Uh, if you're doing something, it's very much short term um, in the moment. So again, a lot of short term for October, still very little towards uh, next summer. Okay, and if you like to um, get a weekly updates from us, how the German travel market is uh, currently behaving. Uh, you're very much uh, invited to go to uh, trevotrend.com slash glasskugel or crystal ball. Just sign up for the newsletter there, the free newsletter, and we will send you an update every, every um, week uh, how the German market is going and how the biggest destinations are developing day to, week to week and see the impact of travel warnings and travel warning lifts and so on. Okay. Yes. So. Thank you, Philip. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Your applause. Um, very interesting figures. 
some good news for Greece that the demand is nearly picking up the uh, as last year at the moment I think there are only a very very few destinations who have the, this this interest but of course as you show it might be a, a lot of customers who have, have perhaps interested be in, in a holiday to Spain which is the market leader in Germany who has three times the visitors uh, than Greece uh, and we saw the big drop uh, from from Spain after the travel warning so um, of course, you said that is interest shown, that are not real bookings, that is a little bit step before. Can, yes. Have you, um, from your experience, have you, can you say how big is the percentage of uh, interest shown uh, converting into bookings? Mm. So it's, it's always it always varies, of course, by destination. And of course, um, Corona has moved this around, along, uh, has changed it also. But what we can see from the, the many years that we've seen that, and we did the comparison, there's always a, a steady ratio. So the ratio is is basically yeah. fixed. Um, it, it might vary, but it, it is uh, fixed in itself. So the, the booking requests that we're seeing are almost as good as bookings in terms of judging the interest. But it is, has a, a, a an early warning uh, indicator to it that bookings don't have. You know, bookings are safe. You know yeah. what's going on. But they're gone with the booking requests. You yeah. have the same indications as bookings, more or less, but uh, you see them earlier than the bookings. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, are there questions for Philip for, from here, from the guests of Greece, from Germans? You can even also give the question in, in German. Uh, what's interesting was there's a high interest in doing holiday in, in Greece in October at the end of the season. November only slightly. We will discuss with the tour operators further because first tour operators, for example, FEI, we have Halina with us, uh, already said they will prolong the season. They will go to uh, Crete uh, uh, until November. I think this has, the message has to be come through because in many, in the heads of many people, perhaps is still the picture. Uh, Greece is closing at the end of October a little bit. Um, we we haven't seen already big demand or big interest in. Greece for next summer. Of course, people are at the moment uncertain. They no, don't know what it is. But I think the, the message is, of course, yeah, Greece has to avoid in any cases a travel warning because we have, have seen what happened to, to the interest in Spain. And, and when you said there's a, always the same ratio, uh, interest converting into bookings. So that would be the same. Interesting, I found also that Halkidiki, uh, Gigor said, has a higher portion of half board, uh, for example, compared to Crete. Crete is also a big island where you can do a lot. But as you said, <laughs> your region is, uh, I like it very much, uh, island hobby by car. Uh, so it's a destination where people obviously, uh, they enjoy the beaches, but obviously in the hotels, they want to travel around, they want to see the nature and Mount Athos and other uh, things. So very interesting. So um, as you said, German, at the moment, German customers, as I think, as tourist customers all over the world, are very last minute orientated. They, we are living in a world of uncertainty. So, when do you expect um, um, book a, the, the interest for Greece will be for next summer will will come? Usually, December, January, Germans look at the holidays for for uh, the summer season. Do you expect this will be later, or when do you expect that the interest for Greece will go up? Will it be October? Uh, December, January, February, what do you expect? That's, uh, well, there I could only use the, the previous year comparison, which again, this year might not really work <laughs> as well as it used to. So what we saw last year is that the, the early one, the early bookings started earlier than usual. So usually yeah. it was in January where the big booking spike was. Uh, last year we saw that moving forward into November and uh, mm. you know early November, even at the end of October. But who knows this year, you know, it uh, probably depends also on the news regarding vaccines, maybe, or, yeah. uh, or other stuff that might happen, uh, really difficult to tell. So I, I just can recommend, you know, signing up for our newsletter and looking for yourself. So if uh, something happens, uh, we will tell you uh, for free. But um, uh, it, yeah. Mm. Really everybody, hard to tell this. Yeah, everybody has to do his homework and prepare for a better season. So yeah. Philip, yeah. thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for thank listening so far. We will do a little break. Very interesting. <laughs> Philip, and next time we see you here and you can enjoy with us the nightlife of Thessaloniki, you missed a lot. <laughs> I would really prefer that. So uh, going to Greece via Zoom, it's not really the same. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Take All care. Right, bye -bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have a little break and afterwards we will continue with the flight market. Thank you. Now, 
Okay, I continue. I always feel a little bit like a teacher in school bringing all the pupils into the classroom. <laughs> but we are here to learn. Of course, we are here to have some fun, but here to learn. And with me now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Chief Commercial Officer of Aegean, our trusted partner here in, in our event for many years, uh, Mr. Roland Yagi. He's from Switzerland. We, 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 could, we could be able to speak German, but of course, as we do it for also for the uh, viewers from Greece, we will do it in English. Um, Mr. Yagi will present a little bit about Aegean, what Aegean is now doing and facing the challenges, and afterwards we will have a little Q&A. Welcome, Roland Yagi. So the Congress motto is restarting tourism and very much in line of the motto I decided to start with a historic slide. Um, I know today it's about looking forward, but I thought I start with some history. I don't go far back. I go back to 2019. And while this is basically just yesterday, sometimes I feel like it's damn long ago that we had 2019. So in 2019, just for you to understand where we're coming from, Aegean operated a fleet of 65 aircraft, 53 jets, 320s and 321s from Airbus. We carried 15 million passengers. To compare, that's a little bit more than what Finnair carried uh, last year. It's a little bit more than what uh, Austrian Airlines carried last year. So just for you to understand uh, how big or small we are, we had a load factor of 84.8% load factor. I still dream about that. And we had a turnover of 1.3 billion euro. And we made a profit, a net profit of 78.5 78 million euros. So that's history. Then the pandemic came. And I thought I start with showing you some pictures of what happened between Germany and Greece. If we look at the traffic numbers between April and August 2020, the entire market shrank by 80%. So there were 80% less uh, passengers traveling from Germany to Greece in 2020 than we had in 2019. Looking at different places, Athens, the market is down 68%, Aegean is down 60, no, 86, the market, and Aegean 68. Thessaloniki, the market down 72%, Aegean 64. Heraklion, which is the biggest of these markets in the summer period, 89% down, both the market and the Aegean. Rhodos, 72, 87. And if you're not yet depressed, uh, cost down 77%. Maybe a quick word about arrivals in general. Obviously, Germany is not the only market that is down. Uh, all the markets are down. And which markets are more or less down heavily dependent, dependent on two things. What were the travel restrictions from the origin market? And what are the travel restrictions Greece has imposed? Um, the biggest market in summer 20 was Germany, followed by uh, now I will tell you later who was next. I, I just want to make the case Germany was the biggest market and Germany has no travel restriction from the German government side nor from the Greek government side. Other markets like Russia are completely out. The Russians were not allowed to enter Greece uh, until this week. And now we, uh, Greece is taking 500 Russian tourists every week and that by itself is a little bit of a logistical problem. Um, airlines are not allowed to coordinate flights among each other, so how do you get 500 passengers from one country into Greece? Similar situation we had with Israel. Um, it was first 500 or 600, then it rose to 1,200, now it's 5,000, and Ryanair is sending letters to the government that uh, the passengers are unevenly spread, where at the same time we are trying to find out how to somehow balance 
who can come and who can not come. Spain, obviously, um, is a different story. The Italians did travel very little, and at one point in time, they introduced a test upon arrival from Greece, and then the demand broke away, and everything turns out to be very difficult. And it is one of the main problems we can see, and in the first uh, uh, presentation this morning from the GNTO, the colleague talked about it as well, as well. We need protocols. We need standards. Every tourist should know, should have a planning uh, security to the level possible. So we need all the governments, at least in Europe and, and the Schengen countries, to agree when do you go to a travel warning list, when do you need a test, um, what are the criteria for tests, and so on, and so on, so on. We don't have that, and that makes it very difficult for everybody, for airlines to plan, for hotels to plan, and for uh, the, the tourists to plan or, or not to plan. Our current program from Germany to Greece is from eight German origin airports to four Greek destinations. We operate right now a little bit more than 80 weekly flights between the two countries. In July and August, Germany had most of the arrivals, um, followed by the UK. Once the UK uh, started to put Spain on the quarantine list, we got a booking uh, spike from the UK. Uh, now six Greek islands are on the quarantine list for the UK. The booking spike is gone. Uh, so it's Germany, UK, France, and then we had a surprising newcomer. Number four is Poland. Um, there was lots of air capacity uh, from Poland this summer, followed by the Netherlands, Italy, Switzerland, Austria. Overall, at the Chien, we operated in July 44% of our capacity compared to 2019. In August, we increased to 53. The current planning for October to December is to operate a little bit more than 50%. And when I say at this moment, um, I expect it to come down. Almost weekly, we review the network, we review the frequencies, we take into consideration new, new rules, and obviously the demand that exists or does not exist. Our flights to Greece, to uh, Athens and Thessaloniki are year-round. Through Athens, we, com, uh, we connect to 30 Greek domestic points. So our network to Athens is really not just to bring your customers to Athens, but from there to any other island within the country. Now, we are in Thessaloniki. And let's have a closer look here. We already heard before, Germany is very well connected to Thessaloniki. We fly at the moment 33 weekly frequencies. We, have, uh, we are the market leader in Thessaloniki to Germany. We have more than 30% of the capacity. We, are, we were down in July, August capacity-wise by 27%, whereas our competitors were down by 45%. So we have kept significantly, significantly more capacity in the market than uh, our competitors here to Thessaloniki. Now, looking back, we are the only airline that for the last 21 years, and that's as old as we are at the Chien, has, uh, without any break, operated between Germany and Thessaloniki. Financial crisis, 9-11, uh, Greek crisis, no matter what, we just flew all the time between this city and, and Germany. I started my presentation with a historic slide, and sometimes it's important to look back into history to understand what is ahead of you. And basically with this slide, my message is, no matter what, the pandemic will be over one day, and the GN will fly from Saloniki to Germany as we did for the last 21 years. 
Now, back to where we are, back to the pandemic, just one quick slide, what we do. You traveled with us from Germany here, so you, you know we do what basically all airlines do, uh, masks for the passengers, masks and gloves for the crew. We have increased the cleaning of the aircraft. We have the HEPA, uh, HEPA filters. Our crew members, cabin and cockpit, they are tested every two weeks. Uh, uh, as uh, a chain at the co uh, as a company, we are testing all employees uh, once a month. We have implemented the, the glass separator, the plexiglass, the sanitizing dispenser, and so on. Um, it's not that many people repeatedly travel, but I think we uh, have, as an industry, more or less found what is the new standard for traveling in an aircraft uh, these days. And just before I hand over to Klaus, um, one question is how safe is it to travel in an aircraft? I started to answer with a question. Have you ever heard of an incident that the virus was spread in an aircraft uh, from one person to many others? Was there ever a, a super spreader event in an aircraft? I have not heard about an aircraft super spreader event. I have not heard about an airport super spreader event. And I think that is one way to, to look at it. And then, of course, the air is refreshed 97% um, every three minutes, plus all the measurements. That makes, at least me, pretty comfortable to travel. But of course, everybody has its own standard of where he or she feels comfortable, and that is not the same uh, for, for, for all the people who travel. So, Klaus. Thank you. These were my slides. Back to you. Thank you, Roland. Thank you for the presentation. Um, very impressive figures for last year. You, you said it feels like a long time gone. Uh, Aegean is expanding, it's being, uh, Aegean made net profit, not every airline in the world does this. You had a fantastic load factor, 85%, so very good figures. You said now you um, expect to run about 50% of your capacity, so uh, of course everybody in the tourism sector was hurt, the airlines probably most uh, uh, very much affected. And we heard about all the aid programs, for example, Lufthansa get 9 billion euro of state aid, the Lufthansa group. How is Aegean um, making their way through the crisis? Do you get also aid? And how is your way uh, to, to, to deal with this crisis? Right, so state, state aid, what you just mentioned about Lufthansa, the, the 9 billion, Air France, KLM, similar number, uh, and other, num uh, other airlines, that's aid directly to the airlines. Mm. We don't get that in Greece. Mm. For one simple reason, our government has no money. Mm -hmm. um, there is another aid airlines are getting, but it's not an airline-specific aid. The, the Kurzarbeitergeld in, yeah. in, in Germany, that's not a, an airline-specific thing, that's not an industry-specific thing, that these are programs from governments to support the, the economy and this we have in Greece and in that respect we get benefits from there. We, we have Kurzarbeit uh, now in Greece as well and, and most of, of the colleagues at the GN are in Kurzarbeit here in Greece. That's a Synergasia for the, for the Greeks uh, in the room. So we are on Synergasia, on Kurzarbeit, but that's not comparable with the 9 million you mentioned from yeah, Lufthansa, yeah. and Lufthansa gets that also on top of yeah. the 9 million. So this we get, other state aid we don't get. Mm. But as Aegean has been profitable all the years, uh, so uh, you have enough funds to uh, survive. Of course, now the winter season is coming, you have enough funds to survive and, uh, and order, as you said, all the safety and health protocols that takes money to, yep. to improve the business and so on. Yeah. Uh, right, well, we, at, at the beginning of the crisis, we had five million, 500 million cash. Mm -hmm. We had about 38% of our 2019 turnover as cash. There were two airlines in Europe that had a higher uh, cash to previous year uh, uh, turnover share uh, uh, than us. 
and all the others had less. So we started at a relatively good point, but mm. also at the Chien, the money is melting away very fast because we have 63 aircraft. Mm. We used to fly 15 million passengers last year. We have scheduled for 16 million this year, and we will end up with approximately 5.6 million this year. So we, we have had this capacity for 10 million more passengers, mm. and the aircraft are standing around, mm. and we're paying the bills. Mm. Um, of course, it's very difficult to look into the next year. Um, we saw also from the figure from the market research how important it is for a country to avoid a travel warning. So how, in this area of uncertainty, how can you do the fleet planning, uh, uh, you're planning for the routes for next summer, for next year? i give you the easy answer, we are Greeks. <laughs> um, Swiss Greeks. <laughs> we, we have lived in 10 years of recession and we, we have obviously on a lower scale had a lot of uncertainty. Uh, we are 20 years old, out of 20, or 21 now, out of 21 years, we had 10 years of Greek crisis. So mm. to some degree, we have exercised this in the past, not to that magnitude, of course. Mm. And, and it's just, you know, in, in May, June, if we would have met in June, I would have told you probably September, October will be the best months of the year. Mm. But uh, late July, it was already clear that uh, September, October will not be the best months of the year. For next year, we think we will be somewhere at 60 to 70 percent of 2019 capacity. Mm -hmm. um, but that mm -hmm. can change. Uh, well, yeah. Actually, that will change. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, Aegean has uh, um, the, the corporate travelers, the business travelers, the friend and relatives uh, travelers, it has the uh, uh, holiday maker travelers. So, Everybody in the industry expects that the leisure market is picking up yep. um, 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 earlier than the business travel market, especially as we heard also here from Thessaloniki, which is a city, for example, of big fairs and big expos. So what does this mean for the route planning for, for Aegean? It means that one of our general problems, the seasonality of mm. our business, will be even a bigger problem. Yeah. We, it, there is the one advantage, the main reason why we are number one between Germany and Greece for 20 years mm. is not necessarily the touristic business, it's, it's the Gastarbeiter or the former Gastarbeiter yeah. business. Now we have obviously second and third generation of, of uh, Greeks living in Germany. In the last 10 years, we had the so-called brain drain where lots of Greek uh, young people left Greece because of the crisis yeah. and we have now a relatively strong uh, VFR business again so the, the Greek communities abroad have grown mm -hmm. for example in, in, in Zurich uh, a lot mm -hmm. the last five six years so we have a little bit of of more Greeks that return for uh, Christmas Easter and summer the problem with Christmas Easter and summer is it's anyway the good season, mm. um, but that is helping a little bit. On, other than that, Greece is not a very big corporate market. There are not there's relatively little corporate incoming traffic, which is typically also not to our advantage. And now it's maybe to our advantage because if you don't have a lot, you cannot lose a lot. Mm. Um, when we look at the environment, uh, of course, the, also the German um, leisure carriers like Condor or Truefly are flying here. We have also the low-cost carriers. They also trimmed their network. When, for example, in Germany, EasyJet and, and uh, Ryanair, they scaled down yep. their network. They're flying also, of course, to Greece. And um, Ryanair now uh, is, is doing whatever they did. Uh, and they um, um, coming with very aggressive prices, five euro and so on. Is, in your view, is this the right answer of the, uh, of the crisis? <laughs> Maybe it's the right answer for Ryanair. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, look, there are, the, the success of Greece from handling the pandemic so mm. well 
has been the foundation of the success of the Greek tourism in 2020. And what is our luck is also our um, biggest problem, because everybody in Europe knows Greece is doing well, so where do I send my aircraft? Because everybody has spare aircraft, so a lot of capacity was put into Greece. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we, we, we get from Athens airport a number of passengers um, from, from every airline, and uh, it's not that one airline has more passengers than the others. Yeah. The other, we're all about the same, mm -hmm. and uh, the loads are um, far away from the 85% of 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how, how is the load factor at the moment for October? Yeah, in the area of 60%. Mm, yeah, yeah, and the price, the prices are quite stable, or are the prices are is there a pressure also on the prices. So you have different competitors' behavior. Some push very hard on the price, and then mm. there's nothing you can do. You just need to follow. Yeah. You managed. Uh, you mentioned the all the safety and health protocols, and we witnessed as, uh, as we came here with Aegean, yes. and I think it was very disciplined. Also the disembarking and so on. It all went very well. Um, as we heard before, of course, um, um, Greece is open since July for tourism. Uh, what are your major learnings from these new protocols? Where, where are things uh, you can say we have improved processes or we have learned this or that? Um, the major learning is that you have never learned, you have never finished. You just need to keep going. The, the, the mask was fairly easy at the beginning. Uh, we never stopped operating. Also in April, we kept maybe 10, 15, uh, 10 flights a day in Greece. We flew three times a week to Brussels. A good day in April was when our average number of passengers was a two-digit number, just to give you an idea of how bad it was. And then traveling started slowly but surely. What, what we have seen is passengers cooperate very well. Mm. Um, everybody understands, or, or most of the time, um, there is much less, you, you know, we have much less crew reports of, of unruly passengers. Mm. It's calm on board. Yeah. People understand and everybody deals with it uh, his and her own way. And what we have trialed in August and what we will now roll out on all flights is, is we call it a hygiene expert which are uh, two crew members. They, they get a button, and uh, if passengers have uh, questions, they can ask the hygiene expert uh, between you and me, and you don't tell anybody. It's also for the crew. Now we have somebody who can go actively and remind people to wear the mask, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, gibt es Fragen zum Airline-Markt? Für Eugene, auch gerne auf Deutsch, wir können das übersetzen. Hier, uh, Sönke, there seem to be questions from the audience which are viewing us via their, via the live stream. Now I have to make the microphone work. Sönke. Okay, microphone is My working. My Sönke Graumann from FEW. Yeah, I'm just, I um, um, had a question from a user. is asking what you um, think about the change of the uh, testing strategy at German airports. Is uh, that influencing your business? Um, the change of? Of the testing um, oh. from the airports. Mm. I think it's a bit of a political question yes. in Germany, right? Mm. I'm from Switzerland, I'm neutral. <laughs> uh, it goes back to what I said before. We need a protocol, we need standards, we need to do things the same way in Greece, in Austria, in Germany, in Sweden, in Spain, across the board. That's what we need to do. And, and if we combine this with, and this must come from the European Union, this must come from Brussels, when is uh, a country a risk country? In Germany, it's clearly defined. If the rolling seven-day average um, per 100,000 citizens is more than 50, then you're on the list. In Switzerland, the same number is 60. Um, other countries, they just put you on or off, and they don't make it transparent. So these things must be clear. And testing, personally, I'm more in favor of testing before flight. And, and for me, 
again, that's my personal opinion. How will confidence come back for people to travel? One is, what I said, things need to be clear. Um, we need a vaccine to be available first for doctors, nurses, and high-risk patients, um, or not patients, high-risk groups. That's probably around Christmas. That will help the psychology. And then it will take a few more months and it's available to more people, but I don't think we will have a highly uh, efficient vaccine. It will be 70, 75 percent, uh, and, and then it will develop, but th this will help. And then we need quick tests. We need tests available quick and fast. Tests for, I say, less than 20 euros with a result in less than 30 minutes. Mm. Because then you can make it a requirement, you want to board a plane, you need to test within four hours before, and it will be at an affordable price. Cyprus has put Greece on their B list end of July, which basically means if you come to Greece and you go back to Cyprus, you will have to do a test. And if you are a family of four, you just add probably 400 euro to your budget. And the Cypriots didn't come to Greece for holidays anymore. So it's too expensive and it takes too long. It must become a f at a much lower price and much quicker. And I think it will become part of, of uh, uh, your, your uh, travel protocol. Mm. So to, to come back to the, now I'm like a politician, I talk a lot and I don't answer the question. Um, I think testing everybody at no cost for the passenger, though I think the cost was, was coming through taxes back to the passengers, um, was a good thing. But ag again, the, the, the solution for me is not country by country, but across Europe. Mm. So, so you count with the um, antigen test end of September, would they wrote in the newspaper? I have my own hopes, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. I think that's realistic. Mm. But it, it's, it's, it's a realistic scenario, but many things can happen. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there further questions? Ah, here. Yeah. Um, will you be on the new Berlin airport? And if so, uh, which destination are you flying? We moved to Berlin, Wendirk, to the new airport, soon, October. The answer is yes. And what was the second question? Uh, which destination you will fly to? Berlin, we fly to Athens. And we are thinking about flying to Thessaloniki from Berlin, but we are thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Here's another question. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was first time flying with the Gian about almost four years ago, and I was totally impressed that you with the Gian Airlines didn't have any plastic cups anymore. Already almost four years ago, you already had paper cups, and I also remember that even the cutlery was not in plastic anymore, it was also in paper, and I thought, Oh my goodness, this is a Greek airline, but yes, so innovative. And um, again, two days ago, we had the same, we didn't have the plastic anymore, so you have banned it. And my question is, is sustainability also, what is it playing a special role for you? Because I think this fits perfectly for Germany. Sustainability is something I think Germans really look for. And yeah, that's my question. Better, our product is the same everywhere. So it's not specifically done for Germany. Was that the essence of the question or I missed? No, actually what kind, uh, what sustainability, what kind of role this plays for you? Because four years ago, I don't remember any um, airline which didn't have plastic cups yeah. for the service anymore, but instead paper cups. 
and this is something that you have removed plastic and this is something I really appreciate when flying with Aegean and I think this is also something which German people really appreciate very, very much. So we are not a small airline anymore. We are a medium-sized airline, but we are a small organization. And I think the, the, the paper cup, that was just something we did one day because somebody said, why, why do we have the, the plastic cup? And, <laughs> and um, these are things, if, if uh, we, this is how we work, we, we look at things, and then we can do things very fast. But sometimes we are very Greek and we do it very slow. <laughs> but things, we, we can do things very fast and we do things very fast, which is the base of, of, of the results you have seen that I have shown at the beginning. So it's not that we have, uh, I don't think we have a super green thinking in the company, but we do have a, a good level of understanding of the, of the uh, uh, environmental responsibility. And obviously there's still a lot of things to do and we will still do many more things. Thank you very much. Are there further questions, weitere Fragen? Not at the moment, then I would say thank you Roland Yagi, thank, thank you for the presentation and thank you for the support to our workshop. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now coming to the next issue. We, I would like to discuss uh, with tubulators uh, how the German tubulators see the development of the Greece market. What are the prospects? What are the obstacles? What are the hopes? And I would like to have um, to invite my guests, and we do it in a hybrid way. Uh, we have two guests here. We have two guests remote via Zoom conference. Hopefully, the, the colleagues from Zoom can join us also. I will start introducing you the guests we have here live on stage. I would like to start with Halina Strzewska from FDI Group. And I would like to introduce to you and welcome Christiane Pilz. She's the head of operations of Attica Reisen in Munich. Both from Munich. So we see, of course, the, the south of Germany was always strong into Greece. So um, I'm looking forward to our remote guests. Ah, so uh, hello. I would like to welcome our panelists here. We have uh, not live on stage as the two ladies. We have here uh, Mr. George Dimas. He's from TUI, from TUI Destination Services. He's the head of Greece and also some other destinations. But of course, he's the expert on Greece. And I would like to welcome Mr. Mario Krug. Uh, he's the um, commercial, chief commercial officer of LMX Touristic, uh, tour operator based in Leipzig. Welcome also you both. You hear the applause, so I, I guess you can hear us. It's okay? Yes, very good. So, the first round, uh, your uh, um, um, pictures are shown on the screen, so the people here in the audience uh, can see you all. As you know, we have limitations. Only 50 people are allowed here in the audience, so it's not the 10,000 we have usually, <laughs> but uh, 50 very interested. And we have, of course, our viewers who view us uh, via the live stream on few.de or few.com. I would like to start the first little round. Uh, we heard about <laughs> the, the restart, that's the main issue. Perhaps Halina and Christiani, um, just to give an impression from your company, from your corporate business, how far have you gone at the moment? How is the situation? Just to give us a little bit an update about the situation. Would you like to start, Halina? I will try. Um, the situation at the moment is very, so I'm very happy and the situation is very, very well for Greece. I'm happy to be responsible for Greece and Cyprus. And actually, um, I don't know what, uh, what will say the colleagues of mine, but I can say the Greece and Cyprus, they are the only destination there that we can sell at the moment, or they are selling, or that you are selling at the moment. And uh, this increasing of the numbers of the paxes of the numbers of the clients is uh, from week to week more and more. It's uh, so actually it's uh, covering a little bit with travel trends analysis that we saw today. 
uh, during the, the um, presentation of one of the colleagues. However, I have to say that it's going up, so I would like to knock in the, in the wood at the moment. And uh, if the trend is staying like this, we will be better, really we will be better than the last year. It's unbelievable, because if you would ask me this question for two months, mm. I would say never ever, we will not manage. But at the moment, the bookings, they are coming crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why we are happy. <laughs> uh, may I ask uh, um, uh, further? Is it uh, the same for every destination, for the big destination, or are, are some differences between regions or islands in Greece? Of course, there are some differences. And back to the analysis from Travel Trend, uh, this is really Crete is the most important destination at the moment. This is in whole destination and whole world that we have at the moment. In current situation, Crete is on the first place. On the second place, is, uh, as far as I remember, is Alanya at the moment, so Turkey. On the third is Rhodos. And fourth is Kos and mm. Corfu. Mm -hmm. So this is actually Greece is the most most popular destination. The small islands, unfortunately, they are not functioning as uh, we wished. The reason is just um, not all of the hotels they are open there, or there are some small islands where we don't have any hotels because the hoteliers decided not to take the risk. And of course, the flight connections are still with question mark to the small islands. This mm -hmm. is the challenge that we have in this kind of the regions. But big islands. This really success. Okay, but sounds good. Christiane, Attica is a little bit different. Attica is for, for many, many years in the market, but focus uh, also a lot of, on the smaller islands, on the rural tourism, on the more individual guests. How's the situation at Attica at the moment? Um, I can, uh, can confirm the, this. We have very many late bookings also. Um, but uh, especially for Kikladic Islands, we have also Crete, of course, and the big islands, Kerkira, the Ionian Islands. Uh, suffering are, of course, um, Samos and Lesbos and Hios, uh, these uh, islands on the East Aegean Sea. But uh, we have good figures, uh, really, in um, Kikladik, um, Paros, Naxos, also the small islands. And there are uh, flights still to Santorini and Mykonos. And uh, with the help of Aegean Airlines, we have always the possibility via Saloniki or Athens to combine Santorini, Mykonos, Paros, Naxos, Milos. Mm -hmm. And there's a great demand for this at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, also guests who are taking a ferry boat, for example from Piraeus, or, or uh, um, uh, are there no difference between former years and the way of traveling? No, it's uh, now at the end of the season maybe we have some lower fares, let's say from Naxos to Mykonos or something like that, and we have to take the people to Athens, but it's no problem. Who wants to travel and to see Kikladic Islands, we do very special uh, combinations and individual combinations, whatever client wants, it's no problem if somebody wants to travel. Mm -hmm. Mario, LMX uh, is an operator um, operating in many, many countries. How important is Greece for you and how is your business going for Greece at the moment? Calibera, Calibera. <laughs> Leipzig is calling now. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we are very happy that we have uh, Greece uh, in this uh, situation. So the Greek destinations are going very well this year, especially the islands like Greece. Orders or including cost, the mainland, it could be better, but m we ca uh, many of, uh, of bookings they have we uh, must cancelled uh, um, of COVID uh, change to, to Greece. That's very nice. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the people who want to travel changing their, their, their plans, and you have also bookings. For the of course, you're operating more in the major destinations like mm -hmm. uh, Crete or Rhodes. You have also bookings for, for other destinations, for smaller islands? Yes, we, yes, we have, but we have the same problems uh, like FDI. It's the problems of uh, uh, closed hotels, yes. Hmm, yeah. Do you see, um, of course, we have the problem with Spain from the German market. That's a travel warning. Um, are there people willing to go to another destination or, or, most, or are there many people for saying, I booked for Spain, Spain is not, I will not go to Spain at the moment because of travel warning, I, am, I will not go on holiday at all. Or how, how um, willing are people to change the, the destination? Um, the rest thing is that, uh, um, especially in Spain, uh, like Mallorca, 80% of our uh, uh, guests um, going to Spain uh, um, uh, with, with uh, uh, travel warning. 
That's yeah. uh, interesting. Yeah, um, but uh, they, they were not going. Yeah, they change uh, also to Chris. Mm -hmm. George, uh, I think it's fair to say that Tree Group is the market leader from the tubulators to Greece. Of course, you're not op only operating in Germany, uh, also UK, Scandinavia, uh, France, Belgium, Netherlands, all, all the big source markets in Europe, Eastern Europe, Poland, and so on, uh, even to Russia. How's the situation at the Tree Group at the moment for, for uh, uh, Greece? Of, of course, we heard already the situation is special. Germany, there's no uh, travel warning, but we have now this quarantine obligation for, uh, from the uh, UK government imposed for some islands. How do you see the situation at the moment? Well, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, for us, Greece is uh, our number one destination this year, and it's uh, picking up, especially in the late market. Uh, our guests are booking even later in the year than in uh, previous years. Um, talking about destinations, uh, Crete, uh, Rhodos and Kos are doing well. Uh, Peloponnese uh, is falling a little bit uh, behind towards the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you expect for the rest of the season? How You said it's a late market. Uh, of course, we are now uh, coming to the end of the season, but of course, uh, October is still going on and, and some attempts to prolong the season. What do you expect for the last, last weeks of the season? Well, the hotel offer in, in, in Greece uh, has uh, recently been stable. Um, of course, some hotels uh, have closed already, and this is uh, the problem, as uh, also my colleagues mentioned before. Uh, of course, in, uh, in uh, some destinations, uh, except Corfu and Peloponnese, uh, we have uh, many partners who have confirmed uh, that they want to stay open, uh, despite uh, the UK and uh, Netherlands decisions. Yeah. To block so, Greece, yes. so uh, they stay open and all, uh, and, and they hope per perhaps to get uh, guests from Germany from other market. Do uh, of course we heard um, from from Georgios, the president of the Hellenic Hotel Federation, earlier that roughly half of the hotels in Greece have opened only this season. Half of the hotels are closed. So do. Um, Customers ac uh, accept a change in the hotel when they come to, perhaps to the same destination, or uh, um, how, how, what is your experience so far? Yes, yes, they, they do uh, accept it. Of course, we try to inform them in advance and give them the opportunity uh, either to, to cancel uh, the booking or to move it to for later or to, to next year or to come uh, in uh, an alternative hotel. I, I have to say the majority of the guests have accepted uh, the change. Mm -hmm. As many big hotel groups who operate more hotels often open the, the highest class, so the, the five star, for example, and uh, in order to give the, the client then an, an upgrade uh, coming from yes. a four star, perhaps for, to a five star. Yeah. What about the Tui hotels and resorts? Of course, Tui is not only a tour operator, and um, uh, Tui is, um, has also a strong network of own hotels and all bro own branded hotels with. Uh, names like uh, Tree Blue or Robinson or Magic Life. Um, how's the situation of your hotels in Greece? Um, how many of these your hotels are open? Most of the hotels are open. Most of the hotels are open. Of course, uh, some hotels uh, where the majority of the guests are coming from UK uh, um, uh, are going to close soon because uh, we don't have any guests coming from UK, like uh, some hotels in Crete or in, in, in Zakynthos. Uh, but uh, hotels where the majority of the guests come from Germany, uh, they are still open and they are going to stay open until the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Alina, you said at the moment, um, um, regarding the circumstances, a, a good development at FDI for, for Greece. Um, um, what are, are the things customers focus most on, on this? Uh, do they ask about the health and the hygiene protocols, the safety protocols, or are the customers saying, I just want to have a wonderful beach holiday and uh, I'm, I'm <laughs> trust uh, the audience? So, so what is the sentiment of the customers? Um, this is what the colleagues already said today. The business is at the moment, very last minute moment. So uh, um, the clients, um, if they ask, they don't ask me. I think they, they, they ask the, our colleagues in the travel agencies and uh, they have also the whole overview with the, all protocols and uh, rules in our web pages. We created also the additional web pages where is um, the all information you can find uh, recording 
uh, according to each destination, also Greece. Uh, I think that the clients, they want to leave Germany to have a nice holidays. I think this, uh, this feelings didn't, didn't change. Mm -hmm. and they are coming to Greece and they feel very safety. This is uh, the feedback that I got from the travel agencies, from the um, online partners, and so also from some of the clients. They feel mm -hmm. very, very, very safe. And uh, what I wanted to, to say and maybe repeat this, uh, what we have heard today in the morning from Mr. Thragakis, he said, um, that Greece actually passed very well the exam because uh, the, the Greece is very flexible. Hoteliers, they are unbelievably flexible with the all changes. In the beginning, it was really very, very crazy time because nobody knew uh, today what happened tomorrow. Mm. And all hoteliers, they did their very, very good uh, job. And this, um, I wanted to say it's very, very clear mm. and say very big thank you for our partners and for our friends. And uh, I think the success that we have all together nowadays, this is the success of all of us as a team players. Mm -hmm. um, um, when you look at the hotel and, and your cooperation, of course, this year is, is not normal in, in any way. In normal, in normal years, uh, of course, the troop rate does, does the planning and you do the contracts for the summer season, you do the early bird, bird contracts and so on, then you have the, the uh, season going on and um, perhaps uh, you have some guarantees or some exclusive deals and so on. But this year, uh, <laughs> everything which was printed in the brochures uh, for the summer season, uh, well, uh, you, you could um, just bring them uh, to, to the recycling. Um, everything was new. How do you deal now with the hotels? You said demand is coming, but it's coming on a very short side. So you're in a permanent last minute uh, deal modus looking which hotels are open, where can I do a, uh, make a deal, where can I uh, increase capacity or something like this? How, how are you working at the moment? I don't like this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, this is the, the challenge that we all, all of us we have at the moment. This is the challenge for the two operators, this is the challenge for the airlines, this is the challenge for the, for the travel agencies and also for the hoteliers. And uh, I suppose that the next season will be not the same like this season. It was said today in the morning as well that uh, we are not expecting the same business as we have this year. Um, however, some of the two operators, they are uh, comparing the, the business with the 18, 19 uh, business year. Yes, we as well, but I don't think so that it will be one to one. So it will be not 100% the same. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly of the two operators, um, they are contracting in very traditional conservative uh, way. So I mean with the prepayments, with the EBD prepayments. However, uh, this is really, um, very in huge focus and uh, always with the cooperating with the with the very important partners because also to operators we don't have cash mm. this is the case and uh, we cannot um, make the business exactly the same as we did that's why that's why we are focusing but we are managing till now we are managing with our May Pantra partners to find the solutions um, and I hope it will be working in the mm. next months. Mm. I will come on this issue a little bit later. Christiane, as you have the um, contracts with also a lot of small hotels, of course you serve also the major destinations, but you have a lot of uh, smaller hotels. How, how is it uh, with them? How, how do the smaller hoteliers deal with the crisis? You have in your brochure, you have it with us, mm. there are many hotels with, uh, let's say, 10, 10 or 20 rooms or something like this. Mm. So how do you deal with them? They are also very good in the hygiene concept and we hear from our clients which come back that they really admired what uh, the uh, hoteliers did and uh, I, uh, from the beginning I, what I saw, uh, clients are not so much afraid to be in Greece. They mm. know they are uh, very much in the open air and yeah. uh, small hotels, it's not such a problem. They are more afraid from the airport and from the aeroplanes. This is um, um, the most factor to to help uh, yeah. to, uh, to get away the, the fear from people. Yeah. And um, from the contracting side, of course, we have the same challenge. And uh, what I uh, see and what I hear from our contracting uh, colleagues, 
uh, hotels help very much with uh, constant prices. They don't uh, hire prices, most mm -hmm. of them, and they give uh, very much early booking discounts. And even hotels which didn't give any early booking discounts till now, they gave it uh, for 21. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is um, a main um, thing to get bookings early. This yeah. is the only way to survive, to have early bookings. For us, our, we are um, um, two operator, not uh, with late bookings uh, usually. No. It's not our business. We have we have to have the bookings early, mm -hmm. and it helps to everybody. And most of the clients who were forced to cancel the, uh, their journey this year because of the lockdown or because they were afraid, many of them said, we want to do it next year. Mm, yeah. Most of them. Yeah. We hope we can, if it uh, stays like this now, everything's going well in Greece and nothing happens, I think uh, it, it will work. Mm. And uh, we have, as I said, the help from the hotel. Now we, we are hoping also the airlines don't increase very much, so then we can uh, have constant mm. prices and good prices from the beginning. Mm. This is very... Yeah. Mm. Important. As, as Attica has, has many of your guests, uh, I think, uh, can be described as Greece lovers, uh, Greece fans. You said that many think about a holiday ne next year. What about you doing also smaller islands? You do groups, you do the island hopping. Uh, is this uh, people also want this year? Or uh, you said the airline, airline travel, the airports a little bit, the bottleneck? Uh, or is, is the product changing a little bit that the clients are coming and saying, Uh, I want to go there and then I want to stay at my beach and, some, and don't discover so much. Or is, is, is you do not no, see change they, the they behavior? Want, they want very much to discover and to, uh, to, to see the islands and go by car, but they want to do very individual. Yeah. We have uh, also the report from our representatives on the islands. We have on every island representatives and they do consultation hours, personal consultation hours. We do it with, with WhatsApp, but also uh, like a discussion personally. And uh, all say, uh, we have so much uh, reply from the clients, they want to do this, they want to see us, they want to book individual mm. ex excursions. This is a trend. I think the trend is to be more, uh, even more individual than now. Yeah, yeah. Mario, LMX is a tributator. You are doing dynamic packaging, uh, um, but you, of course uh, you had all also, uh, let's say, a traditional packaging, you printed brochures, you do uh, long-term uh, contracts with hotels. So how is the business changing as we hear, of course, this year's last-minute market? Is it a, now purely dynamic packaging or how do you change uh, the, the situation you're dealing with now? Um, also I'm uh, uh, very happy of our product team. Uh, they do at the moment a great job with the providers and the, and the hoteliers uh, for the surprises, uh, are the hotels open or not, and so on. Um, and uh, we see more late bookings, and uh, we think it would be also uh, a late booking year uh, for uh, 2021. Um, and we uh, are um, the right tour operator for, for late bookings. Uh, dynamic packaging is uh, very nice is, uh, is for, 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 for late bookings especially. That's why um, we think we, 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 we uh, will um, a, a good job uh, doing in the next year for late bookings. Mm. But dynamic packaging is also a little bit dangerous uh, um, at the time because uh, at, uh, dynamic packaging, the airline mm. is paid <laughs> immediately and when That's then right. the, When there's a change, perhaps, uh, let's say, a travel warning or something, this changes in this moment, it's hard to get the money back then, isn't it? Yes, that's 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 right. Uh, so I so we think for uh, for the future they have some things uh, uh, change for for this for for a pan pandemic or, or or other other things. Um, the, the early booking booking booker will be less. Uh, All clients will book shorter, um, and um, the customers for the future, if they will book long term, they uh, need flexibility. Yeah. And so we need flexibility in flights, with the airlines, and also in hotels. Uh, that means uh, lower advance payments for the hotels, and also the waiver of, of non-refundable rates. I think this is also a signal to the airlines um, to uh, react 
flexibly uh, to cancellation and offer refundable rates accordingly also for the tour operators. That's uh, for us, it's, uh, we think that's a, that's a, that's a future. Uh, we need, also tour operators and travel agencies need for future more flexibility uh, for cancellations by airlines and hotels. Mm -hmm. George, uh, TUI is an integrated uh, group. You have uh, we have all, you have the tour brand, you have own airlines, TUI Fly in Germany is flying very much uh, to Greece, but also, of course also from, from other destinations uh, like uh, from other source markets like UK, and you have own hotels. But, uh, do you agree with Mario? Um, will there be um, the changing in behavior of uh, travel booking, will it uh, change permanently or for a long time so that we have, so we are still, uh, will be in a late market for, for many, many years and people need more flexibility? Well, the, it's, it's true that uh, the behavior of the guests is changing. And uh, I think th this year was a test. Uh, actually, we were expecting this uh, behavior, this change of behavior to come later. But because of uh, what happened this year with the, with the, with the COVID virus and the crisis, uh, we see this change coming faster. So, yes, uh, at the moment, uh, we do have this uh, uh, late bookings and uh, we can all survive only if we cooperate together. So uh, that we need the support of our partners uh, in Greece so especially. And um, I believe that uh, this trend will continue also uh, for next year, uh, especially if we don't have uh, vaccine ready, mm. which will of course help the guests to choose uh, on time earlier uh, if they want to fly and travel and where to. Mm. What does this mean for the cooperation of the uh, um, between tour operators and, and hotels? Of course, uh, as Salina said, everybody's looking for cash at the moment. The travel agents, the tour operators, everybody, uh, the airlines we heard, everybody ne needs cash to survive these critical months. So will this model we had, and, and Twig, for example, is a tour operator, you have their own hotels, but you have a long, many trusted partners for many years. You pay, do prepayments uh, to, to secure your bets you need for the high season. Will this model change or will the um, adaption to the model, how will it be the um, t uh, working together with the hoteliers next year? Well, okay, we all have to uh, acknowledge that uh, cash flow is, is uh, very uh, important uh, and it's limited uh, this year. Uh, so say, saying that, uh, the key winter destinations uh, are still closed and are certain about uh, when they will open and to which uh, extent. So this requires a strong cost-based uh, operation. Uh, however, uh, we found solutions with uh, all our partners who received prepayments uh, originally for this summer, 2020. Um, that should help them uh, for this winter. Uh, key is to recreate trust. So we offer our guests that book the holidays the opportunity to rebook up until 14 days prior to arrival mm -hmm. uh, when the situation is much clearer. And this also will support the hoteliers. Mm -hmm. Alina, how do you see the cooperation also with the tour operators, prepayments uh, and so on? Uh, this year, of course, some hoteliers also from Greece were complaining, they get prepayments and then, of course then came the crisis. Uh, usually the prepayments are um, um, edited then um, with, with the arrivals and, uh, um, but this year, how will the situation next year, how, how, can, how can the hoteliers have the money to survive the winter? In, in, in former times they get the prepayments and they get the early bookings, so in order to survive the critical months, how will be the, this for next year? And this is a little bit the uh, uh, homework of the two operators, just to find the idea how we can uh, support the, our partners, how we can support the hoteliers, especially the hoteliers with whom we are working since years. And this is uh, what one of my colleagues uh, mentioned already today, just uh, to sell as much as possible for the coming summer 21. Mm -hmm. And the tendency at the moment, I can speak about my numbers and my statistics, it's very, very well. Mm -hmm. So I hope, uh, again, I am I'm searching for some wood. I hope that nothing happened in the, in the next uh, weeks, that the tendency is uh, staying like this. So it uh, gives us a little bit possibility to take the breath and also to take the breath from the hoteliers. Mm -hmm. So that's why I hope it will be one of the, of the solution, of the possibility, opportunity to deliver some, some cash, not only for the two operators, but also for the very important partners of the mm -hmm. two operators. Mm -hmm. 
all the big German tour operators, they re release their program for the next year, or parts of the program, much earlier than other years. As Cristiano also said, some of the uh, holiday makers, they postpone their holiday to next year. And um, I heard it from Tui, from Der Touristic, from other, uh, I guess, FDI is the same. Um, um, so big, or some parts of the Greece program for next year is already available. Definitely, definitely. Otherwise, we wouldn't have, uh, let's say, five position uh, plus to the last year in the same time. And definitely, we are open and we are selling our products. And it is amazing because we have very good numbers with uh, approximately 60% of portfolio that is at the moment bookable. Mm. So we need still 40% of the plant portfolio for the next summer. But we have a really huge plus. So this is the very, very good news for all of us. Mm -hmm. And the book is for next year. Is, is it a mix of new bookings or a books of uh, bo uh, bookings from people who accepted uh, uh, a voucher this year and postpone it? Is it a mix of both? This is a mix of both. Definitely, mm -hmm. this is a mix of both. I cannot tell you the percentage um, part of uh, which part is the for the rebookings mm -hmm. clients and which part is for the new bookings. From my opinion, I would say something like 30, 70, mm -hmm. because uh, I see the new bookings coming every day. So this is my so generally indication mm. for the spot. But definitely this is the mix of that's, both. That's a good sign. Christiane, you were also quite optimistic that um, because uh, there are destinations, uh, I have to say, where hoteliers are um, quite, uh, <laughs> they're not so optimistic that they get early bookings uh, in January as we saw the market is a very late market and the customers uh, in a world of uncertainty just uh, wait, have a wait and see approach. But you said also you're confident for that in January, February, March, where usually the, the bulk of the bookings is coming in, you will get an early booking business. Even the, uh, the microphone? Because uh, we also started, of course, with bookings for 21, and every week we open more and more of the program. Um, so I, uh, I say the same. It's a mix from new bookings, but more from uh, the uh, they want to make the journey they cancelled this year, they want to make it next year. It's a mix. Mm. But I, I'm also optimistic because uh, now people see Greece is safe, and our main work, I think, is to arrange everything that people feel it to travelling to Greece is as safe as staying in Germany. Mm. This is what we have to show them and what we have to uh, say them. And the mm -hmm. word of mouth, as you said, mm -hmm. your clients returning from Greece mm -hmm. are quite uh, uh, happy with their yes, holidays. Yes, quite happy, really. They are impressed what Greece, such a small country, had done and what effect it had made. I remember when it started that people had to register with this PNL formula. Yeah. It was a big, oh, what do we have to do now? And it was very short. We have two times, two days time to, to tell it everybody for yeah. the first time. Now it's easy. And everybody, oh, I cannot do it and I want to do it. And now it's not so, not such a problem. It's easy. And it's, and we were really impressed how effective and how quick Greece could do this. Mm. Because, and I remember our um, Corona app in Germany, months of discussion, and now it's not uh, even mm. working and so on. Uh, this is really impressive. Mm -hmm. Mario, how do you plan for, for, for next year for, for LMX? What is your prospect for next summer? Um, yeah, especially for Greece, I uh, very hopefully most of the airlines will survive and not only Greece, all uh, destinations. Um, the flight connection will continue like 2019 or maybe even improved increased by Aegean, for instance. Mm. Um, our contracts we have been included for um, and, and are in, uh, in, in, in preparation. Um, the portfolio is expanded by our providers. Um, brochures, we are not planning, but dynamic packaging to operator, it's not uh, uh, not notwendig, um, but we plan for, 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 for the next year many of marketing uh, is uh, the, the travel agency to uh, grow up the, the destinations and, uh, and, and the bookings, but we think it would a late booking year. That's our opinion, but um, uh, wie sagt man, also ich habe keine Glaskugel, Klaus. Also, yeah. <laughs> 
schwierig. Ja, yeah, you don't have the magic uh, ball, the magic. Um, so right. how, do you, how do you see expect, uh, prices for next year? We had heard from Christiane that prices this year are quite stable, uh, even uh, um, that the hoteliers have facing higher costs because of the hygiene safety protocols and so on. So what, are the, what will be the price development? George, what, what do you feel? How, do, how does TUI Group is planning for next year? You see also a market that can reach the 2019 level and what do you expect for the price levels? Uh, well, of course, uh, Greece uh, will be uh, one of our top destinations in 2021 again, as it offers a great product. Um, we expect a higher volume than this year, uh, but not yet on the level of uh, 2019. Yeah. Uh, 2021, yeah, will be a transition year, still affected by the crisis and depending on the overall COVID uh, situation. Mm -hmm. You see, we'll see also differences from different markets. We saw, we had a presentation from a German market researcher and that shows the, how deep the impact is if once a travel warning has been released for a country. Because it's a little bit in the head of the people, uh, this country is closed. Even though Mario said, Mallorca, there's a travel warning from the German government. Many people are traveling as well because Mallorca for many Germans is seen a little bit a part of Germany. <laughs> and, and we have also a lot of individual tourists go there with a flight, um, having a finger and a uh, Uh, rental car, so on. Um, do, do you see difference? For example, Germany uh, is open for Greece. There's no travel restriction. Uh, now, UK, which is also a very, very big source market for Greece, has this quarantine obligation for some islands. Do, so do you, it might be that the German market will um, perform better than the UK market next year? Uh, well, Yes, uh, of course, we don't know what will happen next year with uh, the travel ban again from each country. Uh, but uh, I do believe that the, the, the German market uh, will perform better uh, than this year, maybe better than uh, other source uh, markets. Mm -hmm. uh, we as TUI, we do print brochures and we will continue giving uh, this to the travel agents and the guests. Uh, but in addition, we offer uh, a much wider portfolio on uh, all our offline and online sales channels. So guests benefit from, uh, from this. Uh, next to this, both hoteliers and the TUI brand offer, uh, offer them uh, the widest uh, range uh, in Germany. Um, George just said a question and the bots in, in fact, the next question I would like to raise because we're talking about whole Greece and the thing. So, and we saw also the, the booking trend. What are your expectations here for this region, for Thessaloniki, for Halkigidiki? So, how prominent is it now in your program and how do you see the development here and for, for this year and perhaps for also for next year? Would you like to start? Um, yes, this is the very good question that I actually I was waiting for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for because just today in the morning we also had a conversation about this, uh, this case and about the possibility to uh, develop and to uh, improve the existing tourist uh, in, in Halkidiki region, region and also in uh, Saloniki. And also today before our coffee break I spoke with the colleagues from Aegean. I have some ideas uh, that uh, I hope I will, it will be possible to, to realize. The point is, uh, I just checked today in the morning. We have at the moment for summer 20, something like approximately 70 hotels in the Halkidiki region, they are open. The question is, of course, this is what we discussed today in the morning. Uh, do they stay open? Will they stay open? Because this is uh, like the chain reaction. If mm. the hotels, they are open, we can organize something how we can bring the clients to, to this part of the world. And then I can start discussion with Aegean colleagues. If the hoteliers decided and um, mm. decide in two weeks or three weeks, no, I will not open, then we have such some, some challenges. So there are a lot of questions without answers, let's say. But definitely, I can only confirm that there is the potential in this region. Mm. Might there be also potential? We saw um, at the FEW Congress, for example, we had the um, from the Italian tourist board, and she was telling us that uh, she, she sees a little bit a change. Um, people tend to go away from the so a uh, little bit seen overcrowded, former overcrowded destination in Italy uh, to 
rural countryside to destinations they have never been before, where people expect it a little bit more smooth and easy. Is it the same? Do you expect a little bit for your re region? Might be this also be a change for Halkidiki and Thessaloniki? Yes, also, uh, we have Halkidiki and Thessaloniki a long time in our brochure and in our program. Also in winter, of course we have not masses in winter, but it's uh, ideal for a city trip. The flight network already existing. You have yeah. daily flights, sometimes twice a day from Munich to uh, uh, Saloniki, for example. It's only two hours flight. It's, it's existing already. It's uh, mm. only a thing of coordination between the hotels in Halkiviki and the airline to make something. It's, uh, of course, it's not, uh, the weather is not always good. This, uh, we have to be true. But there are many days where it's good. And if a hotel, and there are many hotels with good offers in wellness and uh, sports activities and so on, uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, able to make. And in summer, I don't remember, somebody said, uh, it's uh, difficult for us to do a combination, Saloniki, Halkidiki, something like that. For us, no problem. If a client says, I want two days in uh, city trip uh, uh, Thessaloniki and five days uh, in Halkidiki, mm. no problem, or, or whatever. We combine mm. the wishes of our clients. It's yeah. this is for us. Of course, it, it's no an attractive, mm -hmm. as we um, experience ourselves here at the workshop, uh, it's an attractive combination to have a, a big city with nightlife and so on, with museums and so on, and to have them relaxing uh, in the nature and on the beaches. Mario, um, for LMX, uh, which role does Halkidiki and Thessaloniki spiel uh, are in your program. Uh, yes, it's a it's a major role, um, and very interesting for for us. Mm -hmm. uh, Thessaloniki is, like Christiane says, uh, only two and or two and a half hours uh, by flight, comparable uh, to Mallorca. Uh, uh, according to airports in Greece, Thessaloniki was LMX fifth most successful destination in Greece in 2019. It's a, here is a good uh, infrastructure between the airport and the hotels and uh, best, uh, best things. In my opinion, there is still room to improve the numbers. The mainland cannot hide from the islands. But uh, I think the most, most people's opinion is that hotels are in quiet and secret places and there is nothing to do around the hotel. Um, I, sh I think more could uh, be advised here for, for, for the area. Some things, Christiane says, sport or museums or other things. I think the, the, the people don't know it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to offer, but the, the, uh, not everybody, of course, uh, the, 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 this is a classical destination for the Germans, but uh, what uh, there is, uh, not, does not everybody client know. Uh, George, from your opinion, of course, TUI is operating on the big islands, but how important is this region for you? And what are your prospects for the next years? Yeah, okay, the area offers a uh, broad potential as we currently do not have such uh, a strong presence uh, uh, in Thessaloniki, Halkidiki, compared to, to the islands. Uh, we have resorts like the Tui Blue Lagoon Princess in, in, in Calibes Beach, uh, which receives really positive feedback. And of course, we are also looking forward to 2021 when the Greek Hotel Marco Bay and Club Turquoise will reopen its door. Its doors. Um, so the area for us uh, it, it will uh, still play a, a small role next year. Uh, however, we can uh, soon uh, start s selling also um, any new hotel uh, if, of course, the, the hoteliers are interested to, in a cooperation with uh, with TUI. Uh, they can always contact us and discuss about uh, these opportunities. Mm. As you said, you are expecting. Um a good next year, although not the for the true group, not the level to 2019. But you see also areas of growth within Greece, and th this could be one of the regions where you can face have growth. Correct. Yeah. There yeah. are always opportunities. Yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my Damen und Herren, gibt es Fragen an unsere Tourberater, an unsere Spezialisten? Are there any questions? I see also my colleague Zünke is coming, who's monitoring the questions coming via the tool, you can ask also questions on the website on few.de or .com, but perhaps first is there in the, here in the room, are there questions? You can also raise the question in German if you like, we can translate it. I have two questions from uh, the internet. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, but uh, the one question which came out of the forum from the travel agent um, that goes to Mr. Dimas uh, from TUI. 
Um, how is the booking situation, especially for Robinson Club and Greg Hotel, um, especially the new resorts or the renovated resorts? Can you tell us how the situation, the current situation is? Uh, for this year or for next year? Probably for, for, uh, for, for this, this year. year. For this year. Well, okay. Uh, all hotels uh, have the same, uh, exactly, uh, face exactly the same problems uh, like all uh, hotels in Greece. Uh, so, Greek Hotel and Robinson are uh, 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 well booked, but not as well as we were expecting. Uh, especially the new Robinson Hotel. Um, is, uh, has good bookings, uh, good occupancies. Of course, not all rooms are open, but uh, if, we, if we consider uh, the number of rooms which are in operation at the moment, uh, I have to say that uh, the bookings are well, uh, really well. Uh, also, Greg Hotel didn't open uh, many hotels, but uh, uh, the occupancy in, in the hotels which are open is uh, at the moment uh, in a good level. Okay, thank you. And the second question from a user is um, if you, uh, that's uh, for, for all the people on the podium, uh, if an extension of the season in November would be an option, um, if you might, you know, mm -hmm. say to this point something. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. of course, Halkidiki, uh, as we said, it's possible. The flight network is already existing, but uh, of course uh, the airlines have now uh, longer uh, flights to, to Crete, for example. Also Kalamata in Peloponnese is uh, in November with Condor, for example, and you can come to Peloponnese uh, via Athens uh, every Mm. All and, the ho and the hotels are open all also on the Peloponnese. The golf hotels, whatever. for example, are open, open in, in uh, Peloponnese, yeah. uh, west in uh, Costa Navarino. Mm -hmm. And uh, of some smaller hotels also. Kalamitsi will be open. I know, don't know. Kalamitsi is a very nice hotel in the south of Peloponnese. And some smaller hotels are open. Yeah. You find something. Yeah. Alina? It's not the option, it's already done. So this is the short answer for the question, and I'm very happy about this question. Uh, it's already done in the big islands, uh, so we are bookable till the end of November in Crete. We are bookable in, in Rhodes, and uh, that's still not the finalized, uh, because we, will, we are planning also to be bookable in the other destination till the end of November. Now I'm laughing a little bit, I'm smiling a little bit, because for two days or three days I had a call with our um, partner, um, um, colleagues of mine and also friends of mine who is settled in, in Athen. And we were discussing about the situation where we can uh, develop and what we can extend. And he said, uh, Halina, in two weeks you will call me and we will plan the Christmas package. Mm. So um, yes, it's maybe not this, this year, but uh, there is definitely the potential for extension for the, for the um, season. Mm. George and Mario, you would like to add something about um, the extension? Yes. Uh, uh, I can say LMX is a dynamic tour operator. Every flight that goes behind October and every hotel that is open immediately is on, immediately on sale and we can package it. We have opened to an extension of the season increase since years. So I'm, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. George? Yes, okay. Uh, with us, is, the situation is different. We asked our partners uh, how they feel about extending the season and uh, whether sufficient occupancy levels can be reached. So we had a very open conversation, but uh, we decided to focus on the original season length. So this is uh, until the 8th of, 8th of November and uh, try to perform uh, optimally until then, meaning stable hotel openings and uh, flight operations. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, two cruises, mm -hmm. uh, this is a different field, but still uh, yeah. we bring uh, we, with the two cruises uh, guests to Greece. So two cruises is uh, launching uh, six so-called uh, Blau Horizon uh, to Greece, mm -hmm. uh, including uh, excursions. So the first two started on uh, September 13th from Miraclio. It leads to Piraeus and uh, Corfu, last uh, seven days. And uh, the demand, especially in the autumn vacation, is uh, satisfactory. Mm -hmm. George, one more follow-up question. 
of course the prolonging of the season has been discussed in, in Greece for, for many many years and often uh, uh, there was a wish to extend the season but it's of course it's not only the opening of the hotels you need also a little bit infrastructure you need the tavernas you need the shops because nobody wants to uh, spend a holiday uh, uh, just in a hotel where and that's a big uh, asset of Greece you can go out you can can enjoy the nightlife you can enjoy the culture but when everything is closed uh, it, it, this holiday is no fun do you see also um, at the local level for example and on the big island and uh, on other regions the, the, the wish or the will to coordinate this that in some areas that's much more than a hotel in November yeah I, I believe that some areas uh, in Greece uh, have the potential to stay open and uh, develop this uh, winter or extension of the of the season project mm -hmm. and uh, mainly uh, areas uh, where the hotels are very close to big cities and uh, mm -hmm. also like here, islands example, like, like the Rhodos. Yeah. Like yes. Thessaloniki where you have like the Thessaloniki city, where you have flights also in winter time yes, where, where we, correct, we can correct. have both yeah Thessaloniki is uh, combining a city destination with a resort destination where, yeah. since Halkidiki is just 40 minutes uh, drive from uh, Thessaloniki yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, are there further questions? Meine Damen und Herren, gibt es Fragen? Some other questions? Sönke, a question, he's just looking at the tool. No, at the moment, then I would like, like to, um, having a little closer round, what is your, is there a question? Example, uh, Anna, uh, a microphone is coming. This is a question from Anna Karajani. Um, do you think that uh, there's going to be a collaboration for certain products? Let's say now we have the example of Thessaloniki and Halkidiki, city and uh, uh, leisure. So it would be a cooperation with uh, local, local authorities. We have here Tasios, uh, Grigoris, and we have uh, the ladies um, to have products suitable for your, um, the tour operating that you represent um, in order to implement uh, new ideas and make them real products for the market for the future. I mean, 2021, maybe 2022. Yes, of course, everything is possible. It depends what it be. I, I spontaneously, I thought now maybe a visit in a winery or something like that. I, as, as I understand, uh, you may you mean some ex, uh, excursions, uh, special excursions. Uh, something like that. Of course, walking tours, um, whatever possible. We have also um, sometimes uh, often uh, requests for uh, incentive tours, small incentive tours. We have never 50 people, we have 20, 30, like this. And uh, I had sometimes in Halkidiki also groups which uh, they wanted a very special uh, program, uh, a trip by boat uh, and to a winery and then a, a fun uh, a biking tour and something like that. Of course, it's possibly. Uh, I now, uh, with your question, I think of, of one phenomenon we have now a few years. Um, a wedding in Greece is coming. Of course, in Santorini, we have about 10 weddings every year in, in Santorini. But I had also questions for Halkidi key for Kerkira, for Crete as well. It's also, let's say, not a big market, but we have the questions. And it's uh, easier to do this. Sometimes we have couples uh, who marry second time, let's say, not with a big, uh, big company, only, let's say, 10 persons, something like that. But it's a, a, a slowly growing market. And I think here are many hotels who can do this because uh, Halkidiki has, uh, has very, very good hotels in all categories. Everybody knows Sunny Resort, which is uh, doing every winter renovations and is trend setting in, in many things. Also Eagles Palace and Eagles Villas, uh, the dreamland, which you will see, I think, from mm. tomorrow. Uh, but even uh, many smaller hotels, Nikiti Beach, which we have, or Ikali House, where you can spend fantastic holidays in small, really, uh, uh, family houses. Okay. Yes, I have two more questions from the internet, from our users, um, that um, connects with what you said. Um, if there's interest in private villas and private pools so that the guests will have a less interaction with other guests, is there, is this a product? 
private, private pool. pools, private villas, villas for, yeah, for for the guests, so that there's no interaction. That's more luxury. Mm. Yes, we we try to have in our program everywhere, not only in Halkidiki, very good big hotels and middle hotels, and also very um, uh, many small hotels, apartments with ten rooms with like this and i see this is a trend the the people who booked this um stay stay more with their booking than to change and one phenomenon i wanted to tell uh, further we had many people who had uh, combinations island combinations complicated things two days the sea in athens three days naxos four days paros three days mykonos and so on these people, uh, uh, even if they had changements because one of the hotel was closed and we had to offer another, but they wanted to travel. And when they come back, they were really, really very impressed from the service in, on the ships, on the, on the airport, on everything. When people uh, traveled, the res uh, reaction is very, very good. And this helps also because they tell them the others, uh, you can go to Greece, it's not dangerous, it's okay. I think it helps a lot. But isn't that um, in Corona times even a big advantage to you, you know have products with less contact? Is that a big advantage, or do the guests still prefer bigger hotels? Or I mean, this is a, is a segment that might be have a boom now because it's like a private home without interaction with other guests? I think both because uh, of course uh, some like very individual uh, houses but uh, we have to be honest so the big hotels, the good hotels have a very very good uh, hygienic concept and you can trust for sure it's no problem. We see it here and uh, the uh, examples I, I told Sunny Resort they are not all open but uh, the ones that are open have a very very good uh, hygienic concept and and uh, the, all, the, all the good uh, yeah. hotels, for sure also uh, TUI hotels, uh, the Greek hotels and so on, for sure. So of course the bigger hotels have a bigger space, a big gardening and something. Yeah. Are there further questions? Um, there's uh, a question for, for TUI again. Uh, when uh, is TUI um, starting flights to Thessaloniki? Is there any, is there any idea if, if this is going to happen? or? Uh, at the moment, we don't have uh, in our plans to start flights to Thessaloniki, but as I mentioned before, we're open to, to, to start uh, discussions with uh, hoteliers in Thessaloniki. And of course, if we can have a, a good offer uh, of, of, of bets, I mean, not uh, prices, a good offer of bets and uh, a big number of bets, of course, in the, in the, in the future, we can uh, bring back to fly to Thessaloniki because uh, uh, I think 10, 12 years ago we were flying to Thessaloniki with, uh, with mm -hmm. fly. At the moment Tui Fly is then concentrating on the islands. Uh, but, but of course we heard today there's a um, from Germany especially but I guess also from other markets as we saw is a good uh, relationship from the airline support from, from, from Germany from any airports from Aegean and some other carriers. Are there further questions at the moment? No. And as time is running out also a little bit, I, I would like to thank my panelists. I want uh, um, Christiane uh, uh, and, and, and also my panelists here from, from, from the remote. I, I would like to thank you for joining us here. And we all hope that next year will be better, hopefully. And it could only get a bit better. I'd like to thank you for your impressions and hope to see you again on the FEW workshop and in this region. Thank you very much, Helena. Mario, thank you. Bye -bye. Welcome back again. Not the second half. We will have two more panels. And today's workshop we keep not as long perhaps as other workshops because in this times uh, we wanted that nobody spends more time than necessary in a closed room. That's why we also have all the, the dinners uh, outside and also the speed dating. We will now have a little change in our program. In our program, we had first the hotelier session and afterwards the um, travel agent session. Anna told me we will change this. Is that okay? I see also some panelists from the Greek panel. Yeah. Where's Anna? Yeah. Anna, okay. We, we start with the travel agent panel. That's right. Yeah. 
and I would like to introduce uh, our guests. Um, as, as we have here a very big stage, I feel like Mick Jagger on the last Rolling Stones uh, tour. Uh, um, so we have so, ma so much space, we can avoid wearing a mask. Uh, if people can uh, keep the social distancing, uh, having one and a half or two meters, uh, no mask is required. And I think discussing with a mask, uh, seeing nobody smile is a little bit difficult. So we will use the whole stage here. And uh, I would like uh, to pick up the, the travel agents, one microphone, and the others are using headsets. So let's begin with our, uh, um, with our panel. I would like to invite Gerlinde Hofmann. <laughs> Gerlinde is from TUI Reisecenter Markt Heiderfeld. I would like to invite Claudia Dornstein. <laughs> She's from Reisebüro Dornstein in Burbach. I would like to invite Joachim Horn. Joachim Horn is from the Derpart Reisebüro in Selm. I would like to invite Sebastian Stumpf. So, please keep a little bit more distance. You can go a little bit on the left side. So we need one and a half meters between, two meters between the people. Sebastian, if you join me. And last but not least, I would like to invite uh, Simone Veres. And I would like to invite also the head of the director of the GNTO office in Frankfurt, Vicky Strompu. So, please look that we have one and a half or two meters between you, so we can hold the, use the whole stage. It's a little bit, bit unusual. Yeah, you can stay here. You're fine. It's a little bit unusual. Usually, we are a little bit closer together. I think the tourism, the whole tourism community wishes to be a little bit closer together, but there are the times and we will make the best out of it. So, <laughs> microphone working, yeah. Yeah, so everybody can pick up a microphone. We have our headset. So, yeah, and as looking at the social distancing, <laughs> I think that's okay. Yeah, so. Looks good, looks great. <laughs> so, uh, I would like to start uh, with the first round, perhaps that everybody from the travel agents explains a little bit. We heard about from the tour operators, we heard from the hoteliers, how is Greece doing, perhaps also this region is doing. Um, Galina, would you like to start a little bit? If you are not uh, very safe, uh, in some cases, uh, not uh, feeling not safe in English, you can also answer in German and we will translate. Okay, I, th I think uh, we have all the same problems at home in the agencies. And uh, the market is really very slow. And so we are very happy to have Greece, that we can send our clients to Greece. And we have, for example, a lot of clients that say used before going to Mallorca or Spain. And now they changed. And we are happy that they are, ch that they are changed. And we had uh, to book them to Greece. So we had the booking, we have some money, and mm -hmm. I think this is also very important for all of us. Mm -hmm. You have also, you said about um, some clients who have changed the destinations, but you have also people coming saying, I want to go to Greece because I feel well there. Uh, sure. Um, also, now we have uh, in the, uh, on the holidays now in autumn, uh, we have a lot of families. Mm -hmm. They are coming and they tell us uh, what can we do, mm -hmm. which hotels are open, because also the clients are not stupid. They know the market very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we can be also very proud that we have a lot of close customers and um, they come to the travel agency. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. And of course, they want to travel and, and at the moment every, every euro counts. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Claudia, how's the situation at your travel agency at the moment for Greece? I think it's similar to your situation, Galinda, and uh, we are very, very proud and uh, happy that we can book our clients from other destinations, uh, for example, also from the uh, long distance uh, destination to the European, especially to uh, Greek, and uh, we hope it will go on. 
and mm. we will improve and to keep the money. Um, some um, people or some clients uh, changing the booking to the next year, they postpone the holidays. Well, we do our best. Yeah, yeah. Joachim, how is the situation? I think I don't have to repeat uh, for my colleagues, but I think it's very fascinating to see how the Greek government handled the whole problem. Um, it was a very clever handling of the government that they have that they are such a low risk in Europe, so they are still a travel region, and uh, we are happy that we have this destination to sell it. And sometimes a little bit difficult to our clients. Uh, because they ask, is it true, can I go? And, mm -hmm. uh, but then we have Mr. Google and can show it live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to mention also, Joachim is also a board member of DRV. DRV, for our Greek uh, friends here, DRV is the federation of the German tour operators, travel agents, of the whole travel industry. And the DRV is demanding for, for a long, long time to have more specified travel um, um, uh, advices, not only saying, ah, oh, this is, whole Spain is unsure or issuing a travel warning for the whole Canary Islands, although some of the islands are affected. So um, you, you mentioned the Greek government and your opinion that they are doing it good. So um, how important are these travel advices for the German customers? Are they looking at it or, or do some people in Germany say, I'm so confused about all, I, ju I just want to travel? We have very few clients uh, who don't ask for the travel advisors. I think they are very important. Mm. And uh, the, I think the, the most worst fear of one of our clients is that they have to stay in a country when they get an infection. Yeah. And this way, testing the people before they are coming in by chance mm. is a good way so they can, the, the people or all the clients have the possibility and they are sure they can go home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the same also Mr. Yagi mentioned from, from uh, Aegean and uh, Mr. Tassios from the Hotel Federation mentioned also how they, they are dealing with these cases. They have uh, the Greek government rented special hotels, but I think Vicky can go on on this a little bit. Um, Sebastian, ladies and gentlemen, is from Sonnkla TV. Sonnkla TV is a little bit special. Sonnkla is a TV show, uh, a TV shopping. Um, it belongs to the FDI group. It's the only one uh, in Germany. Perhaps before you start with these, just to explain with a few words what Sonnkla TV is, because in Greece, probably know, everybody knows. Yeah, we are Europe's number one travel channel or travel shopping channel. And we are specialized on flash sales. So we do have uh, within the FDI group a special tour operator, which is Big Extra, which was formerly also here um, to be seen. And they produce special products for a short booking window, but with a very good price, with um, special add-ons. And so we are also quite dependent on bookings. We don't get only our money from promotion, uh, from ads and classical TV commercials. Uh, we actually also are totally dependent on bookings. And uh, it was quite interesting to see that actually in former years, Greece was not always in our top, uh, one of our top sellers because um, it's quite price driven what we are doing with our flash sales and of course Greece with uh, yeah is not the cheapest um, I would say the cheapest destination compared to others such as Egypt or Turkey but in this year it was definitely yeah it was fantastic with the sales uh, Almost all days on number one of all our um, of all our products in the ranking, and we even saw that, for example, Corfu um, was now also often at number one, which wasn't before, as we found out that the flight distance to Corfu is probably a major argument, or was a major argument this summer, um, to choose this island because, yeah, close to Italy, it's so close, and the flight time duration was the best. So, yeah, this was quite, um, quite nice to see. Mm -hmm. You special... Uh, of course, uh, you produce special uh, features uh, on Sonnkla TV for Greece. Uh, as of course, there are some countries which are not open at the moment. You did more for Greece than in the normal times, other times? 
we had much more grease on our program than ever because actually we are always analyzing the sales and what is booked well will be presented more often and what is not booked well will be will fall out of our program so in the morning we are always checking the sales and the evening program is only full with top sellers and in former years we had one grease product in the evening program and this year there were often two or three different ones at the same evening and yeah very nice to see mm -hmm. Simone, I invited you on this panel because you're quite familiar with, with this region um, I guess most of the travel agents have never been to Halkidiki or to Thessaloniki I, I would like to ask who has been here in Thessaloniki before? Only a few, yeah. So you have been here and you um, doing not only um, distributing the offers from Tribrates, you do also your own Tribrating, you, you do also own groups, also in this region. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience here? Also, ich nutze das Angebot des Übersetzens. Yes. <laughs> um, ja, ich bin nicht das erste Mal hier in Thessaloniki in dieser Gegend und um, ich mag diese Gegend sehr. Und wir schicken schon seit Anfang Juli wieder die Gäste hierher. Ähm, insgesamt nach ganz Griechenland, aber auch halt gestern sind erst wieder einige Kunden hier angereist in Thessaloniki. Und das macht einfach Spaß, hier diese Destination halt zu empfehlen und ähm, zu vermitteln, verkaufen. Das, ja. mhm. ähm, ich bin auch schon mit Gruppen hier gewesen. Es äh, ist ja heute schon angesprochen worden, dass gerade für religiöse Gruppen hier eine sehr große Vielfalt ist und deswegen war ich hier schon mit religiösen Gruppen unterwegs und es ist Wahnsinn, wie, wie toll ausgebildet die Reiseleiter sind, mhm. wie viel Input sie haben, ähm, echt sehr zu empfehlen, wer sich auf diesem Gebiet tummelt, dann ähm, ist das hier, diese Region wirklich ähm, sehr also hat so viel zu bieten, mhm. ja, bis hin zu den Meteorklöstern und die alten Ausgrabungsstätten. Man hat ja hier auch ringsherum um Thessaloniki mhm. braucht mehr für auch für Individualreisen. Einfach nur mal Mietwagen buchen mhm. und dann können die sich das ja nicht anschauen. Ich will jetzt mal kurz, kurz, ja. fassen wir kurz zusammen. Uh, Simone uh, has a travel agency and she's organizing also their own trips. And since uh, June, she's sending also clients here to Thessaloniki, but she has been in the region also with groups. She's organizing uh, groups to travel. And as uh, she said, it's a good combination having Thessaloniki and the region because she, she said the region has so much to offer here. And uh, I know when we visit Vergina, uh, um, Simone said, I've been here. And uh, she's sending also groups of religious, religious travel. We saw, we have seen the church yesterday and um, uh, she has group for, for this special interest and for for these people who are interested in arts and culture, uh, the region has a lot to offer. Um, Vicky, um, Joachim said, of course, the greatest fear of customers is I get, get uh, COVID-19, I have been tested positive, and, uh, and what can I do now? Can you bit, uh, explain, although we heard already, but perhaps to make it clear, how, how is the Greek government dealing with this situation? Works. First of all, I would like to say that that was my fear as well before I come to Greece for my vacation in July. I was, uh, okay, I was thinking what happens if I even tested positive. I want to say that I filled my PLF form and I was tested. I was tested in Athens, yes, thank God not positive, of course. Uh, what happens is I have to admit that we too did not expect that we would open to all tourists by July 1st as we did. Uh, still in May and June everything was very uncertain. But uh, since we saw that the government and the country was dealing well with COVID, we became more optimistic. And so by July 1st, as the general secretary had said, we already had some protocols in uh, place. And there were also uh, some adjustments made then and some errors were corrected because even the PLF form had errors at first. So the process is rather simple. You, for, you fill the PLF form and then you can be randomly tested at the airport. Uh, it depends basically on the airport from which you come from. Mm -hmm. uh, you have traveled. So from our so German group, nobody was picked up because perhaps uh, Except Ger me. Germany is seen as a country with no 
Yes, high yes, risk. that was very important, of course, from us that both our countries were not high risk. Mm -hmm. So the communication between the two of them was free and uh, easy. Now, uh, when you are tested, if you are randomly tested at the airport, as I was, then you are required to stay uh, at home or at a hotel for 24 hours without having some major interaction with other people. It's not a quarantine, it's actually a self-isolation, as we said it, as we called it. Uh, if you are tested negative, uh, if you are tested positive, it's okay, they don't even call you. They only call within 24 hours if you are tested positive. In mm. that case, uh, people are transferred to a COVID uh, hotel, as we call together them. Together with their relatives, together? Yes, together <laughs> with the people they had close yeah. Uh, yeah, encounters Your husband, with. your wife, your children. Yes, mm. unfortunately, yes. And there they remain uh, in isolation for the duration of the quarantine. Mm. But how many cases do you have, uh, as Mr. Van Gaak has very, also said? Very, very, very few. few very yeah. few. And uh, I also had feedback from the uh, airport of Frankfurt, because we are based in Frankfurt, and they said that the travelers from Greece had absolutely no problem. Yeah. It was very, very few. I mean, uh, something like uh, 0. Point something percent. Yeah. So yeah. the good news is, in these COVID hotels, there are a lot of uh, empty beds, and th yes. that's the only case yes, where, where exactly. it's a good sign when exactly. the beds are empty exactly. in the tourism. And you know, with a country's record, I'd rather be quarantined in Greece than in some other countries, I don't know, than in Turkey or, Egy or Egypt. Mm. Um, I would like to ask uh, Gelinde, you said, of course, you have some bookings, and of course, you're happy with every booking at the moment. Uh, how do you see a little bit the perspective for the next month and also for Greece? Do you think, we heard here from the tour operators, they have been a little bit optimistic. We hear, and you, uh, I think you can confirm it, this year is always a late, last minute booking, people are uncertain, and then they decide, if they go, uh, shall I go, and where shall I go? Um, but the tour brothers were quite optimistic, saying if Greece can maintain this status, no travel warning, no high risk, there can be also um, uh, early booking business for Greece. And a lot of Greece fans and lovers, they postponed their trip to next year, where we were told. Do you agree with this? Do you think also, or is it a little bit too optimistic? No, I think it's a little bit optimistic because uh, people, um, they, they wait. And um, they book in not in advanced for many months. Yeah. Um, so two or three weeks before is a normal at the time. But I think I also I, I have um, I think a good idea for the Greek market because during the winter time we have a lot of sportsmen in Germany, golfers, mountain biker, and they are looking also for a destination. Mm a safe destination. And I think this would be a chance for Greek, yeah. for Greece, to do something for all these um, kind of sports. Yeah. Here in Thessaloniki, for example, it would be perfect because you have the mountains for, yeah. the, for the mountain biker. Yeah. It's great. Mm -hmm. So I, it's a new market, but I think it's also a market for the winter time. Mm. And uh, if you find, we have a very nice airline here, a perfect airline, and uh, when they do a package for, for the mountain biker, I think mm. it's, it's, it's great, mm. it's perfect. Mm. Claudia, what is your expectation for Greece for the next year? What do you think? In general, I think it's depending on the whole international situation we have also in Germany, how the COVID-19 will yeah, hopefully decrease. And I think uh, we need also European standards um, yeah. so that the situation won't change uh, day by day because mm. uh, this is confusing for our clients and uh, for us all. Mm. And um, well, the summer season is nearly ending and so uh, the people who are going for beach holidays mm. they they have to wait uh, till next year for Greece mm. and so it's very important to find uh, clients uh, they will go uh, to Greece um, for different interests 
for sports, for cultural or food interest, mm. uh, winery, etc. That's very important to uh, remove um, or to convince the clients uh, to try out uh, different uh, types of uh, holiday. Mm. Joachim, I would like to ask you one question a little bit more in your role as a board member of DRV. You are, uh, the, um, you are in the part of the DRV which is, consists of the independent travel agencies. You are an um, owner of a travel agency. Of course, uh, we have hard times and as we heard before, everybody is looking for cash, everybody is looking for liquidity. The airlines, the tour operators, the hoteliers, the travel agency, everybody in this whole chain is suffering. So. Um, of course, there has been now also some help, some state aid for travel agencies. We have these called Überbrückungshilfe, some measures which must also be prolonged, uh, as well as the Kurzarbeitergeld. Uh, so, how, perhaps, how do you see at the moment the, the um, um, situation of the travel agencies? Uh, is there hope that? Uh, at least a, a big, big portion of the travel agencies can survive this year in order to hope for a better next year? I think um, a lot depends how our government will decide. The main thing is that they uh, prolong their financial helps, mm -hmm. however you call them. We need the money mm -hmm. to make safe that we keep our business, that we keep our staff that we keep our clients and it's also very important that the communication between the tour operators and the travel agents will get a better level. Yeah. Um, the most important problem <laughs> the most important problem was that almost the larger travel agents or travel tour operators were not captable for our travel agents. Mm. We had problems to give information to our clients and uh, it was necessary, for example, to phone to Greece or other de destination yeah. to give the client the information, has the hotel mm. opened yet or not? Mm. And it was very difficult and it's not uh, it is not our legal right to speak in this way to the client yeah. to give information a tour operator has to give. Mm. And it was very, very difficult. And next year, I hope we have a better testing. We have a better, perhaps, the second sign. Mm. Perhaps we have the possibility that the clients have the trust in traveling. Mm. And the most important thing that we can trust in our partners. Mm. Because the travel agents have been the, the helper, the, the, the last line for, for many um, um, customers who couldn't reach their tour operator, the call centers were in some cases cut down and so on. So uh, the travel agents provided an unmeasurable amount of help and support for the clients and earning no money on this because most yes. of the uh, um, work you did was not uh, doing new, new bookings, but to solve the, uh, the, the bookings which have been cancelled and, uh, and pay back the commissions you get for this. I think all the work of the last half year and more was just for charity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sebastian, um, you said, re let's return to Greece a little bit. You said you're pushing Greece. Um, is Zonkla TV, and, and uh, for our Greek friends, it's Zonkla TV is not only a TV channel, there are also Zonkla travel shops there. Uh, uh, and uh, I often hear from, from the owners of these travel shops that if Zonkla TV pushes uh, a destination, for example, on TV, they get also more demand in their shops because people have seen that and see the same brand. And of course, that's the omni channel approach. Um, can you also imagine uh, on Zonkla TV, of course, you face everybody a little bit more on the bigger destination, but also for a little bit smaller destination like here, Halkidiki, or smaller islands, or do you just focus on the big shots? We have really noticed that people are interested into smaller properties, into properties with, um, yeah, which are family run, for example, um, properties, hotels, which you can trust. And uh, also to do something individually. If we come, for example, with a 
destination, such as here, Kalkidiki, which is still, I would say, not that well known in Germany as, for example, Greed. Yes, of course. Uh, if you come with new destinations, which are um, more authentic, which are maybe not having so much tourism, more nature, more to discover, such as here with culture, people are always totally interested in. And there, uh, yeah, sometimes when we introduce new destinations, uh, we can't help ourselves anymore by booking. So I think that there is still um, a great, great chance for Greece and even for. And such destinations, destinations as Thessaloniki with Kalkidiki. Mm. Simone, you, you said, of course, you're selling this region and you put up groups. Can you well imagine do, uh, doing groups then in, in springtime next year? Have you any plans or have you got from this trip some ideas perhaps for new groups? Yeah, I have einige Ideen schon wieder. Um, ich hatte ja von, von religiösen Gruppen gesprochen und ähm, es ist ja heute vorgestellt worden, wir haben es ja auch schon genießen können, den Wein, ähm, einfach ähm, das Wort Genuss ja. mehr in die Reisen mit zu implementieren, das heißt Genussreisen, eventuell in Kombination mit Aktivreisen. Mhm. Aktiv heißt ja nicht nur ähm, hier 50 oder 100 Kilometer auf dem Rad zu fahren, sondern aktiv heißt einfach sich bewegen mhm. und etwas ähm, tun und ähm, unsere Kunden sind ja in der Regel oder insgesamt, sage ich mal, in Deutschland ist ja der, der Wunsch nach mehr Gesundheit und nach gesünderem Leben ja. wird ja immer größer ja. und hier haben wir schon eine Chance, da mit einzusteigen und äh, dementsprechend dann auch etwas zu performen und da würde ich mir auch wirklich von den Veranstaltern wünschen, da noch mehr, äh, ich meine es von den größeren Veranstaltern mhm. wünschen, da auch noch mehr Angebote uns zu geben, weil es, ich kann ja auch nicht von jedem erwarten, dass er als Veranstalter selbst agiert. Mhm. Ähm, also ich bin auch froh, wenn ich fertige Reisen einkaufen kann ja. und nicht als Veranstalter dastehe. Es geht ja einfach auch um, um eine Haftungsfrage und in die letzten Monate haben wir uns schon gelehrt, da ganz schön vorsichtig zu sein und ja, und das ist für uns die Chance, das mhm. glaube ich, für uns ähm, Reisebüro, Reisebüros insgesamt in Deutschland, ähm, sich mehr zu spezialisieren, ja. um halt dann auch die Produkte anzubieten. Und das ist ja hier in der Region, ist es ja super, man hat ja so viele Möglichkeiten, ja. ist ja auch heute vorgestellt worden, ähm, die, die Produkte anzubieten, die man nicht nur, ich sage jetzt mal das Wort Check24 oder so, ja, einfach mal so buchen klar, ja. kann. Ja. Ja. Okay, Simone said she is get a lot. Uh, although we are just half of our way, we have we have go to Halkidiki and we will see a lot of more. And we will hope that everything Gigorius showed us is true. But I'm sure, yeah, <laughs> we will prove. Uh, and, and but Simone said already she has some ideas for new trips, creating uh, new groups next year. She talked about their religious trips, but she thinking about now because she said there's a strong desire and a strong demand for many people in Germany looking for good food, for health, for wellness, for active holidays, uh, hiking, biking, being in the nature and she thinks this region has a lot to offer uh, and, and she in general thinks the future of the travel agents must be a little bit more to sell things which are not so easy to book perhaps online, uh, just sun and beach uh, one or uh, two weeks, uh, but to specialize more individual trips and she's looking for this and she's arguing um, and also that the tour operators look a little bit more on these, uh, even the bigger ones, the, the smaller ones like Attica, the specialists they are, they are doing for many, many years, but uh, that also the bigger tour Has put a little more focus on these individual trips and including also the region. Vicky. Vielleicht, vielleicht noch ganz, ja, kurz, ganz kurz ein Erlebnis. Gestern, als wir oben ähm, im Met Hotel äh, uns oben ja. die Dachterrasse angesehen hatten, da lag da ein Pärchen am Pool und ich fragte sie, ob ich mal kurz so von hinten fotografieren dürfte. Ja, ja, und wer wir denn sind, da waren ja schon mal welche da, die gucken immer so sich das alles an, habe ich erklärt, wer wir sind und habe ich gefragt, wo sie herkommen, aus Hamburg. Oh. Gestern angereist, so, ach, so waren wir in der gleichen Maschine, ne? Und dann, ja, was macht ihr denn hier? Ja, wir gehen zum Wandern. Sag ich, habt ihr das im Reisebüro eingekauft? Nee, die haben ja sowas nicht, sagt der Mann zu mir, sag ich, ich hab das. Ja, ja, ja. Und dann sagt die Frau, wie sieht die Karte? Ja. Und, dann, und dann guckt sie so drauf, ist ja gar nicht Hamburg. Ich sage, wir haben 
bundesweit Kunden. Reisebüro ist eigentlich ein ja. Old-Fashioned-Wort. Ja. Wir sind Reiseagenturen. Wir, zu uns muss man nicht mehr ins no. Büro unbedingt kommen. Man kann natürlich auch anders Telefon, kommunizieren. You Zoom, you ja, das war ne, ein ganz nettes Erlebnis, aber so dieses Aha-Erlebnis ja. auch mit Aktivreisen, die gehen halt zum Wandern und im Reisebüro haben sie mir das nicht angeboten. Ja. Das <lacht> Simone uh, tells, when we visited the set inspection at the Met Hotel, a very stylish hotel here in Thessaloniki, she, she met uh, a couple on the beach and uh, came, talked with them and they came from Hamburg, which is also my hometown, and asked what they are doing here. And they are here for a hiking uh, trip. They spent some time in Thessaloniki, but then they go hiking here. And she said, where have you booked? Yeah, they have booked it all individual, but she said, because they didn't expect it, that perhaps any travel agency has to uh, have this. And, and Simone said, she in a way, the word Reisebüro, which is the German expression for travel agent, since a little bit old fashioned, because uh, uh, this is not an office, like a federal office, it's an office where you sell online, where you sell by telephone, where you are for the customers all the time. Vicky, um, of course, the situation is bad, but for, for some destinations, even worse than for Greece. And what it does make hope was the figure we, show, we, say, uh, we saw from Philip uh, showed us that the interest in Greece is there. Uh, and we all hope the interest in Greece will stay as high, even if other destinations uh, open again. Of course, the, the world needs more, more than one destination. Um, your uh, um, General Secretary, Mr. Fagakis, said, uh, the GTO will uh, also took a priority on the German market. The German market is still, for many, many years, has been of the most important market. But uh, in next years, uh, he's planning some things uh, to, in order to promote. Can you give us a little bit what perhaps uh, are there already some projects or some things you would like to do in order to support also the German travel agents and tour operators? Well, I think it is the, the most important market right now for us. Uh, it's more important than the English market, which was the most important until recently. Uh, I think that what the General Secretary meant was that given the circumstances where uh, mess and fairs and mm -hmm. also maybe some uh, uh, PR um, uh, things are not b will not be able to take place easily. For example, we're talking about press trips, fun trips, yeah. or some uh, big evenings that we can no longer do, of course. So we will actually concentrate on advertising, and mm. that will be, we already do that, and we will continue to do that. Uh, that has two, um, the, the we have two kinds of advertisement for our bureau. The one is the one that we make with our partners, the tour operators, and also the airline companies. We try to do it this summer. It was a difficult summer for most partners. Most of them couldn't make it, so we will try again by December. And the other part is trying to promote Greece through very important uh, German media. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did the past two years. We are doing it now. And of course, we are stressing the point of security. Mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate the fact that people actually trust us, mm -hmm. that they think that we did well with COVID. And that's our strongest point right now. Mm -hmm. So we will be working on that. Yeah, to get the good image is that Greece is doing it well, and my perspective, I remember a historic workshop we had in Athens at the center of the economic crisis then in Athens when it seemed that the relation between the countries were not uh, as it should be. And mm -hmm. when, from my opinion, in Germany, it was well recognized that Greece has a lot, done a lot of reform, that the economy improved, uh, that, that uh, yeah. many things are going in the right direction so yeah. the the overall image of greece has improved yes when i i speak to a former director of our office who is also my friend she was here she was in germany seven years ago and yeah. when we compare notes and yeah. we say how it was <laughs> yeah. and how it is yes there is no relation yes I it's really much much better yeah, yeah, yes exactly yes, yeah. <laughs> she had all yeah. the bad times you hopefully have you had the good times, now you have a very bad yeah, time. Hopefully you time. will have yeah. also the, <laughs> as of the Bible, seven bad good years and then seven bad years. Hopefully we have <laughs> only good years. <laughs> and last round as we're going out, um, just for, for everybody on the panel, just a few impressions. Of course, you're the first, most of uh, you, uh, except uh, um, Simone, are the first time here. What is your first uh, expression here from uh, Thessaloniki, from the region? Of course, you will. we are half on, on the way. We will see the rest of Haikidiki. We will see the next days. And I'm also very looking forward, as I have also not been there. But perhaps from uh, just a special 
personal, what do you take home? Uh, I was deeply impressed um, to come here and we stepped out of the airport, come to the hotel, and half an hour later, we saw the museum. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, so fantastic, and we had such a nice guide. Mm -hmm. She was perfect, and I think all in our group, we were splashed. It was so amazing, it was so great. And uh, after the exhibition, I thought, Huh? I arrived today. Mm. I felt like I've been here since weeks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. This was great. Claudia. So it's my turn. Um, honestly, it's my second time here oh. in uh, so Haikidiki and expert. Thessaloniki, but the first time is uh, 25 years ago. And uh, we stayed uh, two weeks uh, between the two, uh, two fingers, Cassandra and Sitonia, Gerakina Beach. And we only went for you know, one day trip to Thessaloniki and we made a day trip to the Meteora. Um, yeah, it changed a lot and uh, it improved a lot here in uh, Thessaloniki. And uh, it was amazing to <coughs> Yeah, see something again, uh, um, the White Tower and so on. And uh, now I'm, I'm very curious to see how the situation is now at the Three Fingers uh, at Hal Kiriki. Mm. Okay, Joachim, what is your impression? Um, I was coming here, I was deeply impressed of the variety what you can do. You come here, and you are close to culture, you are close to the wineries, you are close to the nightlife, uh, as we saw it yesterday, going home from the restaurant. Uh, there was life in the town. Uh, it's close to the beaches, it's close to the sport. I think it's an ideal region here to, go, to come again. Mm. It's my first, but not my last time. <laughs> Yeah, I would say what really impressed me, uh, Mr. Fragakis <laughs> taught us uh, today the Greek, they have um, the hospitality in their blood and we all know that Greek is a synonym or Greece is a synonym for hospitality. But I think in this year it's also a, a, an important issue in which countries are we really welcomed and we heard from other countries where tourists were not so welcomed. And it was really, I think, from the airport until here and all over the city, how tourists were impressed with, uh, with smile, with, uh, fr with the friendliness, which is maybe uh, still topped from other, which could still be topped, which was topped from other years. And you can see everyone who is working here um, is doing this with so much engagement and so pleased that tourists are coming back. And I think this is also um, a message which we should <laughs> uh, spread and uh, that really tourists are here. Um, yeah, so appreciated and that it makes so much fun um, to be here again. <laughs> <laughs> and the fun hopefully doesn't stop today. Never. We will, hopefully we will have some fun also Georg, in your region uh, and I guess we will have. So Simone. Ich kann da gar nicht mehr so viel dazu fügen. Das ist einfach diese Gastfreundlichkeit, diese Gastfreundschaft, äh, die macht es uns ganz einfach, unsere Kunden hierher zu vermitteln. Das ist so. Und ähm, auch wenn ich schon mehrmals hier war, man kann immer wieder neue Dinge entdecken oder es kommt dieses Aha-Erlebnis, man freut sich drüber, das hast du schon mal gesehen, aber man verinnerlicht das ja dann noch viel mehr. Ja, und Heike Dicki war ich noch nicht, ich freue mich total drauf. Also ich kenne nur die anderen viele Ecken, einige, viele nicht, einige. Und es gibt immer, immer wieder was Neues zu entdecken und deswegen denke ich schon, dass es sich lohnt, unseren Kunden wieder auch wenn sie schon hier waren, immer wieder herzuschicken. Ja. Simone, Wiederholer, Wiederholungstäter. <laughs> Simone mentioned, uh, she, she mentioned the 
famous Greek hospitality, but she mentioned also that uh, there's always things that are new to, to discover in Greece, and of course Greece is also changing, uh, and uh, she has never been to Halkidiki, and she will look there for new experiences. She's very, very looking, much looking forward, and she said, also, even she has been here to Thessaloniki, always there are new things going on, and uh, so that's also an idea to bring here customers who have been to Greece or to, to this region, but to bring them again some years ago because they can discover new. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Vielen Dank hier an meine Panelisten. Vielen Dank, dass ihr mitgemacht habt. Dankeschön. Thank you, Vicky. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the final panel. We have changed a little bit our program. Now we would like to, I would like to invite hoteliers here on my panel. I would like to start with the, your host uh, from the uh, Grand Hotel Palace, is Mr. Yanis Aslanis. Yes, applause. <laughs> I would like to invite Mr. Mr. Yanis Lafas. And I would like to invite um, Mrs. Ismin Tony Vuka. So we practice also a little bit social distancing here so we can avoid the mask because I think. Ah. Pardon? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So th thank you very much. and so we can avoid the mask because listening with masks is not easy, but talking with a mask. <laughs> but I think we comply to every rule uh, here, and uh, um, so uh, we are safe and can have a good uh, trip here. Uh, Janis, I would like to start you. First of all, thank you here for hosting us. We feel very uh, much at home here at the hotel and everything here, the Congress facilities, it works fine. The, uh, the li light lunch now here outside, perfect. So thank you very much. And I think there's a special applause for Janis. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> we are delighted to have you here. We expect a lot from you, and uh, I think that you are expecting a lot from us as well. So we are delighted to give you so. Thank you. But of course, we talked about uh, the whole situation is not easy. Your hotel is open. <laughs> That's a good news. So, but uh, of course, uh, uh, I guess, uh, and we saw also, despite our group, other guests here, uh, perhaps on business, perhaps on leisure trips. Uh, but of course, the situation for the hoteliers, I guess, in Thessaloniki is very critical one. How do you see, perhaps can you give us a little bit insight how's the situation for the hoteliers, what are your expectations for the next months? Yeah, we, we opened the hotel on the 28th of August. Uh, lately. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of problems with the medical uh, measures that we have to comply with. Um, we are getting used to them. Uh, we comply with them. I think that the, the major thing that you have to show to the guests is that they have safety in our hotel. Uh, we don't expect much for the next months. We know that uh, there is a difficult period. We know that we don't have a, a lot of flights. We are preparing for 2021. Um, we are trying to reduce our costs. Mm. We are trying to improve our, our liquidity uh, in order to expect next March that we hope that we are going to have a, a, a new season ahead. Mm. Your hotel and of course also the hotels in Thessaloniki, I guess, you have two markets, you have the corporate market, you have meetings, conventions, expos, but, and you have the leisure market. For, for your hotel, it's, it's a mix of both or? Yeah, it's both, uh, especially conference tourism is yeah. the major market that we, we had mm -hmm. uh, previously. Uh, now it's not a market that you are going, we are going to target. Mm. Uh, so we have to target to smaller mice meetings. Yeah. We have to, to to target to smaller leisure groups. Yeah. Like here, 50 individuals. people, people. Yes, exactly. Uh, we are uh, not, you know, we are not very uh, uh, fond 
of these measures of 50 people mm. per room. We think, we think that this is not fair. Mm. We would prefer that uh, to make a measure with square meters mm. per person. Mm, yeah. Because if you have a, a hall yeah. uh, that previously could host up to 400 guests, mm. now they can uh, hold only 50. Yeah. So yeah. this is not fair for us. Mm. We are going to comply with this as mm. well and looking forward. Yeah, um, I heard there was also some rumors that perhaps some rules can be lifted, unfortunately not today, but that also more than 50 people will allow it. But what you said is right, it, 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 um, it's um, important to have the social distancing, and not uh, how many people in a big room, yeah. 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 Mm. Ismini, uh, we will uh, be guests in your hotels <laughs> the next days. We're looking That's forward. That's right. <laughs> From the website, it looks great. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> we're looking forward to having you. <laughs> How's the situation at the moment at your hotels and perhaps also at your region at the moment? Um, we have hotels also in Thessaloniki and in Halkiviki. Ah. So we have uh, also another view of the market here in Thessaloniki as we operate uh, two hotels in the center. One is a 125-room four-star hotel in the center and then mm -hmm. a boutique hotel. We mm -hmm. opened in the 1st of June, actually. And we, we see um, some uh, um, mostly business travelers uh, in the market right now. Uh, less leisure and, of course, uh, uh, all conferences, it's very hard for mice and conferences right now and for the, this whole season. Yeah. So I would say that for the city. I, I, I understand that you enjoyed the Saloniki though. It's a nice uh, place to visit. It's very close uh, to a lot of major um, mm. European cities. Uh, less than three hours uh, from uh, 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 by, by airplane, so I think we can uh, take this opportunity also with a new airport to open this market also for leisure mm -hmm. uh, or to combine. Uh, we have a, a hotel in Halkidiki as well. We saw this season, we opened 1st of July, which was uh, the first day that it was permitted for us uh, to, mm -hmm. to be open. And uh, we saw that uh, we had a slow start, but then um, in August, uh, a lot of uh, hotels uh, actually saw an August that reminded us a bit of the of the past because it's a time where people usually go on holiday. So it seems that even though there were those restrictions, people decided that okay, we're going to social distance, we're going mm. to wear our mask, and still instead of doing this at home, we're going to take this opportunity to visit uh, and stay close to the beach, close to the sea, with our families, mm. and so on. And we actually this year we saw a lot of uh, guests extending their holidays after arriving, because of um, uh, we see a different uh, structures working, ro working from home, so people when they see that they can feel safe in an environment of a hotel, maybe they have a little bit more time and more flexibility to stay a little bit longer, mm. even from uh, more traditional markets like England and not uh, just people arriving by car. Mm. Um, so uh, I think uh, we, we are closing a little bit earlier also this year. Uh, when will you close? We, we close in the beginning of October, instead mm. of at the end of October. But even for September, um, even as the situation seems to be getting a little bit harder um, with coronavirus, uh, people are still traveling, leaving uh, their plans for last minute mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. But still we see some demand and uh, people coming and enjoying their holidays, especially because uh, in a resort environment you will see and experience that we yeah. have a lot of time outdoors, we have yeah. big spaces. So I think guests are right to perceive this as more safe. Yeah. You have German guests at the moment in your hotel? Um, we, we didn't have so many German guests mm. this year because the traditional period for Germans, as you know, is not so much August mm. uh, yeah. in our experience. Yeah. So we had a little bit less than usual because we lost mm. uh, the, um, the more prime time that they enjoyed yeah. visiting. But we have, because we have a, a large percentage of returning guests, we mm. had a lot of guests that we know mm. return and come. And I think that um through this uh, experience and as this crisis continues perhaps and people see that it's not such a short-term thing and they're getting used to life 
with coronavirus, basically. <laughs> it's not very pleasant, but people are still going to choose to travel to some safe uh, destinations mm. and places uh, and that they know they can trust. Uh -huh. So that's mm. what I think okay, about. Okay, thank you. Yannis, you are also with the Haikidiki uh, Hotel Association, but you, of course, you are also um, from a hotel. Can you play, tell us a little bit up about your hotel and your experience so far? Of course, of course. Crazy uh, season. We have three <laughs> complexes in the uh, first peninsula of Cassandra in uh, Halkidiki, uh, in Pevkohori village. Uh, we opened two of them instead of three uh, because of the situation. A uh, major market of ours is the Britain, Great Britain, and uh, the Jet 2 holidays didn't fly this, uh, this year. So we decided not to open the big one. Mm. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, we have uh, some luxury apartments on the beach, which worked quite well. Uh, the, the point is that everybody tried to adapt uh, in this situation. Also us and from the other side, the travelers. From the very first point of uh, traveling from the aircraft until uh, the hotel and to the beach. Uh, like Ismini said, we have the outdoors, uh, big outdoors that they can, uh, people can uh, take advantage of that. Uh, so it was quite different. The situation was not the one expected, uh, but we tried uh, to open in, in, in order to understand how to balance the next season. Mm. Mm. And what are your plans for the next season? How Hopefully the vaccine uh, will come out in the market and uh, everybody, the psychology will turn out. Uh, I hope, in my personal opinion, hopefully the, we, if, we get, if we reach the 50% of uh, 2019, then I will be satisfied. Uh, because uh, we need to wait until March in order to understand how the, ba the market will balance. Yeah, uh, so half of the, the market uh, from the good year. So you plan to open all three hotels next year? At uh, hopefully, yes. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yes. Yeah. Janis, here, um, you are also here with the Convention Bureau here. here you are also here for, for the MICE and uh, uh, sector. Uh, Thessaloniki is also a city of, of big uh, expositions and so on. Uh, we heard already some of them will now be a more digital conferences or expositions. So what can be done to, to restart this segment? Are you you're in talk with, with corporate clients or something like this? How can it be made that this sector of the business can be yeah. have a comeback? I think that uh, for the next year we are not capable of planning a big conference. Mm. Uh, the thing that we are introducing and the many PCOs are introducing in the market is the hybrid conferences mm -hmm. which means that some of them are going to be in the same place face mm -hmm. to face like we are doing a little like bit today that we are doing here yes and many of them are going to uh, uh, see uh, the speeches and all the the outcome of the conference through live streaming. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to convince uh, the Greek National Tourism Organization to promote this kind of conferences for Thessaloniki and Athens. Mm -hmm. uh, we are trying, you know, you are, we are trying to, to cope with that. It's not very difficult. It's not very easy, mm -hmm. sorry. Uh, not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, we are used to have uh, large conferences five, eight, one thousand people at the same place, eating together. Uh, this seems a joke for, mm. uh, for this season that we are dealing to. But uh, we hope that we, we all expect the vaccine and uh, we are all expecting to do a lot afterwards. Mm. Up to that time, we are trying to do uh, and to promote hybrid mm. conferences. Mm. It's meaning we heard that you talked about also the new safety and health protocols and uh, Greece get a, get a lot of, uh, was praised for doing it. Also from, it was here from the travel agents, they said uh, their clients returned home and felt safe here. So, but what are the biggest challenge for you as a hotel? Uh, is it additional costs? Is it, uh, what are the learnings you have been able to so far? I think uh, the challenge, as we saw it even before we started implementing the measures, is that we didn't want our guests, we want to uh, have our guests feel safe, but we don't want them to feel like they are in a hospital. Yeah. So we have to find a balance in bringing service, in bringing, they can't see our smiles, but they must feel our smiles, yeah. basically. That's the, I think, the hard part. But we were happy that we saw that we can do it, we can adapt to that, we can 
basically come close to our guests and have them talk with, to us and understand us through the mask and be able to offer a warm, friendly service without, uh, with keeping all of the measures there. I think uh, cleanliness and all, all these measures that are coming uh, to be a very at a very, very high standard, this is a good measure that actually we plan to keep even after the crisis. And uh, I think it, it's good that we are all a, a little bit more uh, health and uh, safety concerned. And mm. for us, uh, the truth is that for big hotels and five-star hotels, we already had a high standard uh, of that. Uh, uh, uh. And uh, now guests maybe feel more uh, safe with more established brands and bigger hotels that they know mm. are uh, keeping all the standards yeah. very high. Yeah. So I think we gain mm. from that. Yanis, uh, you are, are you working with the German tour operators as well in your hotel? Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. So, of course, we heard everybody's looking for liquidity, everybody's looking for cash. So what is your challenge in order to get your company to survive, to get the cash? How do you, what do you describe perhaps also the cooperation with the tour operators? Uh, cooperation with the tour operators is for the next day, for me, it's... Uh, it's uh, common uh, understanding to each other, okay? We need to, uh, they also need to survive, we also need to survive. If we find the balance into that, then uh, we'll reach the next day. The point is uh, everybody needs to understand that uh, through the protocols, the, like as Mini said, like uh, Mr. Aslani said, uh, the, if, if, we, if the clients feel safe with that, uh, then uh, we will reach the next day. It's very difficult for us. As I told you, we adapt it. We try to adapt it. We try to offer services as we did in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it because we had less clients, uh, but I believe the next day when the mask will come out, then uh, we'll reach the next level with uh, the high standards we'll have from the crisis and uh, everybody will feel safer and uh, will uh, 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 like the services we offer. Mm -hmm. So, w if you ever had a wish for the, the German community, the German tour operators, travel agent, what would be your, your wish? My wish, as I heard before, the tour operators and the specializers, uh, the area is uh, number four in the, in the Greece market, okay? Uh, we have Thessaloniki Airport, which is renovated, as you saw, and uh, we can combine a, a city break in Thessaloniki uh, with the, the resort of Halkidiki, which is uh, one of the uniqueness in whole, uh, in whole Europe, also in the Mediterranean, because it's uh, really close to one hour driving. Uh, we can. I wish that the Germans uh, will come and visit our area, but, uh, visit our area most, and enjoy our best uh, beaches, which is unique in the country. And uh, we also offer hiking and mountain biking. So we and the nightlife of Thessaloniki, where I was uh, raised, is uh, unique. So I hope that everybody will understand uh, the uniqueness we have. And we will um, make our own picture when we travel to your lovely region. I love it very much what I heard this morning, uh, island hopping by car. Uh, uh, so, we will, <laughs> so we will do uh, have the experience. I would like to thank you, everybody. Thank you for your support for this conference, for this workshop. Thank you, thank you again. Much. See you thank again. You. Thank you. See <laughs> so you bye -bye. soon. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming a little bit to an end. As I said, we don't have, want to have these conflicts not too long as in this time everybody is looking a little bit for fresh air. We will now prepare for the speed dating and then I would immediately uh, switch into uh, German. Perhaps, Anna, you would like to add something or uh, <laughs> you would join me just for a few words here. Um, come with me. I uh, will not do a big conclusion of the workshop because I think uh, everything is said. We learned so much about Thessaloniki. We will learn a lot in the next two days. We uh, on our excursion. Um, what my what I will take home is not of uh, of course the only the impressions here uh, from from the region and the impressions which will we have in two days, but. Despite very, very tough times for everybody and everybody is fighting to, uh, f to survive uh, his company, but there is optimism here. Uh, what I take home is also what I hear, that the Greek hoteliers are doing a 
great job on these new protocols that although they have pressure because the occupancy levels are not there, they have been, but not, they have not raised their price, although they have higher costs. Uh, the standard is high, the hospitality is great, and um, so that everybody prepares for a better season and that Greece, as we saw, also heard from the turbulators and a little bit from the uh, interest from the travel trend figures. Greece has a good chance uh, to come out of the crisis, perhaps as one of the winners relative to others. So hopefully this makes a good start and hopefully you also take also some good ideas for selling more Greece and more Thessaloniki, more Halkidiki uh, to home. Anna, would you like to say some words for conclusion also? Thank you, thank you, Klaus. Thank you so much for the efforts that you put and um, the coordination of all these um, of all these panels towards the aim of this workshop. I would like to say that all the topics we discussed today, we can handle them, we can um, influence them, we can plan them, we can create them. There are so many ideas that were heard here, and I thank very much the tour operators. Uh, the travel agents for all what they said, for the know-how that they um, shared with us, um, the hoteliers, the authorities, the GNTO with uh, Mrs. Trumbo and Mrs. Prinu and also the general secretary who influenced um, the audience here. So I can say that we can handle everything, we can manage all these things that we shared and we discussed here in this room today, in this FOV workshop, which I think is really crucial because it's in a difficult time and yes, it has to end till the last time with success, health and safety for all of us. We have to return to our home health and safe and that will be really um, a very important, very important case. So let us cooperate. I mean, uh, you, you described products. So make these products realized. Um, the local authorities, the destinations, um, the travel agents, the tour operators, Aegean, who is with us and who was really a success story in this, uh, in this room. So this is what we can do. And with the assistance of uh, FOV of Klaus, who coordinated all these um, uh, discussions and all these ideas, to be expressed, we, I think that a lot of things can be done for Thessaloniki and Halkidiki. And the numbers that Trevo Trend showed to us, they will be really dif different and will be changed dramatically, um, positively, next year. So this is what I'm wishing, but it's not a wish. We've, we need to work all together in order to make it um, a product. I, uh, this is what we need. I thank you very much, all of you. The hospitality of the Grand Hotel, the Inks Palace that we are going to visit uh, tomorrow, um, all the people that are involved, a lot of people that are involved, the staff of Grand Hotel, um, the guides, every, everyone, uh, the authorities, everyone, and all these companies, and the technical support, and all these things. With all this cooperation, we succeeded to finalize a workshop and to go now to the speed dating. Thank you. And I would like to thank Anna Karajani, who did a great job organizing this. Anna, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I now turn to German. <laughs> wir machen jetzt eine kleine Pause. Ähm, dann machen wir das Speed Dating. Äh, wir werden das draußen machen. Das Speed Dating ist immer ein, sehr begehrt eigentlich, weil das für die Chance für die Reisebus ist, wirklich Hoteliers kennenzulernen. Evgenia Nick, die hat das nämlich schon mal mitgemacht in Andalusien. Die kennt das schon. Äh, und das haben wir auch wirklich gemacht, weil viele Reisebus eigentlich wollen. Die wollen den Kontakt haben zu Hoteliers. Die wollen ein paar Visitenkarten austauschen. Weil wir ja besondere Umstände haben, machen wir es draußen, damit wir alle an der frischen Luft sind. Äh, es werden, glaube ich, under 16, how many supplies from Greece for, for Speed Dating? 18. Also sind 18 äh, Leistungsträger hier. Ich würde vorschlagen, dass die Reisebus immer so zu zweit rumgehen. Und wenn ihr euch vielleicht so ein bisschen so mischt, wenn vielleicht jemand, der ähm, sehr gut in Englisch ist, vielleicht jemand mitnimmt, der vielleicht nicht ganz so gut in Englisch ist, dass wir so ein bisschen nicht vielleicht gerade die beiden Oxford-Studenten zusammennehmen und die beiden, die vielleicht nicht so gut in der Sprache sind, so dass wir sich auch besser unterhalten kann, dann kann, der, äh, äh, kann man ein bisschen die Konversation etwas besser machen. Wir haben das früher mal so gemacht, dass wir dann alle fünf Minuten die Glocke geschlagen haben. Das, das geht eigentlich auch so 
einfach mal schauen, wo ein Platz frei ist, wo man hingehen kann. Hände schütteln ist in diesen Tagen nicht so, wir machen das eher auf die griechische Art, aber Visitenkarten austauschen geht alles. Also viel Vergnügen, bis gleich, wir werden das gleich draußen organisieren.